Hello there. We thank God that you are out there. We appreciate you that uh, you found time to join us on today's discussion. Uh, we invite you to be part and parcel of what we seek to establish in terms of understanding our current political situation and uh, how to respond to the same. It is uh, alarming that uh, the more things change, the more things remain the same. But uh, we have a responsibility to see to it that we remain on the right path, no matter how many things fall apart. And so I invite everyone to join and uh, let us discuss today uh, the essence of our politics. There is a propaganda, there are lies, there are twisted truths. There are all manner of uh, accusation, counter accusation. But uh, what is causing agitation is the ugly heckling culture and stage managed crowds that we are beginning to see in our rallies around the nation. So I want us to dive into this and uh, be able to uh, come to terms with where we are and what we do in order for us to navigate through this corner and get on the other part better. So you are welcome to join. Uh, use the link uh, on the comments there and uh, you'll find yourself into the studio and we'll begin to have a discourse. Uh, Baba today is still in the mountain as uh, DP Ruto still comes in the coast and uh, the political heat is uh, catching, <laughs> picking up every passing moment. Uh, where does this leave the rest of the Kenyans? And um, how does uh, the ordinary Kenyan should uh, respond to this kind of uh, changes? So wherever you are around the world, this is Mtembe TV Open Forum out to discuss the politics of the day and uh, how to respond to the same. Uh, Pasi, how are you? Pasi, unmute, I love you. Mala, VP. Yeah, how are you today? I'm well, glad you, to see you. you look, How are you today? You look so you look so you look sober today. Ah, uh, the the alcohol you send has not arrived. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Friday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Karibu sana Mtamala. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Eh, Ruto vipi? Poa. Naona wewe ndio uko popular kabisa. Kila mtu anasema Ruto, Ruto. Shida iko wapi? Ni jina ama ni kujulikana sana? Kujulikana sana. Eh, sasa tafajaje ndio tupunguze? <laughs> okay, salamia wana inji alafu peana your opening remarks. Eh? Uh, tunangalia hii story ya propaganda, siyasa ya propaganda. Uh, kuna hii culture ya heckling ambayo merudi. E, inaanza kurudi ambayo itakiwi. Then state managed crowds. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All of you that are joining, we appreciate you on the comments and uh, following us on social media, uh, Facebook and YouTube. You are very much welcome and uh, you can continue giving in your input on the topic of tonight, which I believe requires us to be sober all the way even as we begin to separate between the truth and the lies, the propaganda and the facts, and uh, the ugly heckling culture that is quickly running back into our politics, of which is very unfortunate, but 
I believe we have an answer to the same. So wherever you're joining us from, uh, this is Mtembe TV. We are coming to you live from uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and uh, you can uh, hook and join from wherever you are around the globe. Just make use of the link around uh, the link on the comments, and you will be in studio and participate in contributing to what makes Kenya Kenya and what can take Kenya ahead in terms of uh, proper perspective and right uh, thinking in relation to how do we elect leaders that will make Kenya better and uh, what kind of leadership is required to our nation at this point in time. Well, 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 welcome Wekesa Karibusana. Uh, client 13173. Hey, is that your ID number or something? Giki Kwa. Hey, I am a Gina Jabu Kweli. Mtani Samea Kama na pronounce Gina Yako Makosa, Lakini Karibu Kwa Studio. Uh, Tuanze Nanani. Uh, you just give your opening remarks. Not Salmia on Atombia Ukoapi. Na unatupata ama utupati. E, client 13173, VP. Yes, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Good day, uh, my you. little name. Yes. Good everything to you. How are you today? My little name is Ruben Karyoki. Hey, hey. I'm in Nairobi. Today uh -huh. I have uh, decided to log in. You are welcome, yes. man. Uh, you keep metamorphosing. We don't know whether is that a political statement, a political uh, strategy or what? About? At times you are Omalwa, at times you are Karuki, at times you are now a client. Are, are you the same person we are dealing with? or? <laughs> okay, it is the uh, same person, but uh, different. There are some. Uh, there are some reasons why I always log in with a different name. Those reasons will need to settle them today before the show is over. Welcome to the show. Uh Wekesa, how are you? Wekesa is yet to come in. Kigi Kiki Kwa He Vipi Ndubiangu. Ni ndugu ama dada sasa hii majina imeanza kunichanganya Yes how are you I'm fine I'm Nikoko happy ka... I can see light in that Okay Kiki kwa from Eldoret Kiki kwa from Eldoret karibu sana I'm in darkness uh, Don't worry I uh, you are light sabona it's better than that complete darkness. From Eldoret. Thank you very much. How I'm is Eldoret? Darkness. No light. Oh, Kenya Power has it's fine. greeted you. I'm, 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 I'm have not greeted me. In fact, they are doing their work. Oh, okay, okay. There was a problem. We have also ha we have it even here in the city. Uh, some three transformers fell down. So we don't know whether it's political or uh, uh, mechanical. <laughs> but whichever the case... Uh, we ah, we don't know. We are, mm. we, are, we are going to know now. No problem. If it's we'll political have it or something else. Okay, okay, okay. Relax. They are in and uh, we pick from there. James, how are you? Unmute, I'm fine. Unmute. Yes, where are yes, you? Yes, um, Bernard. Yes, sir. Bernard, how yeah. are you? I am fine. Glad to see you. Yes, I am here. You are here. I'm happy you're here. And uh, you are currently you are joining us from where? Yes. Una to join Kutoka Wabi. You seem Hello. logged in with are you logged in with two different devices or no yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. What 
Do I contribute immediately or? No, no, relax, relax fast. We are just uh, oh. making sure that when you speak, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Very clearly. Thank you. Take care, Papa. Hapo, tunarudi kwako. Asante sana. Thank you. Sarah, my big sister from the other side. Long time no seen. VP. <laughs> Good evening, guys. Good evening to you. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm watching you from Baringo mm -hmm. County, Baringo Central Sub County, Ward, Cabernet Ward. Uh -huh. Yes. You want to pick a campaign, ya Baba? Uh, who can you want to pick a campaign, ya Wilbaro? Yeah, will borrow because in will borrow something as well. Oh, he touch a campaign. Who can do a campaign? Mambo ya Baba, Mimi Zielewio. Avana Jan to Taku Elevation Leo. Subiri Pas, Taki, 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 Elevation, Mimesha Eleva Yang with Mali in Gina. Zijari, which I leva, one who eleva could not well limited. Avana Zitaki in Taku death. No, you will not. That is the long approach. Say, say, I do a guess. A barrier, I guess. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I really miss you guys. Politics is not a car. You must have no helmet. You must not have a helmet. Santa, na na nimeleta asali na nyama ya Korea man. You must not have a dogo. You must not have a rally. You must have no. Santa, you must not have a rally. You must have a queue. Okay, uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, Toro Iti. Yes, sir. Yes, now, Pata. Hey, who goes in Gaya? Hello? I mean, it was in Gishu. Oh, I was in Gishu. Oh, yeah, in Napoise. Yeah, in Napoise up county. Thank you. Thank you Hello. very much for doing for joining the show. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, stay there. We are coming back to you. Uh, okay, okay. I think everybody's voice has been heard. Mala. Mala, uli uli salami wa nanji? Yes, yes. Wekesa uh, and Bernard. Hi, all. Hi, you, you, want, you, you? You, you, you want me to start contributing? In fact, we want to talk about Kwanza to begin contributing. Only that uh, let's, let's establish our rules of engagement. Number one. Uh, you, oh, You're forgetting another James. Sorry, sorry. Now this is another James. Uh, you, I, I will review your name and call you James 2. No, not James 2. James, the, 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 the one love disciple. Uh, James, I will call you Jacob on them. I try to oh, interpret your name. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, James, James, James is the one in the Bible. The, the other one is where? He's in Krinyaga. <laughs> okay, Salemia, Salemia, James, 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 James Blue. Moja weke Jemo. James, James Wababa. James Wababa. Oh, James Wababa. <laughs> yes, sir. Since you want to talk to Wababa, you want to talk to Changaji. Sawa sawa, ebu tu salimia mara moja tuendele. Ushere. Ushere puno. I am logged in uh, from Nandi. Eh eh. Ushere mifanyaji. Ewe, Tito. Wahanja. Ewe, Tito. Wahanja. We are logged in from Nandi. Okay, okay, okay. James, you are through with your greeting. We want to move on. And you must leave me here. Now, now, Sarah, for for for, you must go and you must attend the party. Asali, badai. Asante, asante. Chipangen, chipangen. Aya Tito, salamia wana inji tu endele na na imjada la wale. Unmute, officer. Unmute. Nina Fra. Kuona wa Kenya mkicheka, mkifurayana, mkipika mchatala, inakuwalpia mini fraa kwa ungu pali pinye niko. Naona kama mnaendrea sawa sawa, ina ubaya. Sasa na wasalimu. 
nikisema tushikanane kama wa Kenya na furahi sana habari zenu nzuri sana thank you very yes. much and stay right there we are coming to hear you give us your in depth uh, analysis of uh, today's uh, subject so the first person to make contribution will be mala but uh, i want us to establish our rules of engagement number one if you are not until it's your turn to speak your mic must be mute if you have a question you want to interject you lift your finger or your hand if you are behind the curtain too bad i will not see your finger but probably by the spirit of god <laughs> you may get a chance to interject let's not shout and let's not uh, you know turn into an exchange match so sawa uh i think that is that and then uh, you keep precise and to the point uh make sure that you are, are digging in in ensuring that the truth prevails so politics of fact or of propaganda the ugly heckling culture and stage managed crowds what is the end game who stands to gain or lose that is what i want us to get into ma what is your take on this one uh, I, I don't know whether I'm ready to contribute, but let me say this. It is very interesting. These are very, very interesting times. You know, heckling started in Pomas when uh, when Raila Molodinga and uh, Uhuru was attempting to launch the PPI. And uh, when this man, the, the, the leader of the uh, Asila Nation, stood and uh, contributed, or rather uh, contributed to the PPI, I mean objecting some of the issues which were there, uh, Raila Molodinga and Huru led the team in heckling the guy. Now it is their turn, and we are seeing this now continuing, and it will continue, uh, because uh, this model of uh, political leadership has a negative impact on, on, on how the people are being governed. As uh, every national concern is now politicized, an approach in a partisan manner. And uh, consequently, the leadership has been unable to unite the nation and the people of Kenya, even when it comes to important uh, national policies and strategies. So we will continue seeing this going forward because uh, when they were in Poma, they, they, they did not show a good example. They could have listened, uh, but they incited, I think Uhuru and Raila incited the MBs to heckle the respected uh, deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. So we'll see more of this going forward and, and, and uh, we hope there's going to be peace. That is my short submission. Thank you. You said Uhuru and who did what? Um, you are losing me. I said Uhuru and the, 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 the former opposition leader, Raila Molodinga, led the team in Pomas. Remember when they were trying to launch when they attempted to launch the PPI report and the, the respected uh, deputy president of the Republic of Kenya made some contribution. And, and, and I think the two leaders led, you could see them, you know, even uh, shaking, uh, shaking heads and, and, and inciting the members of parliament and the, 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 the guys who attended that meeting, that PPI meeting to, 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 to heckle the deputy president. So it started from there, and it will continue. <laughs> I, I don't want to interrogate that. OK, let's go to the next person, client to the 1317. OK. Uh, let me start by saying this. Uh, uh, the issue of her curing and the uh, those issue of uh, bigger Estonia and everything, we used to see it in one part of the country. 
uh, since uh, we like me I, when I since I started voting I used to see that issue in some part of this country but it's very sad uh, this issue of herring have come to our mountain which we never used to have that kind of issue and one of the reason I can see is that there is this uh, I see that uh, we will be forced to someone, uh, one of the presidential candidates, like uh, a Maralia Quinin, to tapewa chaguvu. So, and also there is this issue of a hired crowd. Na eh? dawa watu huko na mabasi, unawareta mtaflani, and all of a sudden, how watu wata huwezi waripa jioni kila mtu, kila mtu. So, Tomorrow, if you need them in another town, they will help you because yeah, zira zira zagana, they were not paid. So I don't support any issue of heckling or anything, anything that is uh, related to conflict or anything. I never support, and even me myself, there is a candidate I cannot vote even at a gun point. But I cannot waste my time or I cannot use my energy to heckle. I think it is a good time as youth. We change. Let us not just rely too much on money. Ata to kidaganyo areo. Ata to sikubari kununuriwa ama kupele kwa mahali to kashia any candidate. I. We just. We. To help kutokana na iyo issue. So, I don't support any issue of heckling, whether I like either Raira or Ruto or anybody. I cannot heckle anybody. So, I don't support, but I believe there are some reasons why we are, there are some heckling in some areas or kwa mikutano flani flani. And also, like, ukiangalia yo mikutano ya Raira, anatebea na marije. Watu hawatakikani na wananchi na bado wanaenda kujifosi kwa wananchi so there are some kind of that reason thank you so we, we have a group of people in this nation called reject okay there are some politicians even if they campaign 100 times even if what our letter na, na who or am our letter and a root am our letter and people will never vote for them. Even they ne they don't want them. Yani how attack our politician or aggression. But they are those politicians, they are forcing themselves to people. So those are the rejects. So when, when did that become a policy in Kenya? That if you don't want to vote the, for a person, you heckle or you, you chase him away. Ooh. Don't, there is that policy, but I don't support it at all. We we, we saw some, uh, some few days, Wajege, in some region of Kenya, because he he's talking differently from X person. He was heckled and he was stoned. So there is that kind of uh, an arrow, but I don't support it. Okay, yeah, I, I was referring on the as on the on your statement that you said uh Baba is walking around with some rejects who people don't want to listen to. So I want us to have it uh, uh, either it's a constitutional policy in Kenya that uh, if I vied for a seat and I did not win the seat, I now become a reject <laughs> based on what. Who, who presided over this and concluded this and this rejected <laughs> and rejected forever. See, people lose election in this term and then they win the following term. Well, what makes somebody permanently rejected? That's what I want us to understand. Okay, so I teach. Can I, can I answer question? that question? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, nasema hiyo sio policy. 
I think ni narrative tu yenye watu wamefuatilia. Hello. Hear you. Momeni pata. Nime kusikia vizuri. Yeah, I can say that that, that is not that, that's not a policy. It's a narrative that uh, some people if you are not uh, elected they see you as a reject. Okay. But is, is yeah. that the right way of treating people? No, no, no. I don't support it. But uh, I think the people at the grassroots are using that that as a, as, as as a policy, but it's not a good way. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> now these two Jameses are giving me problem. Uh, James Blue. <laughs> the other one is Sky Blue. So. <laughs> now, let, okay. Let, okay. Yes. yes. Uh, this thing is is not a policy mm. but uh, i hello I, just, just hold on uh, J, the other james eh? hold on let okay. me come down here speak james back. one uh, we, you, james are next. One. you are you are next to make hold on order okay uh but now i am saying this eh? mm. I, I want to be as brief as possible uh you saw baba in uh in 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 i think it's yolo kuna kuna the former governor and uh, the incumbent what will kasirika na the incumbent because he refused to give a chance to the former governor and the people were not happy na unajua when we have a crowd especially ile baba baba mwenyewe anakuanga unajua baba anakuanga na crowd not hired not stage managed yani ni ile tu from love so kama wanaona kitu si nzuri you know this channel of communication where you send one person afikie ule mtu mwenye ako na mic there is no uh, such a thinking in 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 crowds in crowded places when people are not pleased when people are displeased on an issue or an individual the only way to express it is by shouting now i want also to 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 to, to take you back to eldoret kuna wanafunzi hapa i think it's a rvtti baba and the motorcade were just waving they were not even addressing them and you saw that that kind of uh, culture you, you shout the name of the other person when the the, the 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 opponent is just waving at you no that is a habit that should not be encouraged lakini sasa rafiki yangu client 13173 alikuwa anasema it's a policy hiyo ni common sense there are these people when you wamesimama for a, quite a long time we have examples of presidents in the us wali waliamuka mara mingi mara mingi mara mingi and they were not uh, uh, branded rejects you can do that and finally clinch that seat you want sidhani kama mtu ata qualify kuitwa reject on that basis thank you okay thank you james uh we go to the other james and then from james we'll go to sarah and follow that uh, Len. James Mkubwa. Good evening. I Good think evening for, clarific you. for clarification. Yes. yes. Uh, you refer to me as James 1. James 1. Yes. Okay. Now, on this, on this <clears throat> on this issue of uh hackling for quite some time there has been a narrative in Mount Kenya that Baba cannot is not wanted by the people. And one way in which some of the politicians have done to make it look like so is to organize uh, goons. You remember some time back, Baba tried to come to Gedurai. He met a group of people who drew stones. Uh, to perpetuate the the narrative that uh, this man is totally rejected by the people 
let me tell you what happened with the papa from uh, Raikipia coming all the way through the various uh, counties up to Naropi was something that came as a shock to the opponents because it was not planned. It is something he thought out of turn and decided to, to make that trip. And therefore, there was no time for these politicians to organize heckling. It was a shock to them when they saw what happened along that route. The current foray into the mountain started very well in, uh, in uh, the, the upper part, coming through Meru Saint. But today we saw elements of organized groups. Papa Sere brought to Chuka to make noise and the parts of Embu because there are people who feel that the only way to win elections is to prevent people from getting alternative uh, views from leaders to perpetuate myth that some people are not accepted and are rejected totally. But you know what? These tactics don't work all the time. And that myth is slowly being broken. So what we are going to see is that people are slowly coming to understand that some of these things were mere tactics being used to perpetuate certain narratives that certain people are totally rejected, are totally rejected and cannot have traction in the region. We, the, 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 it is very clear who have perpetuated these kind of narratives where they sent a few people to make noise and they then tilt the cameras to where those people who are making such noises are so as to appear that uh, the, the, the rally was, uh, was a total failure. But slowly, I can assure you, those who are here in this forum, by the end of December, there will be a shock in this country. Why? Because I can tell you with confidence that the votes of Mount Kenya will go in one direction and the leadership is yet to speak and they have started speaking. Kira nyumba ina wenyewe na awa wenyewe wakiongea wale wenye pale ata kukua na dissenting voice sitakuwa chache. Because politics is not a love affair. Politics is about interests. And the people of Mount Kenya have started discovering strongly where their interests are. And the greatest interest they have is one man, one foot, one shilling. And the fair representation in parliament. So any candidate who has shown in the past that they have been against this, that they are not going to support that, they can as well start kissing goodbye to the thoughts of people of Mount Kenya. No amount of organizing goons to heckle will get them victory in this region. The people of Central are very discerning, they are very clever, they are very calculative, and they make their decision based on strongly their interests. It's the interests that are guided by their people, by the leaders, the leadership. I, 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 when I see some people making comments here, like, uh, you know, uh, hiring a few people to make noise because Raira has come to, to ask for votes from Mount Kenya. In fact, you'll be very shocked that that will only make people ask themselves, why is this happening? 
why are people why do why do these people want other candidates not to be heard so i don't support heckling of whatever nature it is abhorrent it does not reflect intelligence it is stupid and will not work i rest my case Okay, thank you, James. Uh, if there is no matter arising from there, let's go straight to Sarah. Good evening, guys. Good evening to uh, you. I, I want to, yeah, thank you so much for that, Nene. I want to clarify something on James one. I think James, you are saying people are sent of Central are very clever. Also, people from other parts, may I call it even the eighth province, former eighth province, everybody is clever. There is no one who is a fool. Can Secondly, I interject? No, I uh, never think you will interject, interject later. You will interject later. Secondly, I don't support this heckling. For real. Any candidate is allowed to go and search for votes if in anywhere in this republic. Even Nani, even Raila, even Nani Gideon, even Ruto, even Kina Kina Wetangula, Wapewe Shimazao. This thing of heckling to some leaders, it is not good at all. I think people should be given respect as all the, they are all the same leaders in this republic. I saw it the other day here in Eldoret because I was there until was it Wednesday. That thing was not pressing, impressing at all. It was not impressing at all. Wangewacha Raila akuja aombe kura zake akienda aenda akiendanga. Ruto pia akienda Nyanza apewa heshima zake aenda akiendanga. This the other guy mwenye alikuwa stoned in in, in Nyanza it was not good also so please this this thing we should we should start it from ground sisi wenyewe tuheshimu hiyo 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 nini wanyo wanakuja kuomba kura hata hata akikuja kusema yeye anasema atakuja kutoa vote for task card yako kwa mfuko hawezi you will know who, who you are going to vote so let someone comes and auze zera zake tusikie so, even raila can come to baringo akuja aseme yake aende in peace Lakini maneno ya kununua watu usiku yote na I cannot I cannot support this all these leaders all of them wako na makosa they have weakness all of them Because mmoja akienda pandi mwingine anatuma watu wake huko If this one goes there mwingine anatuma watu wake so there is no one who I'm supporting here Kila mtu wako na makosa among these leaders So if they are brave enough and watching this mutembei let them stop their guns Watu waenda waombe kura heshima idumu tuwe na amani because where i stay i'm not staying with my own kalenjins i'm staying with other tribes na kukua na shida they are the first ones to come and chip in so please i think with this nini i'm not i'm not happy at all and i'm not happy about it so hii mambo na mapropaganda tena haisaidi when 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 hata ukileta propaganda ina gani useme huyu ni huyu huyu ni huyu na the will of the people are mesema ni huyo there is nothing that you will do automatically you will be elected as the leader and you will lose by 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 bringing out those propagandas that this guy is like this the other one si juu nini naona matuzi zitatembeanga kila mahali in fact even in mutembe is this wall of ours man matusi 24/7 mpaka mnaingiana personal if we these things tungesema tu tunge tunge discuss over na tuseme so I'm not in support of 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 these propagandas, the stagnant crowds. Uh, not not at all. It is not good at all. Even 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 when God sees us, He will punish us in an angle that it is not good. Thank you for now. Okay, thank you, Sarah. I think that is clear enough. Can we now hear from Tito? Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, and I'm very happy also to come back in Kenya to contribute what the, the country is doing, and also the politics in my country. 
so for me to clarify the simple point about the heckling heckling is not a cool thing to the politician and also respect it matters a lot why i'm saying this respect inakujana wale watu wamese wameseka kukucha tukifuatanisha tulikuwa tunaandua shule mtu akikusiti umri unampea respect yake it was a time tulikuwa tuna salute kwa walimu tulikuwa tunasimamia walimu kama tumekaa chini mwalimu akipita unasimama sasa sasa hii the young generation wamekosa maadili young generation sijui ni kusoma ndio wajasoma ndio maana wanatumika kwenda kuheko ukipata mtu anafanya heckling na ameenda shule huo mtu angefaa hata kusoma ngavaa aje tu akai kwa sababu ya nini me in my life wale watu tumekurona wao tumekurona tu respect watu wakubwa ukikucha kwa mtu akikuja kwa gari una namwamkia in terms of politics hao watu tumekuwa nao for long time why you heckling na huu mtu hapo kila wakati kile kile kikuja ako sasa watu wakipiga kelele itapatilisha chochote so the only thing that kama sasa hizi mimi nimepikia rukura Raila for a long time hakuna siku amekanyaka kwetu Raila kwa nyumba ya yetu hakuna Raila siku nimemuona hivi karibu na nikamsalimia but because of the love Raila jaji nipea shilingi hata moja it's because of the love sasa wa Kenya tukiwa na mapenzi na watu wenye tunataka kuchakua hii heckling itakuja itoweke but ikiwa kama hatutatumia wisdom ya kuwa na watu wetu tunataka kuwachakua ila tusaidia heckling is not good i cannot support that such a things that happen in my country it is a polished it cannot be safe for the country to heckle other peoples hiyo ndio wange nafika mali na activate sasa watu waanze kupikana kwa sababu hiki group hiki heckle nyingine na rudi inaanza kuheckle inapiga nao disaster nao inakuwa unmanageable na na process ama sasa ile heckle hivi wakisukumana hiyo polisi labda akonge mtu mmoja inakuja inaanza kuwa uo but in my mind kama Raila ameenda mahali ametoa shilingi moja i don't think kuona pesa ya Raila ni ngumu Raila watu wanampenda pure hiyo magraud samfuka tanga pure kama mtu ameenda amepewa pesa mahali na Raila aniambie but site nyingine hizi sijui but ninaongea kuhusu baba baba ni mtu nimemuelewa kutoka kitambo hajai hajai kuja kwa kiraatu awambie sasa hapa hivi mjipange mpange laini 10 20 20 20 hakuna huyu jamaa anapendwa tu na watu na binadamu kuongea kwake na kusaidi yani inji inje na inji na ndani na inje huyu jamaa anapendwa hiyo watu kuongea kwake kuweka mikakati sile sa kama wanaongeanga matusi sijai jua but hiyo ongea misemo zake sa kusema hivi na hivi kunaendana vibaya mimi ndafanya hivi all in all let us not support th- bad things in our country let us educate the youth to change the narrative of heckling the politician and it's shaming our country it's taking our country the respect to come down because hawa watu wanaochi kutoka nje hizi mabitu zote maclips sisi tunachukuliwa watu wa nje wanasiochi wanaona vile kuna endana it's not it's not right watu wakisema Kenya wanakufa na njaa na kuna yenyosha pati kidogo tu labda nitrukana ndio labda ganjaa kako kidogo anapeleka msaada but inakuwa ni ke ni Kenya mzima kati wa Kenya wanakufa njaa sasa heckling ikikuwa tu pati padogo tu inakuwa Kenya wana respect wangu wana heckle the leaders so let us tell the youth to change the narrative of heckling of the uh politician and then it will be okay thank you for giving me this chance i'm very happy okay thank you tito uh, i appreciate that I, i believe that's clear enough uh housekeeping daniel or yugi your gadget is not well uh, set so it's uh, finding it difficult to be get into the studio i advise get out and then you can get back again Um uh, yes yes the James uh, the other James James Blue <laughs> Okay yes. uh I've checked on the on the topics hmm. w- w- because they guide us on w- what to discuss and and, and what not to First nimeangalia politics of facts or, or, or propaganda hapo unajua nataka nikuwe very clear and just cite examples. 
tulianza in 2013 manana mingi oh we'll have a stadium in kamarin we'll have a stadium in wote we'll have a stadium in whatever place kakuja kakuja kakuwa ni uongo in 3 months time this stadium will be complete in 4 months time the other one will be complete will be having wifi all over oh vijana watakuwa nafanya kazi online you see eh, kidogo kidogo eh tukawachana na hiyo ile kibanda ya kusema kuna that that post uh, that says no job it will be the other way jobs for young men and i want to clarify what mr mr tito masinda said at you if you went to school and you don't know how to respect there was no need of going to school respect my friend in anzanga nyumbani you are, I, I, I see that age you are a father mtoto anaweza kuwa na e eh, anaweza kuwa amepita mzuri kabisa but hata sehemu ya kazi anafanyia kazi ile tu maana resume ya nyumbani atakuja nayo kama mtoto ameanza kuiva kaangumu akiwa hapo kwako na unaona kama mzazi and you don't you compromise that 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 mana itaenda huko nje wacha kusema tio don't bring the issue of school here mannerism begins with you as the parent haya i was talking about cg stadium in kamarin stadium in wapi it's just like what we asasa kuna rebirth there, there, there is actually a rebirth of these things mwingine anasema oh 100 million uh, to the world and not to, to, to constituencies in form of a grant sasa on our side we are talking about 6000 which is very realistic it has been done somewhere like brazil mark me ingia google uangalie brazil is a developing country kuna difference so nataka tuongee ukweli hapa i saw jijopef nani mohamed ali in mombasa anasema ati bandari ilitolewa mombasa ikaletwa 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 naivasha unajua kuna uongo zingine pia you will just make people bitter for nothing utafanya watu wakasirike hao watu watakasirikia mtu fulani watakasirikia kabila fulani you are we are actually putting fire on 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 on, on an ignited fire already tunaweka maji mahali patelezi unaona so wakati wa kufanya siasa i think politics of facts should actually prevail tuambie watu ukweli we want to enable the environment for you to do businesses don't tell people that i'll bring 100000 muliona ile ujinga ya i am sorry to say this i'll not mention any name mtu anaenda anapiga picha mtu mwenye anauza chips kando ya barabara ana post amemsaidia ka umbrella na pesa fulani na ukiona ile pesa alimpatia it's maybe 800 shillings eh huyo msichana she came out clearly na akasema ile gunia ya wa, ya waru eh ile kubwa ilikuwa yango ile ndogo wale wakora walikuja wakapiga picha and they want to they want to boast everywhere that sasa unaona tunainua mama mboga tunainua siji nani please let facts prevail and let facts be seen zionekane haya ni kuja hapa kwa maneno ya crowds wakati sasa mulianza way back in 2013 Eh, mimi na mimi na mdosi wangu tumefanya hii tumefanya hii there were crowds cheering all over sisi tulikuwa tu tumeingia underground unajua sasa wakati unataka kushinda mtu unaingia chini ya maji na unasoma vile anaenda na hizo moves juzi tu tulianza pole pole hapa one love tukaanzia hey, nyandaru wa my friend tukapanda mlima pole 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 and you saw we never stage manage hakuna kenye tulifanya hapo it's just like people are coming out to hear huyu huyu mganga watu wanamsemanga si tuende tuone kama atafanya uganga tu you know these things should not be like this mtu akikushinda wacha kusikia ubaya uanze kuleta goons wa disturb the meeting because the numbers are overwhelming hakuna mtu mwenye amelipa mwingine akuja asikize huyu mtu people are just coming to hear people are just coming to see sasa unajua mahali kuna ubaya Bernard ukienda Meru ukasikia Joe ameongea 001 eh? people just want to die because they feel this is the real thing 
alafu sasa unaanza kupatia watu hapo messages we, we kuna kitu ka mpesa kametumwa na mheshimiwa inua yellow t-shirt yellow cap shout these and these and this you know hiyo it's a sign of defeat umeshindwa tayari now and finally who will stand to lose i want to be very categorical on this <laughs> mjinga akiyaravuka Mwerevu yuko mashakani. Sisi tulikuwa tunapanga hii game pole pole. So the other one who is doing uh, the, the opposite of hiring ndata umia and that person is definitely going to lose. Nimemaliza biashara. Okay, uh, James want to respond to James, please. For, yes. for the cooperation of names, I, I I want I want to state this. Ninimependa hiyo the last statement mjinga akirefuka mwerefu wa mashakani we have had a situation in central where we have servant under representation and also we have servant under funding of projects our children get only 3000 shillings for bursary when some areas they are getting over 20000 sasa ile imekuwa kwa BBI ilikuwa nje kurekebisha ile maneno lakini kuna watu walitumwa pale machinani wakaenda wakafuruga watu kwamba hii BBI imekuja ili mtu fulani azuiwe kuwa rais kwa hivyo kwa sababu kwa wakati huo wale walikuwa na msupport walikuwa namwambia kwamba tutaingia kwa serikali na huyu mtu na atatusaidia watu wetu wengine wa, walikuja waka, wakachukua hiyo propaganda na wakaweka kwa moyo yao saa hii ndio ukweli umeanza kudhiri kwamba tulikuwa tupate lakini kuna mtu alituchanganya alichanganya watu pale chini kwamba hii ni kitu mbofu hii ni kitu mbaya lakini saa hii ile mafunzo imeanza kuonyeshwa pale mashinani kwamba tulikuwa tupate pesa kiasi ile inatosheresha kulingana na population yetu na representation yetu iende sambamba na population watu wameanza kuelewa na wacha ni kuambie ile inakuja kutokea pale Mount Kenya itashtua wa Kenya hiyo tu sababu propaganda haiwezi fanya kazi wakati yote wengine watanjificha kwa mashimo hiyo tu nataka kuambia okay thank you uh, we go to Tisa and then Dan Moses Tisa Good evening everyone. Good evening to you. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I hope I'm clear. Very clear. Go ahead. Now, first, I want to talk about this politics of propaganda. This politics of propaganda has actually been with us here for the longest time. I want to actually echo what my friend has said about the promises we were given in 2013. We were promised so many things. We were promised stadium. We were promised uh, uh, jobs, 1 million jobs per year. We were promised uh, internet. You know Kenya is a country where by many many students and young men and what not are are using internet that those who are doing online uh, jobs so we were promised internet so many things but not even one was delivered what we saw was corruption after corruption that happened between 2013 and 2017 2017 when they were campaigning to reclaim their seats again they told us the same thing promise after promises Not even one thing was delivered. The same people who promised us these things are the very people who have come again with different clothes, again promise, pro, pro, promising us other different things. When they have not actually even delivered what they promised. You know, it is very sad for a government because Ruto is in the government. A government 
to campaign on promises. A government should campaign on what I have done so that give me time to do more. But this is somebody who cannot say what they have done, but can come and tell you what he wants to do. So the politics of propaganda is actually the problem. The reason as to why my brothers and sisters in Tangatanga are getting agitated is because Raila is debunking the lies. This anti-check team is debunking the lies. When they lie, the guy comes and makes it clear. So they feel that the guy is standing in their way. Two, this guy has been running around the country from 2017 to date, thinking that he's the only man in the field until Raila came in. So he feels again, he has to be agitated. And he is, uh, if you would be, be able to observe him keenly. I also want to talk about heckling. Guys, and this I will tell you without fear of contradiction. The heckling that you are seeing in this country is sponsored by William Samoe Ruto. Ask me why. Sonko confessed, Sonko confessed that in 2017, going downwards, they were planting hecklers to paint Raila Odinga and the team as bad people. That was Songo confessing. And remember, Songo was working for Jubilee. And so we now know who can sponsor hecklers. I gave you one example of what happened in Migori. When Jiggy was in Homer Bay, he was warmly welcomed. He was prayed for. And then he went to Migori. He was actually heckled and some stones were thrown at him. Why? Who planted this? We know what happened. Because nobody would have stoned, uh, would have stoned Wanjigi Migori, then stop stoning them, uh, his motorcade, or rather his, uh, his vehicles in Kisumu. Stoning would have continued from Oma Bay, Migori to Kisumu and, and, and Siaya. So you can see something was planted or planned to achieve specific objectives. What happened in to, today, where I was heckled, this, uh, in fact, there was, uh, there was uh, some charts circulating online where these guys were discussing what they would do. And it took their words. They uh, did it. A point of order, please. Yeah. A point of order, Bernard. This, this man who is in bed, can you please just show a good, a good picture? Somebody's in bed here. <laughs> there is no bed, but I listen to my points. Leave my bed James, alone. James is in bed. So can you, James? You don't want to see your bed, but. No, no, no. Let us talk, Bernard. Leave it on the bed issue. People can even be... Excuse me, Rupia. Excuse me, Rupia. Uh, what? Yes. Hold on, hold on, Rupia. Uh, Rupia, if there is a matter yes. that doesn't need yeah. public participation, there is a private chat. You get my attention from the private chat. Okay? Bernard, I'm you. talking about games. Hold on, please. It's, it's so okay, relax. it's okay. Relax, Rupia. Okay. Please mute your mic. I said, if you see something and you want my attention to it, that doesn't need, it, that it has nothing to do with the debate that is going on, you inbox on the private chat, then we can address it so that we don't interfere with the flow of thoughts and submissions. But uh, all of us, let's be civil. Uh, we, we, we know we are on an international platform, so present yourself internationally. Thank you. Tisa, go ahead. Now, uh, I, I was talking about the heckling that happened today. These are people who are sent. And you see, MPs from those regions wanted to, to prove a, a, a point. To tell their master that in as much as it is said that Ailaudinga has taken the ground, we are still here. So they planted their guys and they succeeded. But if we can go, I, Sarah said something. That we have to be, to be tolerant. And indeed we have to. Because, guys, if ODM and the people will decide now, okay, fine, it is now heckling. Because, you know, Ruto is going to uh, Nyanza next week, it has been said. I remember Ruto has now been heckled in Nyanza, rather in the strongholds of Elaudinga. He has now been heckled. But if Ruto is not going to actually talk to his people, to tell them that we want to mature politics, where people are allowed to go around and sell their policies without being interrupted, then I can tell you we are going to a very wrong direction. 
which we can't allow. We are past, that's why Anche came to, to be able to bring the county together. And so we need deputy president to tell his people, call them to order and tell them that allow Raila Odinga to go around and do his th things. Let him not organize few people to go and heckle Raila Odinga because nobody has a monopoly of organizing goons. We are only respecting the constitution and what we are doing, we want political uh, uh, to, to prevent so that each and every candidate can sell the agenda. Another thing that I will tell you uh, for a fact, the question was asked who will lose. Kenyans are wise. Kenyans have woken up. Kenyans know what they want. Kenyans have been lied to and cheated for, uh, for the longest time. So that Kenya would want to know who stands for what? So we know who will lose. Because Kenyans have woken up and they're saying, we don't want somebody to come and tell us how bad somebody is. But they want somebody to tell us what they can do. That's why James said that for the longest time, even in Central, they had been told how bad Raila Molodinga is. They had been told that this man is a madman. They had been told that this man is a mganga. But now that the man has been given platform to exceed the agenda and talk to the people, they are not seeing a madman in the man. They are seeing a sober man who stands for something and who wants a better country. So in the end, I can tell you that Kenyans will elect William Samoei Ruto based on what he has told the county and based on what he has done in the past. Or Kenyans will elect Raila Dinga based on what he has told the county and based on what he has done in the past. But not about heckling, not about inciting people, and not about mudslinging and selling people as bogeymen. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Moses Tisa. That is uh, clear. I believe uh, we are all following. Uh, there is a rebuttal from uh, Dan. Yes, Dan. Unmute and uh, state your submission. Good. Good evening. Uh, I want to, I want to first of all uh, say hi to my former Mo University colleague Moses Tisa, who, um, who did, uh, fired in Mo University sometimes back uh, when we were doing Congress power things, and uh, about his submission, I'm still finding is a, a staunch diehard of. Uh, Laila Mulodinga, where we used to live at that time, and we're still different. Now, today at the uh, Meru, Laila Mulodinga was echoed, and indeed, as uh, patriotic Kenyans, we should condemn the echoing that is taking place in the political rallies. And uh, without doubt, this is uh, uh, an organized thing. It does not come out of uh, the people attending a rally. It's organized clearly. People are paid, and they are told that at a particular time, you should do this and this, which is something we should uh, clearly condemn uh, time as we move on. But uh, we also have to be very careful by associating this echoing to some politicians. We are thinking we are uh, passing a message, but in other words, we are, in fact, uh, entrenching more echoing. The other people, like now Moses Tisa, as I've had, as associated and as saying that the, without without the uh, fear of contradiction, that the echoing is sponsored by the deputy president, that one is still entrenching echoing in this, and uh, the youths who are maybe listening to us, we should condemn it instead of associating it with a politician. Because... Uh, We've been in, uh, maybe to say in this game for so long uh, and, and the politicians can do anything. We cannot exclude anybody, any politician from this circling that is taking place in, in, in political rallies. Now, that one maybe as I've, I've said it, William Samoy Ruto is now the true savior that Kenyans can ever have in the history of politics. Number one, William Samoy Ruto is standing for the poor in the society. He is talking the language of those people who are less privileged in the society. 
that's why these are the uh, uh the, the the nickname the dynasties now are now trying to 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 to, to say that this man is coming with now this narrative is likely to the dislodge us from what we have had for so long that is they have owned big business empires they're the ones who are employing they're the ones who who, who bankroll the government it is so the envy which is being talked about towards the deputy president is because of the the fear the rich have that they are likely to be dislodged from what they already own number two we cannot say that William Samoy Ruto has been campaigning alone since 2017. That is a complete lie. I want to set this record straight. That Laila Molodinga has been campaigning for presidency from 1997 up to date. And in fact, for the record, BBI, which is famously used as a, a, a tool that was to bring Kenyans together, is 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 brought to us in a wrong way because clearly you can see the remnants of bbi even taking it back to parliament with a different agenda the agenda of unity is not even inclusive they're only talking about uh, expanding the executive the 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 the, the bill by jeremiah kioni in parliament so why is this uh, uh, unity they are talking about where well, this handshake uh, inclusivity they are talking about Another thing, the BBI thing that is being talked about, it was actually, you cannot bring one person in and remove another one. And you are saying you are uniting a country. It does not work like that. You keep this one you have, and then bring another one. So don't tell us, in any case, that the BBI was to unite the country. Lastly, lastly, the bottom up, is the way to go. You cannot uh, uh, empower people by giving no, them no, money. Dan, 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 just a moment. Eh? Out of uh, topic. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, Dan, I want us to yeah. stick to ourselves to the topic as much as possible. You're free to give examples, but uh, I would not... Uh, you know, take lightly when there is a deliberate attempt of uh, using the opportunity to make a submission to make a campaign. Bernard, when the other guy was contributing about 6,000, you did not interject. When this guy mentioned yes. about the bottom up, I don't understand. I thought today you are, you are, you are, you are fair. Mala. Yes. I was giving direction there were so many hands lifted about deviation it is not a matter of who spoke and i did not speak and who's who is speaking and i am speaking but we'll try that to be fair and you're entitled try to, to be it. fair okay? you are entitled to it I, I am not here to muzzle anybody from speaking that's why the platform is there in the first place but let's work let's tackle the matter at hand the heckling you have re denied that uh, it is not the DP uh, that we will be interrogated on the same. So let's work towards that. It's not a matter of being muscled. Thank you. So, so if, I, if I, I, I was to conclude, if if, if I was to conclude, uh, uh, the DP, who is uh, a leading presidential grant in Kenya today, is in record. And we can uh, even have hear him talking in his rallies that he supports a united nation. So anybody associating the DP to any echoing in a political rally is a completely long association, and we should cease. We, you, you cannot, as I said, you cannot, you cannot condemn something and associating somebody to that effect. So, uh, because you have said we restrict ourselves to the topic of today, I think that's my submission. And I'm also Tisa to Takutana Tena Badai in uh, 2022. Dan, Dan, hold on. Dan, hold on. Uh, you, you are yes. saying that uh, now uh, it's, my, it's my time. Hold on, Rupia. It is not yet your time. You just came. Now. I've, been, I've been mentioned. Okay. I've been mentioned. Hold on, Tisa. 
uh, I want to ask Dan, if uh, the hair class, the Chuka meeting, or wherever meeting, were heckling the name Kalonzo Musioka, or the name Mdavadi, or the name, uh, who is this, Abdudida, who do we associate that heckling with? Uh, it, it, that is subjective because uh, the association now depends who on the organizer. And again, if I can add more light on this, in 20, I think uh, Songo, this Songo, I had most of these are talking about Songo. Songo conversed in uh, some other rally that uh, in 2017 they had organized uh, a band, Fiecos. And, and, and made some echoing in some political rally in which Lalo Morodinga was seen. And uh, in, in, in that rally, in fact, they were, uh, the echoers were talking about uh, the, the figures that were panned were of ODM. So, to some extent, even the organizers of the event, of the Meru event, can plan the echoing so that they paint their political opponent in a different way. So it does not necessarily uh, to be pointed to somebody. Uh, it depends on who organized that. So uh, again, I stand that we should not associate uh, 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 any equaling to any politician because this is politics and anybody can plan anything against another politician. I, I, I will agree with you to some extent. but well, Thank you very much, Bernard. It's my time, please. Rupia. You Rupia like arguing. Can you give me time? I contribute. Okay. Huh? Relax. Relax. I will give you time to contribute. If you want to heckle, we'll, just, we'll use the other justice system, which I don't want to exercise. No. Bernard, oh, you are my I... friend. I'm next, yes. anyway. You are <laughs> you're not next. Don't take a number that is not yours. But hold on, you are, I think, number three or so uh, from uh, submitting. Just relax yourself. So if the pattern is the same in Kisi, the pattern is the same in uh, other places, uh, they say if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, then it must be a duck. So I, I, as much as we would want to hold brief, I want, as we debate here, not to debate for our presidential candidates or for our political party, but to debate for Kenya. What is healthy for Kenya? Is heckling the way to win political favors or to derail each other from winning political favors? Who stands to gain? Who stands to lose? So can the hecklers the blame will go where who gains from it, who loses from it. It, it can't just be anybody can do it. Uh, Bernard, can you also extend to the former secondly? So, 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 Eva, uh, no, I don't know whether I, I, I did talk. Hold on, everybody. Uh, there is some feedback coming in from some. What I don't know where. Okay, there is. Um, le le let's hear from Felix. I hope Dan, you are through with your submission. But Bernard, you yeah. must be fair. Oh, oh, I'm next. Oh, 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 there was Claire. And, and then, and then, and then I was before. I came before Claire. Then Felix. Felix came after client so it is my time please rupia i am the one who started the show at eight yes PM, okay and i have record of who came in first who came in last so please relax your turn is coming so sour so let's have a my turn show. when is my well, i guess i talk to to bernard Leo, I, well, he, I, Able to, to, to due process, due process. You are almost there. Just relax yourself. Felix, where are you? Felix, are you in? Okay, it seems Felix is not there. Okay, Rupia, you can go. 
Thank you. Even God knows that it was my time. That is why Felix went mute. So, praise God. Today I want to praise God. I don't want to. <laughs> Bernard, praise God. Amen. Oh, amen. We are praising you. Well, guess I praise God. Well, guess I praise God. Amen. You know, I thought I thought when you mukafiri bana, you take a lot of time. Why Just should I praise? And... Why should I praise God na umeniruka? Sijakuruka. You know, the only doubt I have is that I've said praise God, and you have taken almost twenty minutes. You know, that one shows that you are not good. <laughs> anyway, straight to their topic. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for the opportunity. I've seen the topic that uh, uh, it's, it's running here, politics or propaganda. And I want to tell this guy, he's called Dan. You know, in politics, everything is correct. Politics of fact or propaganda. Whether you say that the heckling was stage managed by, by Ruto, it is correct. Whether you say the heckling was stage managed by the by the Raila, it is correct. That is politics. But I want to tell you that politics of heckling, I think Imepito and Awakad, at, at this time, if people are heckling, we just know that it is from some corner. Because in Kenya, who is not suffering or who is enjoying? A few people. A few people are enjoying. And those people who are enjoying, you don't find them in rallies. Do they go to rallies? No, they don't. That is why I'm saying, if Ruto came to Kisumu and he was not heckled, and Raila went to Elderate and he was not heckled. Then this issue of heckling is stage managed. And I strongly believe that uh, it was the opponent's work because they are now fearing that we are gaining ground, more grounds in the central uh, region. And it's by God's grace, you know. There are people who call God and they are not for God. They don't mean it. But it's like by God, God's grace. I told you here that if we need to have William Ruto become president, then he can become president in 2020, 2032 or 2027 on one condition that he supports Israel. Because what does William Ruto offer this country? He is he doesn't have any ideology. That is one. The bo bottom up thing is an ambiguous uh, kind of a pronunciation. It is not even an ideology. It's it's a, ambiguous because William Ruto himself cannot explain his bottom up thing. What does our country suffer from, we have to actually talk about it, that. Because look at William Ruto. Does he have anything to do with the reviving yeah, the economy? Yeah, restrict yourself on the topic, I beg. No put the, topic, the topic is about a two-horse race. It's no, a pro politics of fact. Politics of fact or propaganda. The ugly yeah, I'm saying... Culture. And stage manager. I'm crowd. saying, I'm, what I'm saying is that William Ruto holds a lot of propaganda. That is why I'm, I'm telling you, does he have any ideology? No. He, he purport, yeah, or he present him, himself in a manner that he is well packaged, but he's not packaged. I'm talking about what he's presenting to us as Kenyans that they are ambiguous. They are not founded and they are unwanted by Kenyans. So this propaganda that the, the Tanga Tanga side are actually uh, perf uh, perfecting, 
is not good for this country. That is how I arrived at what is our what does our country need as the as the the, the name as as one each we are the people who are suffering and we know what we need but who is coming with all these things somebody is coming with the propaganda and the other person is coming with the other person is coming with the the other person is coming with actual real issues like when we say we need to revive mumias we need to revive uh, coffee we need to revive tea we need to revive uh, even ever ready i think we are on point but we need real politics we don't need we don't need propagandists like we see in tanga tanga raila has promised uh, 6000 papa i don't know it, it is still not clear to me whether it is papa pa, pa person who is not employed or pa head but this is also a driving factor because our country needs to employ people but how do you employ you must go in industrialization if you cannot industrialize then how are you going to employ people? Because the government is the main employer, yes? But do the government have the avenues and the sources of employing everyone? No, we, the, we, have, we must have private investors at the same time. We must have the government actually uh, putting in place infrastructure like the factories, and the, 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 the industries that will employ these people, that will create that employment so that we don't have a lot of people being, being paid by, by the, 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 the how, how do we call it? This, this pay, pay, payout, that, this uh, direct transfer that will be given by Raila's government. How do we call it, uh, Buana, Bernard? There, there's a social name. Social security. Raila's, not say social security. Well, that person has written. How do we call it? There's a one one word. I was I'm, I'm trying to get it. And, uh, huh? Let me. So this, this is what I'm saying. Watch it. Watch to watch an heckling. Sai, okay, heckle. Mutu ame. Somebody has paid you something to heckle. That is true. Purely true. Somebody has paid you something to heckle, and you heckle there. You don't put your issues on table, and then you don't get it. You heckle for that person uh, when he comes in as president. Like I can just say purely here that the the country was not is not ready for the youthful leadership that you people are talking about because the youth right now. What do the youth know? The youth, what they want is to amass wealth, is to make wealth within a very short time. But do you know the process of making wealth? The youth are just, they are just focusing on stealing from public coffers. So have a, a, Ruto, president, a, Ruto, a Ruto president in 2022 with his propagandas, then you are going to face the music. I don't want to dwell so much, but I also want... I'm also listening to what people are saying, and uh, we'll also weigh in. Thank you for that small time. Okay. Thank you, Rupia. Please mute. Uh, Mala, your hand is up. <laughs> okay. Da Dan, you have a question? Yes, I have a question to Rubia. No. So, what, Rubia, why do you have to say that... No, uh, no. Bernard. Sorry? This Dan mentioned what? me and you refused to give me time no, to no, rebut no, no. And now Jesus, you're giving me time. I am, I am, I'm no, 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 no. This Dan Jesus. mentioned me... Hold on. Even Dan mentioned, mentioned me... And you refuse to give me time to rebuttal, and then you are giving him time now to ask uh, Rubia. And he also mentioned me. Not, uh, hold on, Tisa. Eh, eh. 
relax now. Okay. Fair. We'll give you time. And that is why I'm even giving time to ask Rupia. And then I'll give you to rebuttle whatever you need to rebuttal. Let's not uh, turn this into tit for that. A tit for that in my theological understanding is the lowest level of righteousness. We don't want to deal to dwell there. Okay. Everybody will get equal time to make their submission. There are times when it is conducive to rebuttal, other times it's not conducive to rebuttal. So allow our judgment to guide us, please. Thank you. So Dan, what's your question quickly? Uh, I, I, I'm asking uh, Mr. Rubia. So photo map is not an agenda, it's a propaganda. That is it. You you don't know? Photo map is a pure propaganda because I've, I've actually said that photo map is ambiguous. Nobody can even explain bottom up. If you ask your, 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 your king, he will say, tell you that the bottom up is about giving money to Mamamboga and giving money to, to, to the people at the bottom. Uh, but if you, if you give somebody capital to start a business, let me get now, let us now go to economics. I have given you even 6,000 to, to do, start your business. Then the, the government doesn't focus well, and he, he just focuses on giving money. And they, we, we don't have potential purchasers. You get that? We have willing buyers, we don't, we don't have potential buyers. So where will you get your market? At the end of the day, you have your capital, you've invested, and there are no customers. So what is that? That is my, my brief understanding of bottom-up. So bottom-up is nothing. And it cannot be explained by anybody. It is, it is a way of uh, William Ruto actually uh, fleecing the government by taking money to give to the, the bottom people. And it's not, the money is not even reaching them. The money will be eaten by him and his cronies. So bottom up nonsense is his nonsense. It's nothing. Okay. Uh, everybody has his hand up. C client, what is it? Okay. <coughs> I is just it about wanted what Rupia to... has said? Yes? Does it concern what Rupia has said? Uh, a bit, a bit, uh, but uh, I just wanted to separate the crowd, the hackers from the real voters. <laughs> In those Judges crowd at the heck and wait, where they are head class, I think the client, voters I'm are not there. When you are coming in for your second submission, you will deal with that. Uh, I want to let Tisa rebuttal his uh, issue with uh, Dan, and then we go to Ekesa before we take uh, a second round. In our second round, we will subiri apo apo tunajua in our second round. Yes, Tisa. Asante sana, Bernard. Thank you very much. Dan, how are you? I'm very fine. Okay, fine. First, you said I invited in Moi and what? I was your second gen in Moi University. That one, I think you have uh, had. Two, you are saying that BBI excluded deputy president. You are lying. The president even mentioned that he consulted the deputy in every stage. The deputy also confirmed that he was part and parcel of the BBI. All he wanted to do was politics, which he did with the devolution when he rejected it. He lives in, uh, he, he, li he likes re rejecting good things to take political mileage. That is how he survives. Another thing that I want to tell you here is about the bottom up. Dan, you and me know that even the DP himself cannot explain what bottom-up is. Even if you give him 100 years, he cannot explain. If you listen to what he said today when he's caused about bottom-up, it's different from what he will say when he goes to Kisumu. So he does not understand the bottom-up. He does not understand how, how it works. We have been waiting for him to tell us where the money will come from. At least for Ayla Udinga, he has told us where the money will come from. But the DP has not explained. Lastly, you cannot tell us in this forum that the, that DP stands a better chance to change this country and to help the poor. How do you help the people you loot from? 
I, when I say looting, we have got evidence and somebody has been taken to court, charged. I, I've been giving a sample of Muteshi who took him to court. He was found guilty. He was charged and he was ordered to actually pay. So you cannot tell that somebody who steals from you can help you. Please, Dan, you went to Moe University, the same institution I went to. Don't embarrass me. State fact about your person, what you will do. Jesus, Thank you. Thank People you, like that you. are an embarrassment to the said. Hold on, hold on, Rupia. Stay in order, okay? Uh, Tisa and every other person on this platform, let's avoid going personal. State your facts and let's remain with the facts, okay? No going personal, no taking on on our, deep, our personal uh, issues. Yes, Dan. Dan, you can respond. I, I think uh, you choose to listen to what you want to listen. That's why you can uh, clearly say that you don't know what put map means and uh, you, you call it propaganda in any case. Uh, because that's not the topic for today, I want to just uh, mention to enlighten you a little bit about the bottom up. Just a sentence that bottom up is the empowering of the lowest level of people, of business people, the Mambamboga, the Boda Boda riders, and the rest. To Can you define lowest level, level of people, please? Rupia, Rupia, stay in order, give please. Them, okay? If you want to interject, lift your hand. Sawa, sawa. Please, stack it to Rupia. Now, when you say a platform? You empower and, them financially mm -hmm. and legally to give them a conducive business environment to carry out their businesses. That's what bottom map means. Giving farmers subsidy what they need to improve the agricultural produce. That's what bottom map means. I mean, we're not giving Savaricom, not, not really Savaricom, but... Uh, now, if you have imported maize, your man has imported maize, how, how can you say that you give farmers... Then, then you're not doing your work. You are biased. So that, that's what bottom up means. Bottom up means we start from the lowest level of the economy and push it up, it upwards. So if you choose not to understand the meaning of bottom up, you will say it is not, it's a propaganda. But if you listen carefully, that's these are some of the echoes in the political analysis because they don't go and listen. They go there to echo, so they don't listen, so they don't know what bottom up means. I think uh, it is not today for bottom up. Dan, Let us uh, give the Dan, other Dan, hold thing. On, hold on. Uh, I, just, uh, I, I am, uh, I'm a I'm a very uh, simple in terms of understanding issues in picture form. Okay. Uh your model of economics is bottom up. Okay. Uh so this empowerment, where will be coming from? Done. Unmute. The, the empowerment will be coming from the government. The government which is at the top. Of course, which is at the and top. Then, and then it sends the money down. Yes, it, it sends the money down. So how, how, how does that now turn into bottom up? Because they, it started at the top, then it went down. It is corrected at the top and it's given down. At the top, I mean, at the then bottom. Your, mo your model should be top down. No, it is bottom, bottom up. up. No, at the end of the how, day, how now? The end of, if, if the Senna, let me, from top, let me explain this to you. Down. Let me explain that to you. Yes. Let me explain Sorry? that to you. Explain. explain. Let me explain. Remember, even even the government. The correct that funds and it gives done Dan, Dan, sit up properly your your financial body to, to is maybe to lend or any other body or any other big organization so that it, it can distribute Put it down once. Now, this one will now 
start. Dan, 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 you're not clear. Hold on, I think you are, your network is affecting you, and we really want to hear your explanation. So I will give you a chance to do that. Uh, you need to correct your audio. It is not consistent. If it uh, refuses to improve, you should log out and log in so that you correct it. Uh, James, what is it? Uh, what, what I wanted to add is that uh, when we discuss here, I believe we discuss because we want to put intellectual depth on matters that have been stated by our readers. We want to enlighten people more on what it is. If you don't know, you don't know. The questions asked by Bernard are very pertinent because what it means here by bottom up, those who may understand a bit, is production from below and then money moves from below there upwards rather than money moving from up down and the 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 the, 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 the to get the gist of the matter the deputy president has been on uh, a statement that uh, he made a statement that they will no longer <clears throat> concentrate on corporates Corporates means companies like, uh, you know, Parastatos uh, and, and so on, and Savaricoms and the rest. So instead of <coughs> concentrating on policies that uh, facilitate trade at that level, they will instead go down there and pick up Mamamboga. Now, what is very clear here and must come out is this, that the same, same people who are actually uh, condemning the so-called dynastic companies, they will rely on taxes collected from these corporates, and then that money is taken down to Mama Boga. That is according to what the last uh, speaker talked about. So I don't know why we must put up with this kind of argument which does not have intellectual depth if you don't know something you don't know it and it is a fact that uh, whenever somebody has trying to explain what it is they are filled with fraud because now the simplistic uh, argument is that every constituency will be given 100 million uh, from uh, the central government so that they can dish out to the youth to buy border border to buy whatever they want, car washers and all that. Now, there is a problem in that. Even those who have done economics will tell you that there is a big problem with that. What will happen when all the youths flock to the, to the CDF office? Because that will inevitably happen. To demand that money so that they buy border borders and uh, go and uh, make a car wash and with all those salons and the rest then uh, what how will that business work when a small market will have over 50 salons when uh, a constituency an area in a constituency will have over 600 motorcycles let us be serious my friends the, the economics is not a joke Okay, yes, yes, you. yes. Baby. Thank you, James. I, I, uh, I think your point is clear. Let us uh, let it rest there. Uh, Robert, I'll yes. give you one. I'll give you one minute because uh, you are coming back to make submission. Uh, it is Wekeza's uh, turn, and then in Awezekana. So, Robert, make your your interjection in one minute or so. Uh, thank you, Bernard. Uh, it's not really an interjection. It's just a clarity that I wanted uh, uh, Brother Dan to come clean on this because uh, this is a very serious platform and we should not... Engage Welcome to the show, guy. David Olo. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Anna. Uh, Bernard, Rupia, Rupia, you just came from uh, quarantine. And there, uh, you are beginning to break rules again. I'll send you no, there again. 
So no, don't say you know the people you, you can send there, but don't send me there. You know, Clinton I, used to send us there and he left. The moment you begin to coronization yourself, you are sending, I'll send you to quarantine. Relax, let's flow, okay? Robert, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Bernard. Um, my, 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 my question is... Uh, to Brother Dan, he talks about uh, the bottom-up uh, uh, economic model, and he has been tasked to explain what it means. And I can see he's grappling with these words, uh, trying to explain the same thing. Now, my serious concern is this. We already have existing uh, structures that explain or whatever he was trying to uh, to grapple with a while ago. We already have devolution. We already have GAF. We already have CDF. And all the money are going to the ground. All those structures are there. Have we asked ourselves uh, what has been done with all those structures that are in place before uh, we start crafting new structures? calling them economic models, you can name them, whatever you uh, you want to name them. Have we exhausted the uh, existing structures so that now we, we come to a point where we can now say that uh, this is not working uh, and it's not working because of A, B, C, D. So let's come up with uh, new uh, economic models. That was my question to uh, Brother Dan. I I I I hope he's still on uh, uh, on the show. No, he has left. He's not on the show. He will. He, he went. He's sorting out his audio. When he is back, he will be. Anyway, be bottom up is nothing, my friend. Don't even yeah. ask a question about. Appear you out of order. Please stay in order. Now, Wekesa, it's your turn after you is in our Zekana. Then uh, there is Nato. Wekesa, welcome to the show. Uh, Leon has come. And David, of course. Eh, you mean Gian is given your Nangiria Ruto ever, Jama? I'm in. Mimi, mimi, utanipata hapa hapa na msimamo wangu wezi ubadilisha kwa hivyo relax tu. Eh, Let's 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 relax. It is uh, Wekesa in our Zekana, then we move on. And please let's remain civil or else what we like quarantine kwanza to my debate. Wekesa, go ahead. Okay. Um I'll I'll begin by saying that uh, uh what is going on in politics uh it's not new. Uh, we have something called Ma Machiavellian tactics. And on the political menu of uh, Machiavellian tactics are many. First, I will talk about uh, conjecture. These are term called conjecture. Conjecture is half truth. For example, you can get a clip or a speech someone is saying. He has said one thing and finished and made a different conclusion. So for you, if you want to deal with your enemy, you cut half of the clip, you pick half of the statement, and then you run it. And that is what is happening with the Kenyan KOT, Kenya, the, the what was social media. So you find these uh, clips running on social media, and uh, most of them are, are conjectures. They are half-truths. But if you watch, if you could take the whole speech and you listen, you could understand what somebody is saying. So most of the uh, politicians and followers and uh, uh, decoys of, uh, of politicians use that uh, in, in politics. 
Uh, there's another thing called innuendos. Innuendos uh, and majority, most of us are victim, we use that. Uh, innuendos are derogatory remarks. <clears throat> you want to belittle your opponent. Um, like sometimes even me, I use kuna jamana itwa shaman ya mamamboka, so sometimes I use it. Uh, it, it you, you want to make your enemy look you want to make him look smaller in the eyes of other people. Like the way even the wheelbarrow has been taken overboard. Uh, so that is part of the in political innuendos. They are elusive. Uh, they, they, they create, they intimidate, uh, intimidation. Let, let me use the word intimidation. You, you want to intimidate your, enemy, your, your opponent these are uh, psycho fancy and that is heckler's fall in that categories you want to do something to capture the attention of your the person maybe you are supporting uh, you want to show him that you are protecting his territory you want to stand with him and uh, because you don't have maybe intellectual capacity to stand on the platform and challenge people through uh, the ideas. And that even not only in rallies, it happens on this platform. If somebody comes, uh, 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 seriously brings up issues that are against you are, you are, you, the person you are supporting, then the show turns into shouting because you can't challenge it. So you want to use, you want even to raise the voice uh, it happens even in marriages. Sometimes you can be intimidated by your wife and you raise your voice. Uh, or the other way around. Um, propaganda, that is what we are dealing with. Um, actual propaganda is misinformation and misleading information. Uh, you, you take truth and you pick, you, you remove some you take something that looks like truth and then you okay you should you should cut you either should cut lies or you make uh, truth lose its value you remove some some so, some element so that you the, the aim of propaganda is to mislead and uh we the normally politicians by their politicians are very clever the reason why they want to mislead is because they know most people are not informed. Uh, uh, like we normally say, Kamaraila uh, Mesoma Katiba Ikosawa. So anyone who wants to use propaganda on that can use because he knows you yourself have not taken time to understand the issues. So if, if politicians use propaganda on you, you don't blame politicians. You blame yourself because you don't have the bedrock of information. If you have information, then nobody will play propaganda on you. But since you are lacking in information, people will mislead you. Uh, yeah, when uh, someone like yesterday was, I don't know whether yesterday or a day before, when someone stands on this platform and says that uh, there was uh, there was what in 1997 uh, was it free was it CDF or what and you know it began after the, the the regime of Kibaki then you see this person is passionate to support his uh, candidate yes but he does uh, Either he doesn't have information or he even assumes that nobody will rebuttal what he's saying because most people are not curious. Today, even if I come up with a quote today and uh, like someone says that the Bible says call a spade a spade and you realize that is not the Bible, it's just a, an English saying. Uh, but because I've never opened the Bible, I will think that's a scripture. Uh, and, and so people cap cap capitalize on our, our ignorance to, to do propaganda. Fake news, yeah, we can tap it fake news in media. 
someone comes up with a juicy headline, but it doesn't have uh, the information. They just want to capture your attention. They just want to, and politicians are good at that. Okay, and then that is stage managing, stage managing like that, those crowds. Sometimes you can stage manage a crowd or you do what? You can uh, stage manage crowd response. Uh, most politicians have employed that. I remember the first time uh, uh, Kalonzo was heckled in Mombasa. Uh, he went there and the, uh, when the, 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 the opinion polls were showing that he was, he, he was leading. And then uh, they crafted a plan to <laughs> tame his wings. And he attended a rally in Mombasa and the crowd turned hostile against him. So politicians are very crafty. Uh, they can turn the whole crowd against you. So you, you never walk in a rally blindly. Uh, so what I want to say is that whoever was stage managing may be heckling against Raila Odinga. Dinini uh, Raila Jaiwana. He has been in politics. And now, if he, he was never intimidated by GSU, Akatoka um, Airport, Kapita through the tear cars, Mbaka Akafika Uhuru Park. So can you intimidate him with a few young men just shouting Ruto, Ruto? So you also have to understand when you are using intimidation to your opponent, understand the opponent. Uh, there are people where intimidation can't work on him because you have to know this which which stuff is this guy made of there are those guys you can uh, intimidate and they they, they 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 freeze but there are those you give them power through those uh such activities hostility to liambiwa ground is hostile for 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 uhuru it was meant to intimidate uhuru and uh, pull him into unduly accepting someone's candidate, or he was, they wanted to pull a rack under his feet so that he can for, forcefully accept someone's candidate, but he refused. So sometimes politicians use that hostility, fear mongering, intimidation, and heckling uh, to redirect others. If, if you have in that why when I say manga, if you if you have to join politics, you have you need to have a thick skin. Because even go to the page, so easy go to the page of William Ruto, go to the page of uh, Raila Odinga. You will read maybe five or twenty positive statements. The rest in the drama. Uh, but uh, if you are weak or faint hearted, now that is not an area for you. Because uh, people do that. Now, I'm not here to advocate for that. I'm saying, okay, those, maybe the beginners of politics are the one who put it wrong. Uh, they introduced to us that is called Machiavellian tactics. But we need to slowly move from there to real issues that are affecting our life and our nation. Uh, so having said that, uh, uh, let's not me me I, I I don't like focusing so much. Those are called side shows, and the main show was that Raila went to Central, and he had almost was it eight or seven to eight rallies, and um, part of it he addressed the university students, and he re reiterated that he's going to to make a help a grant. Uh, to me, that should, was something to come out strongly. But again, you see that the, your opponents will use those small things to make headline and divert the attention of what was going on to a mere drama. Even when you look at the heckling, uh, out of the, if, if let's say if a thousand people turned up, then out of a thousand, it was only 20 or 15 guys heckling. So you cannot therefore conclude that uh, the ground is hostile. Yeah. So 
these are just show showbiz people do it and even you you we, when you see that heckling happening in a camera you see whoever the area where heckling is is where the person who who was having a camera is in fact some of them it's a selfie a meshika even and so he's part of the heckling the guy who was part of the heckling is the one who who captured the the the, the video so there are small pockets of, 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 of misinformation meant to divert people's attention on what was happening. But if I can summarize uh, what happened to the mountain, it was a successful one. One, there's a picture trending on social media. There was Kraitu Murungi, and then Baba was in the middle, and then uh, there was uh, uh, Munya. Uh, Ali washikanisha mikono hivi, and he didn't talk. Uh, the, even the MC said that now there's no need to talk. The action has spoken louder than what you could have spoken. So I want to say that Baba is a unifying factor, and he's bringing these warring facts together so that they can walk in one direction. If you look at even, maybe let me single out to my county, uh, Bungoma, when you look at Fort Kenya, what has been happening? Uh, there's a lot of wrangles, but Baba has not taken sides, maybe to say he's working with the Wetangula or working with the Sales faction, but he has been trying to give them time to, because he wants to work with the, all the, uh, the, the politicians. So it brings out the nature of um, uh, Raila leadership that uh, he can transcend these petty issues and petty politics uh, to bring out the leadership that uh, people required. It's just recently that uh, Munya and Neni were answering each other in a bad language, and I thought like, they could not be on the one platform, but they did. If you check even when they started the first day, uh, uh, Kiraitu Murungi mentioned all the people who were in the rally and then, by the way, he said, uh, by the way, we also have uh, our CS Munya. So he, he he was not free to talk about, but by the end of the whole series of events, which was today, they were one and they were moving in one direction. So that shows that a higher power, a higher leadership came and brought these people together. So me, I want to look at the positive things that happened and uh, I don't focus so much on the side shows that um, one or two people uh, brought so that confused the masses. I want to use this analogy because Bernard is a is a, a man of the color and he understands it. Maybe he will, he will confirm this. Uh, they normally say when a pastor is preaching uh, and he hears someone at the far corner there shouting like he's demon possessed. Uh, he doesn't turn the preaching into a deliverance session. You don't stop and then and go and pick and you focus on that and it becomes. Some of them are there to distract you. Uh, it may look like he needs a spiritual need, a spiritual uh, support, but in the real sense is a distracting spirit. And so if you focus on that, you lose what you are doing. You rather give assign somebody to do it on your behalf. And so uh, this heckling and whatever, it's not something that should be it take, it should take the center stage. It should be handled. That's why we have bouncers in those meetings. So the bouncers are there to deal with hecklers. And if you are dealt with I was the same at Anna, maybe the man in black came and bounced on me. No, because you are distracting. If you do something wrong, you meet the wrath of the authority. So me, uh, in summary, that is what I can say. Those things are not in politics, but uh, they are... Wanatapeli watu wa Mombasa hii, etipoti inataka kuamishwa yende naivash. Kweli kuna tofauti ya watu waliokwenda kusoma darasani na wale walienda madukani kununua makaratasi ya certificate kama network imeenda tunaelewana mapelewati
wewe mudi ya Mombasa nataka nikuulize eti sisi tutahamisha poti kutoka hapa kwenda Naivasha yani bahari hii tutahamisha mpaka ifike Naivasha hata kama mtu huna akili hiyo itafanyika kwa njia gani mimi na Eh, wekesa, as you conclude, eh? Eh, wekesa. Wekesa, as you conclude. So, so, sorry, I have had a network issue. I oh, I was issue. saying, I like your contribution, yes. but as you conclude, I would like you to make a comment on the POMAS issue where the deputy president was heckled and the leaders who are leading the heckling was the president and Raila Molo Dinga. Maybe you can make a comment so that you can conclude. My friend, when when yeah, did Raila ever lead? Le, le, thank you for reminding where me. Where did that, Raila uh, lead heckling, my friend? Why do you want to lie to us? Thank you. Well, let me just handle mm -hmm. it. Order, uh, everybody. Order, everybody. Uh, Mala, this guy is Mala, just wasting I, our that, time. That is where we started. Uh, I don't know why you want us to go back there. Better let me answer in one statement. Please do that quickly, and we need to move on. Because I think your time is up. Yeah, I, I, I've talked about uh, half truths. You see, it's it's not proper to say that they were the one who incited them. Heckling uh, sometimes come out spontaneously, so it was not like somebody's stage managed it. And even if when it happened, we are condemning heckling. We are not saying Ruto related heckling is bad and Raila related heckling is good. We are condemning heckling, it's not the right thing to do. And uh, the best way is to, most of the time, when somebody actually the, the contributions that Ruto brought out were strong points. And I uh, even president listened and added points in the BBI. So don't say that President uh, Ali support you, Hegley, because he said all those issues Ruto raised, they were incorporated in BBI. So if now your issues have been incorporated, why are you still then flip-flopping? Okay. Okay. Uh, I want us to it was in our Zekana. Robert is still here. Yes, we are going to go in that order in our Zekana. Uh, then Robert, then Nato, and then uh, David. Hey, na yun taongea kwe. I'll just... Okay, okay. David, yun taongea after two hours. No, it's not two hours. We are, uh, restrict yourself to three to five minutes, everybody. In our Zekana, Quickly, please. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Bernard, uh, fellow panelists. I just have one uh, one point to put across concerning the topic. Uh, the topic of today is, uh, if I can read, uh, where is it? Uh, politics uh, of fact or uh, propaganda. The ugly heckling uh, culture. Uh, is it stage managed? Uh, stage managed crowds. So. I would like to start with the, our former president, the, the late uh, Daniel Torey Teach, said that Sia uh, Sambaya Maisha Mabaya. So uh, uh, during this time, what we can see right now is uh, we have two uh, title contenders. We have Raila Odinga and we have uh, uh, the deputy president. And we can see we can clearly see that one is is really selling his agenda uh, when when his supporters are asked what what the this leader said they can uh, actually say what is he he promised them what he has been telling them that he will do and uh, yeah the other leader uh, is actually actually is uh, is not selling his agenda is full of, uh, we call it uh, mohahe. We say it's just uh, garbage. He, he just uh, uh, gives out garbage 
and he, he gives uh, out small truths. And that is one Mr. William Samoy Ruto. Mr. William Samoy Ruto, he, he, he only gives out small truths. He only gives out small details of what he's going to do. The other thing that he does in his campaign is just to, to, to paint a bad picture of his opponents which is not good in politics, relating to what our former president, Mr. Daniel Toroiti Tarapmoi said. He said, this is, this is what leads to a, a division. You know, in Kenya, we can have div divisiveness or we can have diversity. And uh, Raila, we can see that he is making Kenyans have uh, diversity when he tours different uh, regions of Kenya, like when he tours Turkana, when he tours Eldoret, when he tours the coast and all these other regions, uh, this shows that there is diversity. And in diversity, we find that there is unity uh, in that manner. But when you look at William Ruto's side, what he does is he creates a divisiveness. People uh, get, uh, become more divided and they, they tend to hate this other side that is not uh, supporting Mr. William Ruto. Uh, also, what we, we can get from that kind of divisiveness, uh, you will find out that these people, they, 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 they don't even uh, have time to, to, to listen to what this other opponent is saying. They, uh, when you ask them, when you even ask them what their leader is, is telling them, they cannot even explain what their leader is talking about. So he is the Sambaya, Ambayo in a letter on a Biongozi, and specifically Kiongozi Moja, uh, in a letter he is a na in a letter he divisiveness, which Mr. Raila Molo Dinga did not, yondo uh, ilifanya akaenda ko handshake. Na alipoenda ko handshake, alitaka watu wakue kituki moja. And so to just uh, conclude, I like to say that uh, People should try to listen to what other leaders are trying to say. People should try to, to digest what, uh, what the opponent is trying to say. People wanafaa wakue ni wawe na urahisi wakuanda to the other side. Izikue ya tisasa, at this point you may decide, you have decided and you are not going to listen to what the other leader is talking about. Iyo ingine atakama make Korojo, uh, we were just going to stick to what your leader is going to say. Kama mimi ni kupande wa Raila, uh, I should try to listen to what Mr. Ruto is trying to say. And he, is he saying the truth? And is, he, is it better than what Mr. Raila Odinga is saying? And if it's better, I should move to the side of Mr. William Ruto. And that is what, and that should also happen vice versa. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, if I have other comments, maybe Mr. Bernard will give me another chance. I will uh, appreciate. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Inawezakana. Uh, we appreciate your uh, contribution. I believe there's no matter arising from there. Let's go straight to Robert. Uh, let's restrict ourselves to three to five minutes. Uh, uh, avoid uh, starting out a fire so that we move faster, please. Thank you. Uh, ben, thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I will be very brief. I'll take less than three minutes given out. But uh, my concern in today's topic as a Kenyan uh, is that why do we have this heckling going on? Because these are considered... Uh, as uh, politics of uh, politics without substance. <clears throat> because when you plan and stage manage an uh, echoing to your opponent, what do you intend to achieve? When on the other end, you are trying to propagate what we call uh, uh, uh democracy you, you 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 portray yourself as a democratic person 
And we all know that as a democratic person, for <laughs> when we are in a democratic field, everyone should be given an opportunity uh, to sell his or her agenda without uh, uh, infringing in his or her rights. So, for example, each and every uh, person in this uh, country is allowed to visit any part of this country. And, for example, now in this scenario, we have politicians. They're all allowed to walk into any part of this country. And maybe if you're a presidential candidate, you sell your agenda to any part of this country. Now, when we start having uh, some people going to other quarters and being heckled, uh, assuming or uh, thinking that you also, you, will, you won't go to uh, uh, these other person's zones or uh, his uh, uh, political bedrooms and find the same scenario. And uh, Ben, this is how hate and uh, some of the things that we've experienced in this country are propagated the fights and uh, the youth going against each other and killing each other because of politics. This is how it is being propagated. And the moment you start re radicalizing youths, um, whether you call them heckling, that is, uh, you're, what you're trying to do is just, you are re uh, radicalizing youths against some, someone. What will happen if this particular person uh, get to power? Are we asking ourselves that question? So those are some of the things that we are supposed to be concerned with as Kenyans. This is not something that we, are, uh, uh, we should uh, laugh about or uh, joke about. This is something very serious. And we need to do a lot of civic education to every brother around you about this, so that uh, we have a country uh, that uh, we embrace each other. Uh, irrespective of where you come from or which tribe you come from. Uh, what I've seen also in uh, politics, using facts to create your own agenda out of facts by misleading people, which has been explained by uh, our brother Wekesa. This is also something that is playing out there which is more dangerous to us. Like today, someone has just played a clip here of uh, William Ruto in Mombasa, uh, trying to explain to the Mombasa people uh, why uh, that port is not supposed to be transferred to Naivasha, for example. But they're not asking themselves a very good question. That Who is William Samoy Ruto? Let's to start with, uh, fr from that point. Is he not the deputy president, the second in command, the principal assistant to the president? Can he really claim, honestly claim, that he is not aware of how that idea started, that he's not part of it, that he doesn't understand anything or, or what happened, how that thing was crafted? And now try to sanitize himself as a clean person in front of a common monainchi. Allow me to say this, Bernard. It is high time as common monainchi. We need to uh, sit down and uh, uh, do some uh, introspect about ourselves and the way we look at things or the way we digest things that are being said to us. Because we are used to these politicians telling us what we need to hear. But it's about time now we need to uh, critique even what they are telling us, or what do we need to hear. Are they being genuine to us? And this is across the board. It's not only the, uh, the deputy president, all the politicians. Are, are they really telling, uh, being honest to the common monainchi? That is a fact question that we need to ask ourselves. Now, uh, as I conclude, politics of hate 
Poli divisive politics, politics of heckling, will never take any contender or any politician anywhere, but will only taint his or her name. And we should be very careful, even us being robbed in some of these activities, because uh, some of us here are uh, good, 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 good mobilizers. And we know money is very sweet. But remember while taking that money, remember that money, that same money can be used to hurt your sister, to hurt your brother, to hurt your uncle, to hurt any other Kenyan in this country. So let us be mindful of any activities that we involve ourselves in, that we involve our brothers in, that we involve our youths in, that we involve uh, our relatives in. Uh, ben, allow me to stop there and uh, ask uh, Brother Dan if he is here to answer my question. Thank you. Well, thank you, Robert. Uh, Dan is not yet here, so relax. I believe he will uh, return. Uh, one housekeeping. Uh, the people on the, on the behind the curtain, you're making the screen too dark for the viewers. Only stay in the behind the curtain if you have to, but uh, let it not be everywhere dark. To Tanza Kusafisha, we take you to quarantine until you are able to show us how your face, then you will be given opportunity to speak. Uh, well, let's uh, hear from Nato, and then uh, after Nato is, is David Olo, and then uh, Temba, I think so, before Zach. Okay, Nato, Karibu. Unmute, unmute your mic, please. Okay. Yeah, unmute, unmute. Your turn now. Uh, oh, hey, that's no, just once. Uh, hey, okay, good. okay. Uh, I, am I am I edible? Like uh, you can hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, our host Bernard and uh, my fellow panelists. Today is my first day joining you guys, and uh, I'm happy. I've been following your uh, discussion like every day. So, actually, coming back to the title, like uh, politics of fact and propaganda. We have been having this uh, propaganda, not only that it, uh, it started currently, but from way back when, uh, you know, 202, when uh, Moyu was actually like uh, getting off the power. So it started there and uh, it has been a norm to uh, coming young politicians. So like uh, what I can say, Ever since like uh, 2017, 2018 up to now, uh, it has been a slogan to some of the politicians actually to, uh, let me use the word AKA, they actually take uh, a fiction word or a narrative. Then they make it to be a fact, whereby you can just like see this is not a fact. For example, we have been hearing uh, some of the supporters from uh, different politicians. You get uh, your, a politician going somewhere on a rally, and then uh, he actually like uh, uh, give his opinion or maybe give his views, ideas, or uh, uh, the, what he, he needs to do for his people, or, the votes, but it gets uh, overturned by the people. Let me say from the media, if I say so. You get it, uh, the content being edited and uh, something like a uh, sound, people shouting, heckling. Uh, but uh, in reality, you were on the ground. You had everything, but coming to social media, you get something different. Even you get shocked. You, you might think you are dreaming, you're daydreaming, something like that. So. Uh, of so sort, 
Let me take a few minutes on uh, explaining the other ugly heckling culture and stage managed uh, crowds. This has been the current generation uh, tactics of actually like bringing any politician going from another uh, county. For example, uh, you can see, I believe like uh, now we started having mature politics and everything was going on well. Like, uh, you know, uh, Ruto going to uh, uh, this side of, uh, of uh, Obado and then that, that side of Migori, sorry. And then you see like uh, people will come to him and uh, everything went down well. You know, it was very mature. And uh, we expected the same when uh, Raila went back to Eldoret. We thought that things were okay, according to what we saw on the screen. But uh, unfortunately, there was a video going viral about people who are waiting somewhere on the road, paid goons to actually like show uh, that someone is unwanted in their territory. And then this video is being posted even maybe the leader gets into their town. So it actually cuts the morale of the people who want to go and listen to this politician. That is, a, that is something that we can say uh, the young politicians are using to actually make things turn around to anybody who wants to sell his or her agenda somewhere. So uh, to this kind of uh, politics, to my side, I think uh, something has to be done because if now, if everybody stands on his ground and say that I'm coming from Kakamega, now that means Ruto shouldn't come there. Or maybe every politician start hiring uh, maybe bloggers. And we also go to their meetings and start like uh, pick 50 heads of goons and uh, with billboards chanting uh, a different candidate's name or maybe a different candidate's name on that billboard or something. Then you take your camera, face them, tell them it is time. Then you just post that video and it goes viral, boom, like a bushfire. That is what is happening. Uh, Mr. Bernard. So I have no much to say, but as I close, is that uh, actually we should learn on mature politics rather than propaganda and this kind of heckling culture that is coming around. It will bring trouble. It will bring trouble because we know Raila is a good uh, guy coming to these things. So he's quiet seeing what is happening. Thank you so much, guys. God bless. Okay, thank you, Nato. I believe that's clear enough to everyone. Uh, let's uh, move on. David Olo, it's your turn. Okay, how are you guys there? We are um, good. Thank you for showing up. Karibu. At long last. I've waited for so long, but... It was not two hours like you. It's my turn. Yeah, now I just want to say, I just want to talk, and then talk. my talk is within what you have posted there. Now, um, I just want to say that I don't think if these people were paid to do what they did, I think they were just radical Ruto supporters. They just want to show, they saw the event that was going on was big and was marvelous, so they wanted to, drive a point that Ruto is is in the ground no matter what is happening. They are just people who just felt sad with what was happening. Maybe everybody from their area was moving towards where Baba was. So they decided that because they don't want to go to that meeting, let them play some games. So 80% uh, of my belief thinks that they were not paid. I think they were just radical Ruto supporters. Because those are the sites that Ruto has a big support. Those are 58% of the guys who support him. And now, 
since they know that his support is diminishing now they are angry and they can do anything so that is what went on and then i just want to say that uh, hecklers are so many even here if you just go out now and you read the comments you will find you will find some people r- r- writing some very bad things about you so hecklers are everywhere there are people who don't want the truth um, i just want to say that uh, maybe they are afraid they've realized that ruto is not going to be president because now things are open raila has got a massive p- support and so many big big fish are supporting raila so they are not happy that is why they are doing those things so i just want to say that uh, uh, i really really pity kenyan sometimes because what raila is selling is very very clear very simple and it's something that if you actually listen to it leads you somewhere but ruto is even saying nothing like today when i was watching him in mombasa he said nothing totally nothing he just speaks he said talks about vitenda wili talks about that guy yule jamaa mama mboga he's saying totally nothing yet some people are really really happy about him so i just want to say that kenyans they must just wake up because we are not living in those primitive days kenya is very very backward if you look at the services that the government is giving people compared to other countries you will cry if you want to know how kenya is beyond just cross and move to dubai move to saudi arabia or move to qatar and you will see how a good government works you will see the schools there you will see how they do their things they, how people live their people don't beg only foreigners beg there like now you so you see kenyans uhuru is really really trying to make their life better so that they can match with other countries but they don't see every time when they court newly find something they celebrate like this thing of huduma number Huduma number is the way to go all countries have that kind of identification but i'm surprised that kenyans don't like this you see you see if the government all have all your details is when they can know when something is happening to you because they have your details it's just an inch away they just go to the computer they click and they get all your details but kenyans don't like this thing simply because this chicken thief from sogoi has told them that it is wrong you see they don't even reason so me i just pity my country i just pity you so much and for young people who are supporting this guy <laughs> i don't know you see you will one day just get old but when you get old and you have nothing to leave for your family simply because a politician misled you you know raila can if raila can just become president then he does 50% of all that he has promised just 50% life in kenya will be somewhere else so people should just be very very careful with what they are choosing and if people miss it in 2022 it will take people a very very long time to get back to the right way in fact people have never been to the right way people have never been to the right way and 2022 we have a chance you see raila is someone who really really loves this country and he wants to do good he wants to do good if you like you know what raila is campaigning everywhere he's going to every county the ones that don't like him and the ones that like him ruto he has chosen some of those country some of the counties he goes to because he is afraid of shame Raila is not afraid of shame. He wants to go. He want to reach every Kenyan. He want to, he's like he wants to he wants to preach that news to everyone. So I just want to tell Kenyans that be careful. Be very very careful. You have an opportunity make the right choice and you will not regret. Thank you. Okay, thank you David. Uh, that is uh, clear enough. Uh Themba VP Salama sana mkubwa good morning good evening and uh, good afternoon uh, good e- good evening from this end of the world uh, thank you ile picha ile mtu amepanguzwa 
Sasa kuna mtu hapa haja mute sijui nani. Okay, thank you. Um politics of facts or propaganda, the ugly heckling culture and stage managed crowds. I want to address myself to the three. I want to start first with uh, uh, suggesting that uh, <clears throat> propaganda is a tool and it is used across human life in persuasion. It's a persuasion technique. Uh, it, it has been used especially for those who are marketers. You understand that uh, propaganda is one of the tools that you use. And I want just to mention but a few uh, techniques of propaganda that have been used out there. One of them is bandwagon. Bandwagon technique is where you come with an item and you suggest that everyone is using it because people want to, to move to a popular thing. So you start by saying that everyone in Kenya is using Safaricom. The truth is not everyone is using Safaricom or uh, whatever thing that you're trying to sell. So that's a bandwagon technique. The other one is card stacking technique where you only talk about the good of something, but you hide the real things. If you go, especially when you look for a, a loan, they will tell you the good sides of taking a loan in a particular bank. But they won't tell you that uh, if in case of default, they will be coming for everything that you own. So those are things that we, they will not talk about. So it is a tool. There's also another technique, plain fox, where they use the common people because they're imagining if we take a picture with, uh, with uh, a certain person holding maybe the item they want to sell, it will bring the picture that you guys identify with the common people. So that's also a technique, uh, which is not true. Testimonial technique, where you want to bring, you take, for example, uh, when they want to sell a particular oil, that is uh, that they want to take into the market. They will look for a particular celebrity who has a very soft skin. And then uh, that person takes a picture and uh, they say that that person ha has used that particular oil on their face. So you can take it. You know, that's propaganda. The person might not have not necessarily used that. They have not taken someone. They have not given you the stages of that person using that oil up to where they have gotten where they are. They're only giving you the end result and they're telling you that oil will make you look that way. So that's propaganda. And of course, the other one is uh, glittering generalities where they just tend to wipe emotions. They give statements that are vague <laughs> to wipe your emotions. And of course, uh, name calling as a technique. Now, propaganda is a tool. It is, it is used across board in marketing, to influence people's perception because politics is about perce perception. So someone needs to shape the views of a particular individual towards a certain point. And so how you use the tool is very important. Even governments use propaganda, especially in times of war. You know, they have to find a way of, uh, you know, shaping the, the, the population and the people around them. Now, one person that has been known to have used propaganda was uh, Joseph Goebbels. For those who have uh, read Hitler around that time, he was the chief minister of propaganda in Hitler's, uh, Hitler's uh, you know, army and government. And uh, you know how he ended up, Joseph Goebbels and Hitler, both of them died by suicide. They killed themselves. Goebbels actually killed his children, killed his wife, <laughs> and then uh, he died. He said he couldn't leave when the defeat was almost coming to them. Now, this is what Goebbels says, and uh, it tells you about something about propaganda. This is what Goebbels says, that propaganda is good, which leads to success. And that is bad, which fails to achieve the desired result. It is not the propaganda's task to be intelligent. Its task is to lead to success. <laughs> so when someone is crafting out a propaganda, 
the idea is not whether it is intelligent or not, is it success? So, fast forward, when uh, we are looking at our facts and propaganda, is propaganda necessarily bad? No. It's a tool. It's part of politics. It's part of what is going to, to, sh to shape what is going to happen. It has been used. It is being used. It will always be used. And uh, the people using it, therefore, have to be careful that it stands the test of time. Because if it doesn't achieve success, then that's the negativity of propaganda. It will be here with us. Now, unfortunately, some of these techniques have been used in our political uh, situation. You have been able to capture some of this bandwagoning where I want to pick an example where Ruto says that uh, everyone in, uh, in the mountain has gone to UDA. You know, that has been a propaganda bandwagoning. You know, <laughs> you're saying everyone has has taken it. They've, I, I'm I'm sure probably they have uh, they have mastered the art of propaganda to the extent that they have used all these techniques so far. Have been able to pick uh, where uh, they have been able to use. They only speak the good about what they are going to be doing. You know about this this uh, bottom up. They are telling you that uh, you are going to receive only good things. When they give you this uh, mot motorbikes and border border, they're not telling you that eventually when this border border, you're given loans to take these border borders. If you don't get people to carry and you're not able to pay it back, they will still come back for those border borders to recover that money if you default in payment. That is what they won't mention, you know. They're also using uh, glittering generalities. You know, they're talking things you know, when every, any one of them, yesterday we were being told about how they have been able to put people who are so strong to talk about certain things to just bring emotional and vague statements. Now, what I need to say is uh, propaganda is indeed uh, part of our politics. It's a political tool. It will be used no matter how much we try to. It's a tool of persuasion. It has been used in media, in marketing. That is part of what they use. Now, does it stand the test of time? Now, that's the other thing. Uh, I wish to also point out, we have had the culture of heckling going on for a while. Stage managing crowd is a normal thing. Now, most of you have watched shows uh, that are happening in the media, like uh, like uh, maybe this, this uh, real-time shows when they put them out there. People, audience is, is brought there and the audience is actually coached on when to clap. So someone stands somewhere and says that when I raise my hand up, all of you must be clapping until it's done. If you don't clap, <laughs> you are sent away from that particular hall. So this, these are techniques that I use all over to try and bring out popularity. And they are pointing it out, they are bringing it to the political stage. We have that kind of thing happening. I would really like to, uh, for those people listening to us, propaganda is going to be used by politicians, but let's be, let's, let's be able to rise up and uh, question the propaganda. Let us be able to, to try and, uh, you know, question, fact check what is happening. I, I want to pass over to, to Bernard just uh, for a while, <laughs> oh, okay. for now. Okay. Okay, Th thank you, Temba, for breaking that down. I believe it's becoming better and we are getting better understanding. Uh, I believe by the end of this show, we should be able to separate between a fact and a propaganda in the... Where do we go next in determining the next uh, frame or rather the next group of leaders that we choose in 2022? So as uh, Temba responds on something before he comes to make his conclusion, I think uh, we should hear from James. Uh, let, me, uh, let, let me finish. <laughs> I, I, Wekesa, Naomba, Temba, just a minute. 
Uh, okay, sir, there is a response waiting for you on the private charter. Uh, please respond. Yes, Temba, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. So um, what I was trying to say is uh, we have the heckling. I wish we could mature to the point that I keep saying here that uh, the population and the citizen need to be to be awoke and need to be, you know, uh, sensitized to the extent that the constitution allows you to maintain a political position. Political participation is a constitutional right. And also you choosing whichever candidate is your constitutional right. Them coming to persuade you whichever way is their constitutional right. However, I wish we could uh, learn that we can still, you know, uh, stay away from someone we don't like. You know, if you don't like a particular candidate showing up in a particular place, then uh, the most civil thing to do is to not show up. Because what happens in such situations when uh, in, uh, in uh, a scenario where uh, the masses have been probably agitated, it is possible that a response, and no particular person has a monopoly of a violence. Because you, you may think that you're going to heckle the other person, and all of them are also prepared, and therefore people end up getting hurt. And for what? You know? So the questions that I wish that we put across and maybe we keep educating our masses and our people is that you can still stay away from someone who is campaigning in your place and you don't like them. That's fair enough protest for them without showing ugly scenes. You know, shouting and going to a place where people are already, you know, they've already planned themselves. I think that will cause more animosity and we are likely to witness ugly scenes as we move towards the heated political uh, uh, campaign period. So let's try and urge people that it's okay to be persuaded. If you don't agree with a particular persuasion, you don't have to go to that place. You don't have to. Stay at home. Let those people who want to go, go there. And then, of course, you'll still have your time to you know, to communicate your voice and to communicate your decision at the ballot. Now, there's usually that way of even silently, you know, telling someone you don't like them. Otherwise, I don't think propaganda, uh, it has been used on us <laughs> for ages. It is being used every day. We are being sold to things through propaganda when the reality hits that. How many people have been, uh, you know, have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, they have been conned because they are being sold for certain ideas and even land that does not exist, you know. They are being told that when you just put in this money, this is going to happen. They are not given the reality. That's propaganda which is being used on us. And for as long as there's, uh, there's marketing and human behavior, it is persuaded in a particular way. It's a tool of persuasion. But now the person needs to stay woke. When this person tells me this, what do I as a voter, what is my responsibility? My responsibility is to go back and interrogate. Interrogate the, what we, whatever you have told. Is it factual? And that is part of what we try to do here. We try as much as possible to question the facts that have been put in front of us. Try as much as possible, question those facts. Because other than that, it later comes out and you start crying because maybe certain things are not met and people start giving us excuses. So I, I think we, we need to try and be a little sober as we move in this election period. And we also can allow other people to enjoy the political participation and space. There's no problem in differing in persuasion, but let's stay away. If we don't like it, let's just stay away because nobody owns the monopoly of violence. If you go thinking you will hack or louder, sometimes some people have gotten hurt in such situations, which we need to avoid as we move towards the electoral period. Thank you so much, Bernard. Okay, thank you. I believe that's clear enough. Uh, okay, come on, Kuna Swali, Naomba Tuni Tue Maoniangu, Kisha Tutaendelea Nawekesa thereafter. And uh, mine is simple. Let us be responsible in our politicking. 
responsible in the sense that uh, I have always said on this platform, we need to believe in Kenya enough to stand for Kenya, no matter who urges us not to. And believing in Kenya means Kenya is only Kenya with all Kenyans. It can't be Kenya with part of Kenyans and the rest of the Kenyans locked out. So if we really want this nation to take off, we must be willing to take off with everybody else. And that taking off will require give and take. You will not always have, uh, you, you, you will not, you, will, you, you cannot make us uniform, okay? Uh, we will uniquely relate, but we cannot uniformly relate. Putting us in uh, one uniform way of thinking, one uniform way of reasoning, one uniform way of carrying ourselves, it's a bondage in itself, and uh, that is what we are breaking away from. And so trying to get us there, it is not going to work. Divergence of ideas, divergence of um, uh, terminologies and ideologies is why we are created differently. As much as we look alike, uh, we are not the same. And being different doesn't make us enemies. It only makes us uh, unique and necessary. It's our differences that endear us one to another. It is not our uniformity. So we are not looking out for a uniform nation. We are looking out for a diverse nation that can work together in unity in respect to the diversity that we have. How do we maximize those differences? Uh, in the, if I call in the, the biblical understanding, he said the body has many members, but uh, uh, they, they, are, they don't have the same role, okay? Uh, other organs are seen, others are not seen, but each one of them are necessary. He said, an eye cannot say I don't need a hand, and the hand cannot say I don't need an eye. All of them work together. So let us appreciate that in Kenya we are different. We we come from different backgrounds, but we have a nation called Kenya, which we must uphold and reserve as a heritage for the generations to come. Let us not buy into uh, political persuasions that will want us to destroy the only heritage we have to hand over to the generations that are coming. A, a, a man who set his house on, on fire because of rats he will sleep outside and the rats may find another place to move to. It is important that we, we, we reason clearly. Uh, straight to the young people. Uh, they, 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 I saw a clip. I don't know if I can play it. Let me see if I find it here. Uh, okay, where is it? I hope it's this one. Sawa. Sawa, sawa. Nyamaseni, nyamaseni tusikie papa, tafadhali. Sawa. Sawa, sawa. Tusikie papa. Sisi tumekuja in peace. Papa. Sikizeni baba sasa. Sikizeni baba. Amekuja mbia mzuri. Yeye ndiye atakuwa the fifth president wa Kenya. Na ni muhimu msikie. Sawa sawa. Ah okay, sawa sawa. Sawa sawa. Before you speak, let's just have to build up. To do what? To build up. One Angels! One Arroy Angels! One Arroy Angels! Baba is in the house! Sasa! One Arroy Angels! One Arroy Angels! Munaniskia! Baba! 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 
Nataka kusikiza baba. Hebu mnionyeshe kwa mikono namna hii. Asali sana. Kitambo hivyo niwanjulishe tuko na viongozi chungu nzima. Tuko na deputy governor wa Laikipia. Tuko na mheshimiwa Chris Mark. Tuko na mheshimiwa Maoka Maole. Tuko na deputy governor wa Nyeri. Tuko pia na acting governor wa Nairobi. Tuko na governor Kememia wa Nyandarwa na watawasalimia. Tuko na mheshimiwa Atiende Amolo. Tuko na Senator James Olengo. Bas. Basi. Basi na tuko na mheshimiwa Kanini Kega. Si unaona tuko wengi? Unaona mlima ni wengi? Zote tumekuja kuungana na nyinyi watu wa Ronyenges kusema baba anatosha. Anatosha atoshi. Eh, tuko pia tuko pia na katibu mkuu wa chama cha ODM bwana Sifuna. Pale nyuma tuko na gavana Ongoe. Tuko na mheshimiwa Dennis Wawalo. Basi turudishe kwa gavana <coughs> mara moja atukaribishe. Mara moja. Chiko. Sasa huyu pa, papa ndio atakuwa president wa fifth president of Kenya. Ni muhimu sana tusikie maoni yake fedha zatufanyia hapa embu Mount Kenya kila bahari si hapa ni muhimu kwa hivyo kwa hiyo machache hebu tusikie papa saa hii mara moja vijana <tos> 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 Baba amekuja runyenje. Mnafuraa. Mnafuraa. Nakuja kuambia nyinyi hadi harakati ya tatu ya ukombozi wa Kenya umeanza. Harakati ya kwanza ilileta uhuru. Ya pili ilileta katiba mpya. Ya tatu ni ya kiuchumi. The Economic Revolution of Kenya. Ndio yeah. imeanza sasa. Mna mnaunga mkono? Yeah. Mko mko tayari. Yeah. Hii ni ya vijana. Yeah. Tunataka vijana wawe empowered. Yeah. Tumesema tunataka wakila mtoto ambaye anazaliwa kwa nchi yetu kuanzia nursery, primary, secondary mpaka chuo kikuu awe na nafasi sawa sawa na kimaliza elimu aje na apate kazi sawa sawa tunataka vijana wetu wafundishwe mambo ya ufundi ya ICT ya electronics mambo ya mechanics mambo mambo ya useremala mambo ya washi ili waweze kupata kazi sawa sawa wale ambao wanataka kuanzisha biashara yao wape mkopo na serikali sawa sawa tutaanza wizara ya vijana na vile vile tutakuwa na almashauri ya mambo ya vijana ya kikatiba national youth commission sawa tunaenda sawa sawa Tunaenda sasa vijana. Oi. Sawa vijana. Mnaunga mkono. Mnaunga mkono. Tunataka kuona kama uh, uchumi inaimarishwa katika taifa letu. Nimeongea juu ya mambo ya kilimo. Mambo ya mambo ya wafanyabiashara. Mambo ya 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 miundo msingi. Ya barabara mambo ya maji mambo ya stima yale yote tumesema 
Tunataka kujenga vianda ili tuanzishe kitu kinaitwa value addition tubidhama tu, tu, inatoka katika taifa lile. Sawa sawa? Vijana mko tayari? Na juzi nilitangaza kwa sababu ya umaskini katika taifa letu. Kuna jamii ambayo hawezi kupata uh, chakula. Kuna jamii ambayo hawana hata mtu mmoja ambaye anapata mshahara. Tumesema tutaleta katika taifa letu the biggest social protection program katika bara ya Afrika. Kila jamii ambayo hawana mapato watapata kutoka kwa serikali kila mwezi shilingi sita. Hiyo ni ahadi. Hiyo ni ahadi. Ni nini? Ahadi ni nini? Ahadi ni nini? Wanasema oh hiyo ni porojo. Porojo. Mimi nawaambia eh mimi najua. Pale na pesa itatoka mimi najua. Mimi nimeshakuwa waziri mkuu wa taifa hii. Siwezi kusema maneno ya uongo uongo hiyo hiyo. Yale mianya pale ambao wanaibia pesa wetu pale ambao wanarokota pesa ya, ya, ya serikali mtazima zote na pesa itabadilikana ya kutosha ya kulipa kila jamii ambaye hawana mshahara shilingi 6000 kila mwezi Mko tayari Mko tayari kutembea pamoja na sisi Wangapi wako tayari yule kwa mkono? Wangapi wako tayari kwa mkono? Sasa Mimi naambia nyinyi ya kwamba hapa nyinyi mlikuwa mnasema one man one vote one shilling. Sio? Sio? Na vile vile tulikuwa tumeahidi tutapandisha pesa kutoka 15% mpaka 35% kutoka juu kuja hapa chini sio lakini walienda wakafanya ukorofi kwa makaa kama sio hiyo rege imeenda half time itarudi itarudi si itarudi itarudi lakini sasa mimi niambia wa Kenya Let us get together and Okay. I think that was too elaborate until there was a part I was looking for. Uh if you're not on that crowd there is only one section of the crowd that is heckling and uh, i think it's for their security reasons they have to stick together because if they get mingled with the other or organic crowd they may be uh, taken care of <laughs> uh, negatively but uh, my point is as a young person your sense of responsibility for your country should inform you in advancing a particular political agenda whereby even if i love this person i love this uh, particular politician uh what kind of kenya is he promising me a, is that kenya good for me and for my children and for my children's children or is it just for right now because uh, we have been a kind of uh brought into a, a state of mind especially young people that bora umepata ya mfuko sai kesho itajishughulikia so we are so much into the right now that we have lost sight of the great future that we need to reserve and uh, the people pushing that narrative and pushing that mentality know that if we get you trapped into the right now we can easily manipulate you and make you do what you want what we want you to do for us so as young people we must wake up and begin to see what this is being given to us a man who wants to take the seed that you can sow in order to harvest and tells you he will give you food forget about the seed here and i will always bring you food if you need it that one person who doesn't want you to be independent he want you to be dependent and so as young people especially those university students uh what you are studying needs to inform you and 
develop that understanding. This country is not about you. This country is not ending with you. There are more people that are coming after you. What are you handing over to the next generation? Should be your concern as a voter, should be the driving reason why you should vote in a particular direction. If the founding fathers of this country lived for themselves, fought for themselves, and wanted to eat everything by themselves, there will be no more Kenya, there will be no more country to receive you when you are being born 50, uh, 10 years after independence, uh, 20 years after independence, 30 years after independence. So a sacrifice was required to bring about the existence of this nation. Let us reserve this nation by the same uh, ideology of sacrificing for the next generation. We will not live right until we are mindful of the future, not just right now convenience. Thank you very much. Let me end it there. Oh, James, James, your hand is lifted. Wekesa, you yes. are in charge. Yes. Carry on, James. Carry on, James. Okay. Okay. That, 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 that I can tell you is a, is a county I'm very familiar with. What actually happened when you look at it, eh? they are the... the there were very successful rallies in that uh, region and uh, it has rattled the the tanga tanga because there is always that there was always that misconception that uh, uh, uh would not have uh, supporters in that area that uh, there would be no people to meet him and listen to him. What seems to have happened over the night is that uh, the shock that they got in with the rallies that were ha happened in within the Meru counties uh, shocked them to a point where some of the local politicians in parts of uh, the Raka Nidhi and Embu decided to now organize groups that uh, to water down so that it doesn't look like there is a unanimity about uh, acceptance of the speeches that were being made. Uh, it's unfortunate because that is not the true representation of uh, the people of that area. But I can also tell you that maybe it has nothing to do with the other presidential candidates, it has everything to do with the, those who call themselves agents on the ground and who are also fighting for their political survival. And therefore, any other wave other than the one that they would want to take place will leave them quite exposed. I, I think there was a shock uh, at what happened in uh, Emente and those upper parts of uh, Meru, Meru town coming all the way and uh, there was frantic efforts to try to bring out a picture that is different from what has happened in the last few days uh, to water down the, 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 what seems to be an obvious uh, endorsement of, uh, of Raira by heavyweights in that area because uh, the, it is true that uh, Keraito and uh, Munya, they are actually the heavyweights in, uh, in, in the Meru community. And therefore, when they move in one direction, they are, the people are bound to form the, them there. So I think uh, what has happened here is panic. And that panic is so deep that you cannot imagine uh, what I don't know is that uh, how they are going to contain future uh, uh, meetings because now it is become apparent and uh, it is now obvious that there is a game that is being played here. I also dread to imagine that uh, the same would happen to these same people when they go to areas where uh, Raira is a main uh, principal person. I would wish that it doesn't happen that way anywhere else in the country. 
let everybody sell their, uh, their, 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 their policies. Like you said, Bernard, let those who don't want to listen just keep off and uh, stay at home. After all, at the end of the day, it is your vote that will count. And you just go around in the booth and vote. And the uh, votes will be counted. Hopefully this time there will be no computer tampering. And then we have the winner. But I can assure you that the panic is so deep because uh, I think the tide is ch changing. The tide is changing very fast. More and more people are now getting to to start uh, opening up their mind to know the alternatives that are there for them. Particularly, one of the things that uh, has come out very strongly is that uh, the people of the area were to gain from uh, BBI. There are areas that needs to be uh, better represented. The, the, the allocation of uh, resources is, is still felt to, to be skewed in a way that uh, uh, the, the people there feel they are not getting the worth of their, of their, of, of their allocation. And therefore, because uh, Raira is advocating for fair distribution of resources, for fair representation, which the other candidate is not, they are panicking. And that's why some of them are now trying to say that those matters be taken very fast in parliament so that they are uh, passed there to reduce the damage that they have done to themselves. They thought by shooting down BBI that uh, they were actually uh, heading for success, that they will go trumpeting how they have won, but uh, some of them have now noticed the folly of uh, such political maneuvers. And don't also forget yesterday, the president went to uh, part of Kirinyaga and uh, warned the youth to be careful that uh, they can be misread and end up uh, affecting their lives in the future. So they should just pick up the handouts and think deep on uh, about their future and i think uh, that you could see obvious enthusiasm with such uh, sentiments this is something that has caused uh, consternation by to those who have been propagating some very negative propaganda uh, on the ground you also had him uh, ask people whether in the last uh, since independence, whether they have ever seen a kilometer of tarmac, they said no. Then he asked them, have you, are you seeing one around here? They said yes. So I am believing that uh, there is a strategy that the president wants to use. I believe that from December going to January and February, he is going to be commissioning projects across the country and particularly the central part of Kenya. And you will be challenging those who have been making noise to step up and say uh, what they have been doing. In any case, some of them have said that uh, development is stopped a long time ago because of big, the handshake, uh, which is also propaganda. And you are aware of that, and that's what we are discussing here today, that uh, there has been a lot of mis mis misinformation and misreading statements, like saying that the government uh, programs is stopped because of handshake, that there is nothing that has been done in the second uh, uh, term of the president because uh, he happened to have hand, a handshake with uh, one of his political opponents. So basically, I think uh, those propaganda will not stand on their feet, and, uh, one, and they have already started collapsing. And these people are now in a panic because, uh, you know, the truth will always be truth. Uh, and more so because the promise is that those gains that had already been made through the BBI will not be lost if Raira takes over. I think uh, it is something that might have for to force the other side to, to, to re-engineer their politics. Otherwise, they will lose out the boundary. They will lose out the boundary, and uh, 
I think they are in a panic. They don't know what to do now. They don't know how to go around that uh, disadvantage that they have put themselves in. We can only wait and see. Now the, 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 the only recourse remaining for them is to organize hecklers to go and, uh, uh, you know, try to bring out the picture to the rest of the country that uh, this is someone who is not wanted there, which I don't, I don't know how, it, uh, ha how sustainable such a strategy is because people are not fools. People are clever. They can see, they can hear. So, Bernard, I think uh, uh, we can only wait and see what happens from tomorrow. Uh, you heard already there is a warning that uh, there are organized goons from Embu and uh, Nyeri and Muranga who are supposed to have gone to Heko. Uh, those they don't like. You can obviously know who are organizing those uh, goons and hackers. The PS has already warned that uh, they will not tolerate uh, those kind of things. So it is something that is known. It is something that is uh, in the public domain. It is not anything new. And it is a mark of desperation of uh, people who thought they have already, uh, you know, they have backed the bugged victory. But uh, it is turning out to be something that did, they did not anticipate. Because also, you also notice that uh, that part of the world is also suffering from something we call apathy. Even the youths they are saying will be voting for them. Most of them even don't want to, to take the, 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 the votes. Some even have, uh, those who have votes are saying they will not turn up to go and vote. So it is going, it is going to be very interesting because for the first time, despite the high turnout you saw of 90%, we are likely to register just about uh, 60, 65 at most, and maybe 70 at very, very most in terms of turnout. That means somebody has already sliced off over 15% of uh, votes that would have gone to him through people not go turning up to vote. And then there is also the doyen will cut off another maybe 20, 25, 30. And uh, then he maintains uh, the figure of the, the, of the past uh, elections. This thing is wrapped up. And uh, I think uh, it has started dawning on some of these fellows who are jumping up and down that uh, things are, are getting quick. So we are going to see those desperate measures uh, from these people for, uh, for some time now. Just watch the space. Bernard. I'm done. Okay. Thank, th thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Wekesa, are you back? Uh, the Temba and Wekesa, you will take charge. Eh? I am signing out. Uh, but it's the turn for, there was Zach, but Zach seems to be on and off. Uh, let's hear from Sam and then Mwango. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Oyugi, you have been trying to get in since eight o'clock. Uh, try, try to get in audio only. It's like uh, either your camera has a problem or something, or your network is low. Uh, disable your camera and uh, uh, try audio only and see whether you can go through. I think that is it. So you will stay behind the curtain and uh, you will be able to contribute. Daniel Oyugi, it has gone through. Uh, how are you? Are you able to hear me, Daniel? Daniel, we can't hear you. Are, are you speaking? <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Keep trying. I think uh, it will work somehow. Sam, it's your turn. Carry on. Uh, well, thank you so much, Bernard, um, Keza, Teba, and the rest. Anyway, let me try to listen first, then uh, I'll, I'll be inside. Okay. Thank you, Bernard. Long time, never thank seen you. Thank you, Sam. You have been uh, missing in action. I'm happy you're back. Uh, thank and, you so uh, much. 
will build the nation together. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mwango, karibu vipi? Mwango, umenda shopping tena? Okay, sir. You guys, thank you very much. Uh, I have a, a session very early in the morning, so I need to go and put myself together. Uh, so I will leave you people to debate as to as long as you want. And then uh, let's let's focus on Kenya. Let's make Kenya a better place. Thank you. Okay. Um, if Mwango is not ready, then let's have uh, Daniel as your network stabilized. <laughs> As Daniel stabilizes, let me ask you, Emba. I yes. have heard about the political optics. Uh, people say in politics, it's what you see. Uh, is, is it an extension of what you are telling us about propaganda? <laughs> it's about optics. It's about the what meets the eye. So we we we, create, we try to create a situation that not, does not necessarily exist. It only exists in the mind of a voter, not on the ground. Even including these uh, political promises, political crowds, political even this make believe that someone so and so on uh, sometimes. Well, sometimes it could be true they own those choppers. Sometimes they they own imaginary. Sometimes they have even least. Uh, yeah, okay, my my my, my take would be uh, today. You, uh, if you have been watching Baba Scale Mount Kenya, you realize the conversation has changed. The same people who met Baba look like a demon. Are speaking well about him. And they are pointing out the things that he has done. But uh, 2017, 2013, 2007, such things could not come out. So you, lea you realize politics uh, happens on a, a script. Yeah, yeah, bring out those issues I want to hear. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, because as you say, politics is about perception, uh, majorly. You know, you, you want to persuade, you want to shape human behavior. And uh, the voter behavior will be influenced with uh, which senses you want, to, you want to touch. So they believe, and in this era of social media, let me give you an example on the use of propaganda. Nowadays, you have what you call the brand ambassadors. You know, someone will be picked by a particular company as a brand ambassador. And one of the things they tell you is the person has been using that particular product for a certain number of times. Now, the, the psychology behind it is that uh, this person has a certain kind of following. And in this era, era and age where we have uh, social media, we the only thing that someone needs to come to you um and sell to you is i have a million followers therefore give me your product and this product will be accessed by a million followers and chances are that this million followers a hundred of them will buy your product or one thousand of them will buy your product simply because i'm the one who has talked about it so for that reason, a particular product will will offer to you know to sponsor you. You know, to being a brand ambassador, you are paid, and they, you tell them that for this thing to appear on my show for two hours every day, this is the much you're going to pay me. So that's that's basically <laughs> propaganda. You don't have to use the product; you just have to be the face of the product. And the belief is that people are going to follow because of uh, that testimonial, that it is Wekesa who is using this product. Now, as a tool, it is, it is used 
in the area of marketing. And marketing is about consumer psychology. What, how do people move towards embracing a particular product? Now, right now, uh, the, the political competition has gone into social media too. And what have they, uh, they done? They have invested in the serious cameras, you know, to try and pick uh, crowds in a particular place to give an impression that so many people are attending a particular uh, meeting. Why? Because they want to shape people's perspective towards a particular person. And that is in itself generally propaganda because in itself it might not, not necessarily be true. Now, somebody says that uh, if you can have propaganda, but also base it, base it in some level of truth, it can stand the test of time. But if you, can, if you can have propaganda, but inside of it, there's very little truth, then with time, it's going to start, the, its truth is going to come out. You know, it's going, for example, if you sell to me a product and you're telling me it has been sold by probably Wekesa, let's say it's a, it's a, I gave an example of an oil product and uh, you say that Wekesa applied it and this is what happened to him. If I buy that thing and over time it is not uh, giving me similar results that I was expecting, definitely there's going to be testimony against that, <laughs> that this is not true. So if you're going to sell a propaganda, you better make sure that it has a greater level of truth in it. And most of the times people come and give explanations when propaganda doesn't work. So persuasion is a tool that is going to be rife in this era of politics and political competition. It is upon the people to be wise. I mean, how do I tell truths from half-truths? <laughs> when I see that this is not going to work my way, what are the I want to give you one propaganda that is probably, and uh, maybe just to start now that we said we want to look at them. Now, fact is that everybody needs a job. That's a fact, you know. Fact is, most Kenyans are, uh, are struggling. You know, that's a fact. Fact is, we have Boda Boda riders. <laughs> that's a fact. And fact is, they need those motorbikes. Now, the fact also is that the Constitution has already provided mechanism for those people to be assisted through devolution. That's a fact. Now, you're being told you'll be given loans, which is good. Everybody needs a loan. But if you're going to be given a loan, what you're not being told is that every loan needs to be reimbursed. You have to service that loan. <laughs> and sometimes you find a greater percentage of people, some of the banks have reported losses because people do not service loans. So it is possible that you can be given a loan to start the Boda Boda business. And uh, there was a survey that was done that when, when uh, every day there are 2,000 businesses that die, was it every day? I think every minute. <laughs> so the assumption that being bought for a border, border motorbike or what, or being started for that business, the assumption that it is going to automatically succeed, that's propaganda. You know, the, we, we are being told that automatically if we buy for you all border, border riders, riders, particular whatever, you're going to be carrying people. How many border, border riders do not sometimes even hit the target the day? There are too many, they don't hit the targets. So those are figures that are not coming out, you know. And that's now where you find, with time, people will come to start realizing there's a problem. Yeah. So, yes, it's, it's, it's so much about shaping people's opinion towards particular candidate. But we need to, to start demarcating and separating fact from fiction. You are muted. Sorry, I'm on mute. Then uh, maybe it could be deeper than, uh, okay, maybe it's a bit of psychology. 
but they say this this term they use that um cognitive cognitive uh, dissonance uh where a marketer has marketed a to a, a, a product well he has told you how this oil will remove all the pimples from your face and you can't use that oil and you still have even pimples multiplying in your face and you just you sulk now uh, that cognitive uh, dissonance uh, does that then explains why the voters have a wrath against the people like today you are you have that Raila mania, you have that Uhuru mania, you excited, God sent, you vote for them. Very early in the morning, 5 a.m., you are on the line. Then one year down the line, you, you begin a Malaysia end. Is, that, is it because of the mismatch between the perception and the reality, the perceived candidate? And the reality of the candidate who is yeah 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 true you see like uh, you're saying um there's something that has been put across a lot for example that ruto said that uh, uh that uh we will be given uh, six 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 uh, six stadiums you know now the truth is <laughs> he was reading a script from the jubilee <laughs> manifesto <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact, you know. Uh, the fact was, and by then, even them when they were reading it, it was a propaganda because building those those uh, those stadiums, they needed uh, they needed some. There were some structures. There were certain uh, legislative structures. There were certain uh, uh, you know interfering variables that were going to come in that they were aware of, because some of the stadiums needed certain kind of. Uh, legal processes for them to start working they needed money you know so they they inflated the propaganda so they raised the expectation did it work yes it won them votes but it couldn't be sustained because now it's coming to hit them just like in the uh, nazi hitler Goebbels made made hitler believe that they could never be defeated until when now the Germans were, I mean, the, the Russians were closing in on, uh, on, uh, on Berlin, almost getting in, uh, Goebbels could not believe he was still trying to convince Hitler that things were okay, you know? <laughs> and uh, to some extent, Goebbels was, I think, uh, 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 Franklin, Rose, uh, you know, uh, died around that time. So he was saying that is God sent that he was dying at that time. So trying to bring in the idea that God is answering their prayer, yet the thing is going to a loss. So it thrives in trying to, you know, inflate the expectation. And that is what happened during that. Day. The sixth stadium, the bigger it looked, the more promising it looked, the more people were more going to give the votes, you know. But now within a short time, reality starts sinking. This hustler thing, uh, Wekasa, even as you said, was going to be very real if elections were held about maybe three or four months after it came out. But it can't stand the test of time because now it is being debunked. You know, some realities are coming. And uh, I saw in the media where people were starting now to say that uh, we also need our share. Why is it that you're only taking monies to certain places? So people now are showing up not because they necessarily love the deputy president so much, but it's because of the expectation of being given a million at the end of the rally and maybe two million at the end of that. So propaganda survives in a very, you know, interesting scenario. You, are, you have to really try and, yeah, what, go ahead. But what will we do because uh, I think it's in the good book that says that uh, a human heart is deceptive. I think we like deception that uh, I, most of the time is truth is boring. Uh, people who are telling us truth, we don't like them. <laughs> They're too boring. People who entice us with, uh, uh, for example, if you are seducing a car, a, a girl, uh, you flatter. 
you will tell her how beautiful she is, even when she knows you are exaggerating. Yeah? Uh, she will also exaggerate her beauty with a few makeups uh, to try to make you look nice. So, is, is this the, how life is wired? Like, uh, we, 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 we tend to like things that don't even exist. We, we like to live a movie like life. It, it's not <laughs> in the real. It's not in the reality. It's just in the phantom. <laughs> Unfortunately, you talked about Machiavelli and, uh, uh, you know, Machiavellian principle, you know. And Niccolo Machiavelli, the prince, writes that uh, if you are interested in uh, a prince being interested in being the prince, you must sometimes learn to, they say, if you have to choose between being respected and feared, then you have to be feared and respected. And uh, people believe believe the things that are, that are, he actually points out and says that there are two things that cannot go together, uh, truth and power. <laughs> so if, uh, if uh, Ruto was to tell you uh, a few years ago when they were coming in that we are not going to actually be getting you the six stadiums within this month, we are going to take this many times and we will have this particular bottlenecks for us to deliver the six. Nobody would have voted for them. That's not how human beings thrive. Human being thrives in thrill. The more thrilling it is, there's a particular part of our brain that is excited. So the more exciting the scenario, the more we want to buy it. Uh, some of these uh, persuasion skills work in terms of a little bit of excitement. So if it is not exciting, if it is not, uh, you know, you need, they say that as a politician, you need to find a way of making many promises but delivering on few you know because if you deliver on everything it means that the people will not need you again so to make sure that people need you you have to make sure that you give as many promises as possible so that people keep thinking that uh, you are the only one who can solve their problem and that way that's a machiavellian thought uh, some may not agree with it but uh, generally to say is uh, human behavior thrives in thrills uh, you are likely to shape them more. And uh, even right now, you realize our conversation, I think two, three days ago, we had a debate and people were saying that Baba has not, you know, brought people who are, uh, who are passionate, who are articulate. Now, what they are simply saying, that uh, the thrilling part yeah, of the before human... You that, <laughs> before you finish that statement, I just want to cite an example. You see, what happened in that clip that uh, Bennett has brought? Uh, they were in uh, Embu, uh, actually Runyanges. Then uh, this 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 governor Wambora trying to explain to people. Actually, it's truth, yes, but he looks flat, and there's no thrill. And until uh, governor of uh, Laikipia took the mic and uh, psyched up the people. <laughs> is when things started uh, falling in place. So I, I agree with what you're saying. Just proceed. Yeah, you see, uh, people, people, people love thrill. People love uh, love uh, something that excites them. And uh, in uh, in masses, especially in a mass situation like that, they sometimes articulating issues in terms of you know this and this and this might not work. The, the, the crowd there is psyched by saying some of the things that, you know, like they, they want to hear something that gets them into more of a chorus situation, which unfortunately is a thing. And in the midst of that, sometimes the facts get lost. The facts get lost. And uh, people expect, let me give you an example, and uh, you, you, can, you can pick a relation, I mean, a correlation, not correlation, but a, a case that, a case case of, uh, you know, South Africa, where Zuma was very, you know, he was a crowd puller. You know, he could, he could sing and dance and the crowd could, could be excited. And uh, they, he promised them that within me getting into power, you'll be economically free, you know? And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, you'll not be where you are right now. We'll, we'll have the the apartheid 
guys who probably owners of farm giving them to us. <clears throat> so Zuma, because of that charisma, you know, he gets into power. You know, the dance, he can be able to woo a crowd. Uh, but uh, once he got there, <laughs> you know, within a very short time, Zuma was, was, was already, you know, gone to bed with those who are actually oppressors, you know. And, he, he, you know, the state capture comes in and uh, he's involved in uh, even uh, corruption, which eventually, uh, uh, you know, took him to, to jail. So what we are saying is people thrive on thrill, unfortunately, because eventually you get disappointed. Uh, 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 you can also say the same thing. Trump comes in and he's elected on the idea of, you know, make America great again. But uh, a few years later, he becomes the embarrassment, <laughs> you know, that he was. So, impeached unfortunately, he <laughs> impeached twice, the, the first one to be impeached twice. So you can imagine what is likely to happen, but you need to find a balance between the two. <clears throat> Even if you are the best of the leader, you need to also appreciate that people need to be excited. So have a mix of two, excite people, but also ground it on some facts and some uh, things that are likely to help them in the long term. Yeah. So that way you, you, find, uh, you find the society moves in a more positive direction as opposed to where the places where there's stagnation. Okay. Let me bring in uh, James and uh, Mwango. What is your take on this uh, political psychology? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, I think, uh, I, I, I think it is quite uh, uh, revealing the, 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 the motivations, the human behavior, the motivations of human behavior. Uh, there is the excitement, yes, there is a part of excitement. There is also fear. fear Fear is a very strong driving force. I will tell you for sure what most of the politicians currently are fearing within the Mount Kenya region is that uh, extreme fear that was drilled in people around that region and uh, making it a strong motivation to wake up and go and vote has first disappeared because the fear that Raila uh, will take over and will negatively affect their lives, will actually destroy their lives, destroy their businesses, uh, cause havoc. His people will not pay rent, transport, they will not pay fare. Uh, people, they will, people will wear captura. All those kind of fears were strongly drilled in the people in that region. To a level whereby when they were turning up to vote, it's not that so much they were voting for somebody they had scrutinized his, uh, his behavior or his performance or the expectation for what he was going to do, but rather than to prevent one person to, to, to get to power because the picture that was given is that. Uh, they will they stand to suffer greatly significantly if they don't go to to buffer themselves by making sure this devil does not get to power now the dynamics have started changing it seems like uh, that extreme fear is, is slowly easing out and because of that fact the significant uh, group of voters who would wake up before six to go and vote because they wanted to prevent Rao from becoming the president, uh, that group has gone down. And therefore... Does that explain right... the apathy that is happening on Mount Kenya? Partly, yes. Partly, yes. Partly, that is a fact uh, that... Uh, to tell you the truth, there has, not, there has not been any strong mobilizing force for elections from 2007 
coming all the way to 2017, that is more than the fear of <laughs> Raira Amoro Ondinga taking over as a president of the Republic of Kenya. You did not need to even tell people what you are going to do for them. You just need them to tell them that if you don't wake up early and this man gets power, you know that your life is in danger, your business is in danger, you, your businesses are in danger. If you have a rental house, you know, people will not pay the rentals. If you are matatus, people the, 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 the people will not pay fares, and this fear as an organizing factor was so strong, so so strong that you cannot imagine. Therefore, I think what has happened uh, since 2018 is that uh, because of the handshake. And the fact that uh, the same same person who had uh, helped paint that picture now uh, came and uh, brought out another picture that uh, that was not it. Now we have agreed. Now we are friends. Uh, this person is not the devil that uh, we the devil incarnate that we had made him rook. So the fear going to tell people today that wake up very early because Raira Amoro Dinka will win the elections and their life is in danger. I, I don't know how many people will do that. Uh, maybe there is a, still a small group, but not as big as uh, what has been in the past. So it is good to also understand other factors of human behavior rather than excitement. Excitement is part of it. But also there are other factors like fear uh, of the unknown. Fear of the unknown is also a very strong factor in uh, directing people on how to behave, and particularly in, the, in this uh, period of uh, uh, politics. I, I, I can see the obvious fear of those uh, politicians around that region because in absence of that, then the next most proper thing is that each one of them will have to account for their performance. Uh, to, the, the, the fear will not cover up for their in, 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 in inadequacies in leadership. People will now go deeper to ask themselves, why am I voting for so and so? You understand? Yeah, just so, hold on that thought. Just hold yes. on that thought. Uh, I want us to extend further on the fear. Okay. Okay, proceed. Uh, I think uh, the Nini is, is speaking slowly. I'll, I'll let you just. I wanted to add something here. Just proceed. Oh. So, I was saying that uh, fear, fear is a very strong organizing factor in terms of. Uh, directing how people behave. Uh, uh, you will notice that when people don't understand something, they, they, or they don't understand someone, the they they, they, they motivation to act in self-defense, even before they are attacked, is uppermost in their minds. Now, this is where, this is where... Pardon? Kenyans need to be told. Yes. So, I what I am saying, and that is what is accounting for the change in uh, the political behavior in uh, Mount Kenya region, is uh, the significant is easing out of that fear. And uh, it is started with a handshake that uh, a person who had been demonized for almost a decade 
now became what I would call a partner in government. Uh, so where? that thing can I see has you can need to be told. I hate to see a situation in which a free and fair election is carried out. William Ruto seems to be the winner, and somebody tries to play the hunky punky business that was played on Baba in 2013 and 2017. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have a Kenya. Take it from me. You get my point? Mm -hmm. You don't have a Kenya. It's gone. It's gone to hell. It's gone to bloody hell. I can assure you that. And we know it. The people who forced the coalition government last time were not the Lewis, they were not the Lewis, they were not the Somalis, they were the Kalinjins. The Kalinjins. Yes. And you think you can steal a Kalinjins what? In Kenya? Okay. Yes. What is he saying? Is, you know that is a strong statement. It is uh, a strong statement. And... Uh, I think he is true. He, 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 part of it is true, but I think he's exaggerated, and I will explain why. Um, when you look at uh, what happened in um, in two thousand seven, the there was an overwhelming situation whereby it's not. A, only those who are fighting that were for it. They are those who are giving what we call emotional support. That means they were not against what was happening. They tacitly uh, kind of um, approved it because they were not talking against it. And therefore those the, the combatants in the field felt emboldened that they could go on doing whatever they were doing. But look at the situation whereby you are all alone, like the way he is talking, and then you bring out such a thing and the others are on the other side and no, nobody is approving of that uh, uh, of that behavior. Do you think they can uh, they can go ahead? I'm very doubtful. They are also human beings. They, they look bad. They would look very, very bad. So in every political contest, there is what is uh, called emotional support. And that is what they got in 2007. And uh, therefore, they felt that they could go on and on and on. But assuming they were all alone, it was only one against all the others who are condemning them every day for what they are doing. Do you think they'll go ahead? I am very highly doubtful. Number two, there are only two communities that can, uh, maybe, uh, let me put it very clearly. It's, and the, here I'll be very, very frank. I think uh, there are only two communities that have shown the, the tenacity to fight, to fight it out quite hard and actually uh, bring the economy to a standstill. And part of it is because of the advantage that they have of controlling the centers of uh, commerce. The Luo, because they are in Kisumu, which is a major town. Uh, they are in Naropi, which is a major town. And they are in Mombasa. The Kikuyu, they are basically here in Naropi, they are in Nakuru, and maybe partly in Mombasa. So if such a thing were to happen today, those people, where would they bring that theater of violence? It would just be perhaps be in the rural areas. That is, and it is isolated. That is easily containable. That's why you see there is no much uh, problem uh, in dealing with uh, such a situation if it happens uh, in the coming elections, because uh, you know it is easier to handle those matters in the rural areas. Uh, have, have I made myself clear there? Okay, so, but, but what I wanted to bring out is that he was creating 
the strongest trigger, which is fear, which you are, you are discussing about. You know, when somebody oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you touch somebody's votes, then this is the repercussion. You yeah, are even trying to, uh, and that even script has been played that uh, maybe those in diaspora, they are very careful because they, they have to vote a certain candidate if they don't. Yeah. It's a creation of fear and intimidation to some people. But let me also put it this way. Fear can have a both positive and negative effect on your campaigns. In the sense that right now, let's assume uh, the people domiciled deep in, uh, the, 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 in Rift Valley who are not indigenous, in quotes, feel that by staying there, the, 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 there is a, an unknown situation that could happen immediately after elections. You know what they will do? They will relocate. And they will relocate with their votes. Votes perhaps uh, which have been uh, taken in those areas. So who benefits from suppression of uh, those votes? So it is a double-edged swamp. <coughs> it's a double-edged swamp that uh, can cut both ways. And also don't also forget that people can also fought in reverse to try to prevent that situation. So, but I, how it pans out in 2022, I cannot exactly tell, although I know that uh, there's a category of those who argue that let them vote that way so that they safeguard their homesteads. But they also, on the other hand, there are those who are hardened enough. They say they cannot uh, descend to the levels of being cowards as to be forced to vote in a certain way. So it, it is a dicey situation, did it? Okay. Uh, Mwango? Uh, we have uh, Matano, then community. Matano, how are you? Matano, are you hearing me? You are on mute, Matano. Unmute and then talk. Okay, let me try. He's gone. Uh, Mango is back. Eh? Mango, how are you? Amani Mimi is Kiki. Demba? Wekesa. Wekesa. Can I weigh in as you're trying to look for those people on what, on the fear thing that uh, that uh, that. Uh, James has talked about. Yeah. As as you look for this gentleman, they seem not to be to be. <laughs> yeah, Wayne, and then we go to Mango. I see he has come back. I also see Penny. Penny Karibu. Now, um, the the fear thing, huh? the, the the fear appeal that uh, James is talking about is a very strong tool of persuasion, also. Yeah, and. Uh, you see, for example, uh, initially in the 80s, when uh, HIV AIDS was just beginning to be talked about, a photo that was used a lot was of uh, skinny people. And, uh, you know, it was going around being told that uh, if, you, if you get HIV, the virus, you are likely to, to end up uh, like uh, this, the photo that you're seeing. And uh, for a long time, even uh, j just the way we are treating Corona right now, where you are, you are putting on all gloves and gloves and everything. The the 80s, when someone died of uh, 
uh, AIDS, you know, uh, they they, <laughs> they were not being touched, you know, they were they were they were being wrapped in uh, polythene bags, you know, and uh, you know being buried because if you if you touched him, the the perception created then was you are getting HIV by even touching someone who had uh, who had uh, been uh, uh, infected then it worked for a while and people feared but over time people realized it was not true because there were people who are having i mean living with hiv and were not necessarily <laughs> getting that uh, that uh, thing so now of course the messaging had to change because now people people realize that okay so it is not this way so yes fear appeal has been used in health especially in health psychology to try and shape people's behavior in a certain way uh, in a situation where you are trying to uh, shape people's behavior you use many forms of appeals to try to make them buy a certain idea uh, right now of course you find uh, the, 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 the perception and the creation of uh, painting different kind of political candidates in a certain way to, you know, to create that emotional appeal. The more emotional, you know, they say that in advertisement, you need to reach as many, as many senses of the individual as possible. You need to appeal to as many senses as possible. Uh, emotion, sense of sight, sense of touch, sense of, you know, uh, you know, you have to try as much as possible to touch all those senses when you are crafting your message so that you can appeal to an individual to make a decision. And the more emotional the decision, I mean, the appeal is, the more likely someone is to fall for it. So if we want you to buy something, we'll have to talk about how you'll feel after, not what you'll think after it. So the people were, were told that uh, if this person is elected, this is how you're going to be after that. And how will you feel if this happens? So when someone starts telling you, how will you feel after that, already know that that's a way of trying to persuade you to a certain decision. And most often, often than not, if you're told how you'll feel beyond that, you are likely to give, you're likely to, 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 to buy the idea. So fear comes in. You know, in terms of uh, you know trying to persuade you in a, to that uh, direction, what I'm picking from what uh, the clip you you sent, however, I'm looking at the person speaking, and uh, this is someone who has been uh, he was uh, I think the deputy party leader for Waipa. Is it the deputy party leader for Waipa? <laughs> and and uh, someone is not muted. Uh, and as a deputy party leader for WIPA, and WIPA is in Oka, they have uh, they have previously they have previously uh, come and said that uh, <laughs> that uh, the Raila and Ruto are uh, opposite, opposite extreme on this end. The only people who can uh, who can be in the middle are the Oka guys. <laughs> so, for me, I read mischief in that statement, or a, a way of preparing a ground in that statement, to now come and sell themselves as the people who are in the middle, who are not going to necessarily divide the country. That if you elect Ruto, it is going to divide the country in the middle. If you elect Raila, it's going to make these other people feel like the election was stolen. So if you elect us, which is what he didn't say, we are going to bring the country together as Oka. So for me, I picked that sense of, uh, you know, like creating a ground, because actually he gave that preamble, you know. Raila has been, has been working hard, he's been, but his election has always been, you know, and Ruto is also working. And then he said, you know, if this country, if someone feels like they have not, this is what is going to happen. For me, I thought it's like playing with our with our minds to try and create a ground for whatever Modavadi said a few days ago. 
and it is Modavadi who said that statement that we are we are the only ones it's who can it. unite. Yeah, it's it. yeah. And uh, when they say that statement in the Masumba, Masumba people showed them the middle finger. Actually, the last <laughs> finger. <laughs> Be nice, okay, <Wakesa. laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that statement, I, if I can pick that statement in the context, it was in Masumba. And he repeated it and repeated it. I have that clip. Who can be trusted? Uh, who can be trusted? Now, after that that script, <laughs> whatever they got there, my friend. And, uh, and, uh, and you see also again, uh, yeah, Wakesa, you see Ruto. Ruto. Ruto is also trying to, to as uh, someone has just mentioned that, I remember, yes. Ruto is trying to appeal to people's emotion. You know, you remember in Mombasa. Now, uh, we are talking about propaganda and half-truths. Ruto is going to Mombasa and standing in a podium. And this is what Ruto is telling the people. That uh, wamenipangia, wamenipangia, wanataka mimi, wanataka kun, wananipangia mimi ndio nisipande huko. Nilikuwa na, nilisaidia Raila, nilikuwa mzuri. Nikasaidia Ruto, nilikuwa mzuri. Sasa nikitaka kukaa na njini. You see, already, <laughs> our furai wanaungana. You see, that, that's a lie. Yeah, but I also think uh, he's, uh, okay, there are many emotional appeals. I think uh, his emotional appeal to sympathy was rather too early. Uh, what is the lifespan of uh, of sympathy? Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> that, 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 because that, you can't appeal that, to us sympathy in 2017 and expect to be voted in 2022, we still have sympathy. What is the lifespan of sympathy? You see, you see, Wekesa, what he's not telling you people, what he's not telling the masses at that particular point in time, just to analyze his speech at that point. He's not mm. telling the masses the truth. The truth is that when elections are called, Anyone is free to strategize and join the race. And election is about competition. And anything that someone can use to get there, they are going to use it. Which is the truth. Which is the fact. But for him, he's saying, anything that other people are doing, they are doing it to defeat him. Now, what is what is elections about? Election is about defeating. There will be a loser. There will be a winner. So you see that that's already is a propaganda. So that the, the, he can he can wipe the emotion of people to feel like you're saying sympathetic. That who labda kila mtu amtaki. Which is also a lie. He's not going to tetea them. Where have he has he been for the last ten years? You know, he was he was there for with Uru in 20, 2002. He was there with uh, Raila 2007. He was there with uh, Uhuru 2013. He was there with Uhuru 2017. At all these times, were these people not there? So okay. <laughs> what makes Just you think that you are our party? Yeah. Yes, 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 sir. Just hold on that thought there. Let me bring in Mwango. Mwango, what is your take, Bon? You know, you have to support your man. Why do you think he's, he appeals to sympathy? Yeah, these okay, are before, emotional before. calculations. Okay, okay. Emotional appeal uh, is part yeah. of political Be Before you strategy. answer that, before yeah. you answer that, mm. before you answer that, I was told of a man who wanted to commit suicide. And so... Uh, he decided that the only channel of committing suicide was to drown in water. So Adam was like uh, 10 kilometers away from his home. So he woke up very early to go and drown in water. So the problem is he used a route that has many people. So while he was walking towards the dam, was meeting people, greeting him and telling him how good he is and they reminding him of the things he has done for them. By the time he reached at the dam, <laughs> that that feeling of, <laughs> of committing suicide had disappeared. But he did, he took a shower and came back home. <laughs> 
So can you tell us uh, why do you start at your sympathy on 2017? By the time we reach 2022, we don't have any sympathy. <laughs> okay, okay. Political uh, emotional appeal is usually part of a political strategy for any for any politician who want to win election. And we find that uh, any politicians have been using these things eh, to appeal to the masses, regardless of who is who. Ruto is just a politician like any other, and is using that emotional appeal to attract the masses. As a I can remember in 2013, the last rally that uh, ODM leader Raila Molodinga made at Nyayo Stadium, he literally, he literally whipped emotions by starting saying, by saying that uh, all the people that the previous government had killed. I can remember he started by saying that uh, they killed Tom Boyer, they killed JM Karaoke, they killed uh, Ouko. They killed uh, Odiam Bombay. What was he doing? He was uh, appealing emotionally to the masses. So I think that uh, that strategy is being used by any other politician apart from Ruto. So it is it is normal. And even in the in the in the other worlds, like in US, this thing has been used. Propaganda has been used, and it is a norm to use propaganda to try sway the masses towards your side. So I don't find it that it's so awkward when DP now uses it. If it works to his advantage, well and good. All we want is to win the seat. And we'll yeah, use... but don't you but don't you think there is okay? Emotional appeal is good, yes, and there are different emotions. Some are uh, positive energy and the others are negative energy. For example, when Obama was running for US and he used the, the slogan, yes, we can. After the election, we were told that uh, he had inspired almost the whole universe. You see, there is an emotional appeal that creates positive energy. And there's an emotional appeal that uh, creates negative energy. So why do you choose something that does not look like it's positive or it's just average. Okay, Ruto has been appealing to people emotionally by saying that uh, he was a nobody and now he's a somebody. Now he can hit with the kings. I think by using that one, he's trying to, to instill a positive energy to us who are low here that despite your situation right now, a time might come that you also you might eat with the kings. So is a living example of somebody who was very poor at some point and now eats with the kings. The kings are like Uru Kenyatta, Rail Odinga, and, Yan, and any other person, those who were born in a in a family where there was uh, money. So through that kind of approach, let me I ask you, let me ask some you. kind of energy. Mango, Mango, yeah. be straight. Raila being a son of a vice president is greater than Ruto, the vice president himself. It's not better, but uh, there is. So why some, do you uh, regard him as a king? There is a, there is an advantage eh, when you come from a well off background, as as we, as we compare somebody who is coming from a poor background, like for example. Let me give you an uh, or analogy. You want to start uh, a race, a hundred meter race, some of the fifty meter mark, and you you want to start at the zero mark. Do you think you will compete fairly with this person? The person who is already at the fifty meter mark is already having an advantage over you, and it will take a lot for you to meet that person. Ruto has really struggled. To reach to the level where he is now, right now, now he can at least uh, just thumbs with people like Uru Kenyatta. I think it's not a, an easy job; it's really difficult for somebody who was. If you compare Uru, who was born in the state house, and Ruto, who was born uh, I don't know where, can you compare the, those two individuals? No, 
one had to work extra hard, other one. And to to even to me, point, seeing Uru that Uru point, became the president, I saw him that he got some, this thing from just, that notion of coming from... Because I can I jump in? Yes. Yeah, let me comment something and then you can respond yeah. to that. Uh, to some point, life has a, has a balancing act. That's why uh, yes. a rich man a rich man needs sleep just as a poor man. A rich man needs encouragement just as a poor man. A rich man needs. Uh, I think human needs are the same. It it only depends. You see, there's someone who gets. Uh, for example, when you wake up, for you maybe you are your fare is only twenty shillings to reach to town. Someone needs jet fuel. So our needs, it doesn't mean that uh, when you are rich, you don't have challenges of life. And that's why, have you ever seen, uh, I think even rich, some of, one of the rich man's daughter was with her son, actually committed suicide uh, in, the, in this country. So, it does not mean like when you are born, or your father is a minister that you don't pass through challenges. In fact, some of those guys go through worse challenges. Some of them, why Why do you think some of the rich men's sons and daughters are drug, some are drug addicts? They go through the same emotional challenges other people go through. And you may meet even a Chokora is happy somewhere someone in the palace is struggling wants to commit suicide so don't tell us that this person didn't go through this well, they, they, these are common the challenges of life are common to men it's not money that determine happiness my friend okay so let me finish about what i was saying the topic of today was about uh, the ugly heckling culture okay uh, I don't support any kind of heckling uh, to any side, be it on the other side, be it in the ODM side. It is a wrong uh, action for people to go and echo somebody. And uh, that's this, the same, same action also we saw it in Migori when uh, uh, is it, uh, Jimmy Wanjigi went in Migori and we saw that the people heckled him and he was even stoned. Eh? That one was a very bad behavior. And today, the same same thing also happened in where it was in um, where in Meru, where Bella was You don't even know. Runyenges, yeah. Again, it was not a, a very good picture there. And uh, I'm asking those who are organizing such kind of action, be it in Migori, be it in uh, in Meru, or Runyenges. It's a very bad action. And let us condemn it, be it in UDA or in ODM. It's a very bad action. Let us all be tolerant to others. Let's welcome any person. Come, say is a is agenda or agenda, and then go. Then come 2022, we'll now choose who are the best agenda for the country. So let us, uh, 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 with a strong with the strongest term possible, say that no, say no to any kind of heckling or hooliganism in on either side, be it on ODM or in UDA, or even in OCA. We also have OCA also. Is it, <laughs> I don't know why all the time is about UDA and ODM, but we also have other the, the third force here is there, the OCA at the third force, eh? okay. and we, and we seem not to talk about them. Eh? <laughs> yeah, there is a third force, yeah. and they're also coming. Yeah, coming from where? Which, which third force? Well, can, can, I, can I, I, let, me, let me jump in now. Can I, I'm back. Who is that? 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 You know, you try just to assume pause. all that. Mango, Mango me give me that. time. I'll talk to you. Mango, just pause. Uh, I'm coming back to you and your Oka. Thing. Mango. You just add something on Oka and then Tisa to continue. No, just wait. I'll give you time. No, I'm coming back to you. I'm coming back. Pause. 
ya imesa mate mesa chai kidogo maji <laughs> mwangu yes Anyway, okay, at this you... stage, the reason why I'm saying that, uh, Tisa, just wait. Huh? The reason at this stage, I want, I don't want. We have been doing a narrative from eight to nini. right now. I want a cross conversation. We change the style. Huh? Okay. So now let him Mwangu. comment. Then we come back to you. Mwangu. Yes. Okay, it's a group of individuals who don't know what they want in Kenya. So. They are good voters, and their occupation is to threaten to run for every election. So we have to ignore them and concentrate on two people, Raila and Ruto. Two, this, uh, this been nice, uh, I want to nice. inform you that politics of uh, whipping emotion ended in 2013. You see, in 2013, Uru and Ruto were facing uh, some charges, Uku ICC. And so Kenyans were actually like, oh, let us now vote for them to protect them. But you see, Kenyans woke up and realized that, 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 that these, these are con men. That is why in 2017, Raila Odinga won election. And I will tell you how, because I know you will have to argue. I, will, I want to give you an analogy. If you are in your house today, in your house, Mwango, then, uh, okay, uh, you, you, you found me leaving your house, carrying a bag, and your laptop, which, which was on the table, is missing. And then you ask me to open the bag so that you can be able to check the laptop, and I say no. Even a madman knows that the laptop is in the bag. The fact that they never opened the server tells you that up to now, server is still counting. They like one election. So that's why Kenya said no. These people, we can't let them again, but they force themselves back. Three, Farah Malim is a confused politician who doesn't even know what, what he wants, just like Muravadi and the rest. I, I heard him today saying that if we dare, if the government dare steals from Ruto, then Ruto will not, then this country will, will go to hell. He's forgetting that you cannot steal what is not there. What, you, you cannot compete with, 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 with Raila Odinga and expect to beat him so that, so that you, he can steal from you. Where will these numbers be gotten from to be stolen? So you see, Farah Malim is somebody who is being used. In 2019, August, Gerard Gay was sent by his people, and this is what he said. Whoever stands in our way, we will deal with him. These people started using threats a long time ago that if Ruto of does not make it, then they will turn this county into, into a chaotic place. But may I remind you today that there is nobody who's going to war in 2022. It is so simple. Kenyans themselves have decided that they are going to teach this person a lesson that he will not even get time to talk about have been rigged. So even as you go out, they are saying that you guys, I saw even today you are, you are claiming that Mizani Africa that placed Ruto from 85% to 57% in Central is now in, in the Anshik team. Yet when Mizani Africa placed Ruto at 85%, you are happy. The truth of the matter is that things are changing. And we have to agree that between, between now and 2020, uh, between now and August, Ruto should change the story of what tells people rather than keep on repeating one thing at a time. So in a nutshell, Mwango, I will tell you for free that there is nobody who can be threatened in this country. We are not going back to 207 because we know what we want. We are going to do an election based on what one stands for. You have said something that Raudinga mentioned, the, 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 the death of Ohuku and the rest. Everybody has been doing this. We have been reading them in books. You see, that is not weeping emotion. That is the truth of the matter. Whipping emotion is what the guy is now saying that you see the three people have gang the, the, the dynasties have gang against me. Ruto himself is a dynasty. Ruto has not worked hard, brother. I want to remind you, Ruto was actually was picked by 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 Moi and made who is who, who is today. So Ruto has not worked hard anywhere. 
Let's not, uh, let's not be conf confused. Ruto has worked with all the dynasties ever since he started politics. He has been supporting dynasties. He supported Moi a dynasty in 2002 when Raila Odinga a dynasty when uh, Uru a dynasty was running. He supported a dynasty leaving Kibaki who was not a dynasty. In 2007, he supported, he supported Raila Odinga a dynasty in 2013, again, he supported Uhuru, a dynasty, and there were so many people who were, who were not a dynasty. 2017, the same. So what has changed? People have woken up, Bana. This guy is a dynasty himself. And if it's about dynasties going home, then the guy shouldn't even talk about running. Let's sell policies. Thank you. Can I interject? Yeah. Who is that, James? Yes. Okay. I, I, I think so, that, yeah. briefly. I, briefly, I, I, I think want uh, to bring in. Uh, I want to bring Ben and uh, yeah. Yes. So I I I think uh, talking about uh, motivations or behavior and uh, voting behavior. One other. Uh, one other tactic that is being used in Central is guilt, the guilt appeal. Guilt appeal is where you have a situation where you are reminded that uh, you, you gave a promise and therefore reneging on it, it, it depicts you as, a, as an unworthy person as somebody who cannot be trusted, a way of putting a sinned mentality on a population by making them feel guilty of uh, of not uh, you know of not uh, behaving in a certain political way, uh, and yet when you follow very well, the pronouncement was made by one person. This was nothing to do with uh, a whole community. It's just that one of the those they were in partnership with at and such ones during the heat of the moment. But now there are those who want to make it look like it was a it was a covenant made uh, with blood and must and must be adhered to and must be uh, respected. So guilt, guilt appeal is yet another uh, tactic that is uh, being used here. As to whether it will be successful, we wait to see. But I know there is a section of the population that feels in that way, that uh, they feel guilty, that if they don't... Uh, you know, if they don't uh, behave in that way and vote in the in the manner directed to pay a debt, then they will be reneging on a, on a, on a, on an agreement uh, that makes them look now very bad, as people who cannot keep partners, as people who are not uh, you know who cannot be trusted. So mixed between the fear and uh, the guilt, therein comes the, 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 the photo manipulation uh, as a way of, um, of gaining votes. Um, yeah, I think uh, that's part of it. Wekesa? Okay, uh, let's have uh, Penny Wayne. Penny, how are you? Fine, thank you. You're welcome on the program. We were discussing about uh, politics of uh, propaganda, uh, heckling, them calling, character assassination, all those uh, negative energy in politics. What is your take? Okay. For me, politics of propaganda uh, might be used by the 
politicians to achieve their to 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 achieve a certain things like appealing to the to the emotions of the masses. But I think I'm not in support of the propaganda because you 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 cannot keep lying to to the masses. We are dealing with intelligent people who know what their problems are. So when you begin when your when your rallies are when your when your rallies are rather saturated with the propaganda and people are looking for for factual or uh, for issue and fact based uh, uh, politics that is going to address their problems, then with time they will get tired. They will get tired of your lies. They will get tired of your half truths and your rumors and your and your lies and they will rather now shift to the person who seems to have the who seems to have a issue based politics they will rather now move to someone who will give them long lasting solutions as opposed to propaganda so in my, my opinion much as propaganda might be used by the politicians they should have well crafted ideologies that can be sold to the masses and this should contain um, factual information which is going to address the problems that they are going through in terms of a uh, heckling and uh, and uh, whatever this ugly heckling culture and stage managed crowds i think heckling is uh, is is backward for me it's quite backward and uh, we should discourage it as much as possible we are in a free nation and uh, we want to maintain peace during this time of elections. So I think, we, like my colleagues have just spoken and said, we need a culture of tolerance. We need to show some uh, civilization by allowing people to, to <clears throat> visit any part of the country and airing their views and selling their, their whatever selling their manifestos. So what happened today was uh, quite unfortunate and should not be encouraged because post-election violence starts with one person and then it's highly contagious. When the heckling <clears throat> and, the, and the fighting becomes con contagious, then we, we, we find that our country can easily go into fire. So we should really avoid heckling and uh, and uh, and uh, whatever heckling and and making noise and name calling and stuff like that because it's not healthy for our country at this moment we don't want to go where we were in 207 so i think a lot have been said i was in the backstage and i was listening and i think a lot has been said a lot of contributions have been made and uh, i don't have a lot to add on to that Thank you. Okay. Um, kuna jama anaito Isaac. Isaacs. <laughs> Asamo. Karibu sana. Mashkuru. We are discussing politics of uh, propaganda half truths character assassination heckling what is your take on that okay in fact let me start uh, by greeting you guys uh, it's another great moment you know i'm happy i'm here on this platform okay what i can say uh about propaganda let me start from here uh, today morning i saw uh, uh this uh, this lady politician um, omanga uh, posting on a uh, facebook account about what happened in 2017 i can say about i, I remember very well when i uh, visited uh, meru it was being received very well and whatever happened there, there we know very well so today omanga took into our account said that uh, the history will repeat itself after 
the 2017 after the masses and whatever happened Raila got received very well but there are no votes so it is going to repeat itself this time round okay but I want to say that okay on top of that again uh, I'm gonna say that um, also today uh, I saw Mohammed uh, Ali Jijopefu uh, posting on uh, his uh, Facebook account uh, giving out. In fact, I saw I saw a number of people there. Uh, most of them were men. So what Mohammed said is that uh, now they were maybe okay. What he said is that they were lifting Mama Bogas. Hello. 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 Hello? Hello, are you getting me? Yeah. Yeah, go on. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, what I was just trying to say is that um, also today I saw Mohamed Ali uh, posting on uh, his uh, Facebook uh, account giving out two million. So we said very well, I recall very well about uh, Mama Boga. Uh, the other nation was about was about uplifting Mamamboga. So what I saw there was, uh, in fact, I saw I saw most of them were men. So when I had tried to look uh, in, into the comments, uh, there were a lot of reactions there. Others were calling them Mamamboga. So you see, such kind of politics. Okay, what I want to say is this. Uh, there is a, a day one, I think, when uh, uh, his honorable Rairodinga visited Meru when he was with his excellent Sasan Joho. Uh, they promised opening uh, some markets, maybe in DRC Congo, and Rail also promised he'll talk to them. So they got well received. I think this sent a lot of panic. Uh, it sent a lot of uh, reaction into uh, Huda. So I think uh, they had to sit down and plan it well. So, and that is when, since then, we have witnessed a lot of uh, uh, arranged, okay, we saw a claim here and there, most clips. <sighs> so well, this, this showed it was well planned. And in fact, okay, in fact, this, uh, in such a time, we are heading direct to the momentum of politics. You know, these politicians will have to visit each and every place. So, when the Lodinga feasted Meru, they planned it. Uh, what do they have to know? Also, uh, Uda will be visiting one of the uh, uh, what I can say, yeah, right, one of the uh, to campaign. So a lot will happen. So we have to respect each other. Let let us do politics in much okay in a manner that uh, is going to unite Kenyans. And I think uh, this one will help us as Kenyans grow well and learn much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. In fact, it is my first time to be here. And I'm much okay. I think you will receive me. But then I think we'll be, as from today, we'll be together. Thank you much. You're welcome. Keep coming. Here Thank we. You. We exchange knowledge and information. Most of those guys heckling, they don't have platforms to air their, <laughs> what is in their mind or heart. So if you have a, a platform like this, you you are allowed you are allowed to heckle here, <laughs> so that when you go to the rally, you are sober. <laughs> well, for, uh, I guess uh, 
Uh, Mwango is back. He was prosecuting his point. <laughs> yes, Mwango, we lost him. I, I, uh, just I, That's why I told him to pause. I didn't tell him to go. And I asked yeah. him to take a cup of water. Now he has gone to eat Ugali. He will come with... <laughs> oh, no, I had, uh, I had some problem. Technical Network problem from my side, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah, saying... Even, even me, it was raining and the lights went off. Okay. So I went, I went, I went on a black screen, but I'm back. I was saying something about Oka, and then uh, I don't know WG or somebody else. Tisa interrupted me. Uh, so yeah, my point about, Tisa about Oka, Oka, but you can uh, you can proceed with your. Uh, oh, oh. I, I hear Oka in uh, Central. They are being called Oka Haha. <laughs> I don't know what it means. <laughs> so I was saying that uh, we should not uh, see them as uh, those who are weakling or those who have uh, doesn't have some 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 basis. Oka can force us into a rerun because uh, they might deny either Raila or Ruto to get that fifty plus one. So let's not see them as those people who are weakling. As we call them, the Serelax. Those guys can really bring trouble. And uh, more so, How? the Oka guys can can eat into How? the the Oka guys from uh, okay from my side. Okay, the Oka give guys me a scenario. Can, give me a scenario. How the Oka guys eh, as as uh, as Raila is trying to enter Mount Kenya, is forgetting that uh, some of his votes. Well, from this Oka people and Kalonzo, Kambani, and also Madividi Western. If these guys can pull and go on their way, they will injure Raila more than Ruto because, as you, as you remember, the NASA brigade. Okay, R Ruto yeah. was with the Uhuru. Uhuru left. Is Ruto lacking what? That's why you, know, you see the issue. From they, now. Yeah, the issue of uh, of Mount Kenya is there. Now so is it good? If you have acknowledged that, now we use eh? Yes. Is Mount Kenya gone? Are you are you trying to admit that Mount Kenya is gone? Now it's, that you okay, Mount Kenya, gone. Mount Kenya is uh, is not yet gone because Ruto is still so uh, why and on Uhuru top. is not there. And Uru is not there, but Uru is trying. Even last time he was trying to to who people to a side of Raila. So he's trying his best eh, to make that Mount Kenya go no, to Raila. I'm saying, no, you are not getting my point. There, there yeah. are two blocks that went to Ruto, uh, to Uhu Ruto. That was yes. Mount Kenya and the Rift Valley. Yes. Now Uhuru has pulled out, but people of uh, of Hansela Nation don't see Ruto losing votes. They only see Raila losing votes because he doesn't have the Oka. And by okay, the way, this, Oka, yes. Oka, Oka, Oka and uh, Raila don't have bad blood the same way Uhuru and Ruto have bad blood. The others are just playing. Yeah, they don't have bad blood. My take was, in case Oka goes as a third force, then it will eat into Raila base. But and I asked you give us a eh? scenario. A scenario, because these guys are three, four. So who will be running against who? Like for example, Oka can can choose one one candidate. They, it can be, be either Kalonzo or even even yeah. Mdavadi. Let me so ask you. So when they go as a team yeah. as Oka, and then ODM. Does it make sense? Yeah. Does it make sense? Let's say for example, does it make sense for um Davadi to refuse to join Raila and the debuter is Kalonzo, who knows they are only creating a third force. To deny somebody what so why don't you go to a superior force either to your deputize Ruto or Raila rather than okay. deputizing a third force? <laughs> Mdavadi can can do that as we as as he did in 2013. Mdavadi went as a candidate, but not to win. He went there only to deny Raila some votes, and he did that. So this is politics, eh? and yeah, there are cards being played. Eh? Did, did, did anybody miss fifty plus? 
he tried uh, he tried his best just to to ensure that Raila did not get some vote from western and and we all know that eh? and we all know that that he, that his campaign was being financed Wango. by another Wango. serious by... question if if yeah? uh, before deba comes in my last question uh if Raila can climb the hardest mountain mount kenya is it hard for Raila to get votes in Eastern? Can Mudavad himself, who has no even zero candidate in Bungoma, zero, he only has candidates in Vika and a few in Kakameka, deny Raila, who owns the whole of Busia, who, who has, who owns part of uh, Kakameka and uh, Vika? <laughs> so, 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 this is my take. Eh? If you combine yeah. Mudavadi and, and Kalonzo, Kalonzo also goes with, with some part okay. of Kambani, then it will be a lot of votes lost. Those guys, Hawana area, let me tell you, they have been there. And, for, and as for now, okay. as for now, wait, now, wait, wait. As for now, it's just that, uh, me, me, I don't just want to create a scenario that it is not applicable. So as for yeah, now, now, as for now, together, you, you Mudavad has worked you. together with Weta for the last five years. They have never agreed who is the king. Pete Wekesa, yes. yeah. Ambia mute. Yeah, now, now, oh, yeah. Wekesa, yeah. as for now, Wekesa, Wekesa, yeah, let, let me finish first. Just, a, just, a, just one point. With the for the last five years, they have been taking tea, they have never agreed between the two who is the king. Wekesa, now, Wekesa, yes. Jacoredo is speaking from the background. Tell him to mute, or you mute him. The day was okay. Out of good okay. Let me let me just do that. We <laughs> okay. So I have done that. So I'm saying, uh, these yeah. two guys have worked together for last five years. Now instead of agreeing who is the Luya Kingpin, they have brought down the same problem to Oga. Now they have four guys. In fact, there are three now. There are three Luyas and uh, <laughs> two others. So how will they solve that matrix if they cannot agree, two of them, who is the lawyer kingpin? In fact, it will take Oka 20 years to agree who is the run, who will run for presidency, my friend. And that's why the Unaona Uhuru are not Uhuru. Ruto and uh, Raila are not concentrating on those guys because they know they can't agree. They are not concentrating on them. Okay, now, now Wekesa, as we see right now, uh, every candidate, be it Uru, be it Raila, is trying to get a, a DP from uh, from Mount Kenya. So I wonder where Kalonzo and uh, and and maybe Madividi will be because they'll be forced now to form their own team. Once they will not be able to join uh, uh, Raila and also join Ruto, they'll be forced to join their to form their own team and go and run. And when they do that. From my side, I believe that they will eat into the voice of Raila Odinga more. Because that is what Raila got from NASA last time. Part of them was from Kalonzo and also Madividi. In fact, Raila is more advantaged when he doesn't go with those guys. I can tell you that for free. ODM suffered because it was affiliated to them. ODM had Bungoma. The whole of Bungoma was ODM. But when they it left for for Kenya to field candidates, for Kenya failed and to believe in that. Mudavadi took part of the Kakameka and Dini and then to believe in that. So ODM is more strong when he doesn't go with those guys. They are not strategic. Look at, uh, if they are not even racing candidates. Just look at Mudani. Wetangula Menyangwanya, all the Bungoma guys, including the guy on a by-election when you talk to Juzi. So, if you cannot organize your troops, right now, Wetangula is fighting the only governor he has in Bungoma, Naito Wangama. Now, if you can fight everybody and you stay, stand alone, and right, even Wetangula to win a senator seat, it took Raila Odinga and the team Wakaenda Kumukampeinia, my friend. And even that, he lost through the petition and they had to go back and campaign for him. So this is somebody, they need Raila more than he needs them. 
there is a lot there are a lot of cross currents happening in their home ground right now people like kina muhiza are coming up people like kina Eugene are coming up kina oparanya if these guys don't align themselves they will be swept and I'm, i can tell you oparanya is coming up as a strong lawyer uh, leader Eugene is coming up as a strong lawyer leader uh Kinamukiza are there. So they will be soon be replaced if they don't align themselves properly. And that's why you see Raila is not even careful to persuade them. And already we know the cuts are already there. They are even already, uh, this Fort Kenya thing was supposed to be transferred. If it cannot work, we will have an another, there is another party Kinamukiza will run. Ukisikia ati wetangula wa merana, ananiya merana, ananiya na ito nane? Mudavati. Watasimamisha mkiza, they compete just to neutralize him. So there is already a strategy of neutralizing those guys. Because they don't even have financial muscle in the first place. Okay, so this is my my advice to the to the ODM guys. Eh? Don't underestimate the Oka side. And also ensure that as you as you go for the for the Kikuyu votes, remember also to maintain the Kamba and the Luya votes. Because even if you go for the Kikuyu votes and, and leave the other ones to go, then it will be a zero work. It will be like uh, you have gained on one side and also lost on the other side. So ensure that you also try to maintain the votes that eh, you got in the last election. Kikamba, campus are many, they are over a million. So if they can go away with their votes, you know, it will be so much <laughs> injurious to you people. But Mwango, we are Mwango, talking about somebody what, who, what? Lost, who lost <laughs> by election and uh, got the last one. Uh, Mwango, the Mwango. Last one. Yeah? Mwango, <laughs> the person who won the by election is uh, Kivuda Kibwana. Against now, the whole Oka Brigade. <laughs> now, Kivuda Kibwana won, won against Oka and UDA. Now, Kivuda Kibwana is uh, is one of the governors in uh, in uh, Makweni, Machakos area. Machakos is uh, Mutua. Mutua is not with the uh, Inwaipa. Kitui is uh, Ngilu. Ngilu is not in Waipa. Which 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 governor? Which which county has a wiper governor in Machakos? I mean, in the in the lower eastern. Which county? No county. So you 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 want to talk about someone who does not have a, a county that is led by someone in his party. Now Kivuta, Mutua, and Ngilu are already coming together. So one thing that is happening if if you are poker guys do not so wiper as we speak is not controlling any county. Uh Mudavadi with his uh, party is not controlling any county ANC. Is there is there a county controlled by ANC? No. It is only uh, uh, who Wetangula, and Wetangula is even fighting the governor that that, that he is supposed apparently to be controlling. So you are talking about people who control no county at all. Now, so Demba. as 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 you are speaking, you know you say here yeah, that we need to be discussing Oka. They have. They have actually thrown themselves to the oblivion themselves. The moment they started every like right now, recently, they are they, they went to to meet the MKF and you could hear whatever this speech. Instead of selling, you know, when you when you're called for, for work, then you go there and then you start talking bad about the other candidate that you also have similar interest. <laughs> you are disqualifying yourself in essence <laughs> you need to sell yourself not talk about the other person who is also having similar interest in fact in the ember for me 
uh, I would rather if uh, if Raila has to consider East, he would rather start Patia Munya a running mate than Kalonzo. In fact, today Uliona, the whole of Meru, all the governors and majority of the leaders were in one lab. So it was it is easier to consolidate a whole Meru vote. No, you party Raila Ivi. And then Achana na Eastern Wagawane, Kalonza Chukwe Ake, Ruta Chukwe Ake, Raila Chukwe Ake. Actually, you, you see, you as it is, the it. moment they, they, they fought, they, they, they were looking at uh, the problem with them is they, they, stuck, they got stuck in BBI. Raila was not so much stuck on BBI, and he meant it when he said that uh, this BBI is not about 2022. You see, and right now it has come to down on them. They cannot jump on the bad girl. The reason why they haven't joined Baba in the Inezekana, it's because how do they jump into it? <laughs> you know, they admire what is going on, but they can't jump into it, you know, <laughs> because they have attacked him. You are talking, Wango, and you are muted. On the issue of uh, BBI, uh, it's only that uh, that uh, Raila is a very very clever politician, eh? but the BBI was meant for 2022, and that's why they were forcing it so that it happens before 2022. No, you're you're you're, you're not right, Mwango. That's another proper. We are talking about propaganda and the half truths. There's no there's no no law that is made for an individual. That is what you guys, because laws are made for the nation, not for an individual. And the for generations. And for generations. Once the Constitution 2010 was, was, was passed by a majority, what happened? Even Ruto was the first beneficiary, you know? So you don't make laws for yourself. It is be foolhardy for you to think that you are making laws for yourself. You make laws for generations. And even if it would have passed, by the way, let me tell you, if it would have passed, it would have benefited Ruto more than even Raila. How? Because Ruto has too many people that he has promised something. <laughs> I mean, right now he's struggling. Yes, Wakasa. <laughs> Can you also see in Demba, the same yeah. challenge that Poker has stuck is the same challenge that the Asla Nation got into. Kina Kuria Kina Nani finally fizzled out because maybe they were hanging there thinking that easy position Mingi was a Pajakuria Kua debut at least Watakua. But now they also see there are only two slots and the owner of the Nini seems not to be interested in now on the other parties. If there were five slots, he could have enticed them and say, Come, I'll give you the deputy, I'll give the prime minister. They could have come. But now so this, this this propaganda that Mwango is selling that this was meant for 2022, I think it's 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 very myopic and it can only sell mm -hmm. in a certain situation. Laws no. are not made for Raila. Once a law has passed, it mm -hmm. is not about Raila. It has not said that this position you have created, it has not come with the name written Raila. When and we then passed 20, when we, yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah they, they, they also wanted to implement part of the proposal of the BBI proposal through, through the parliament. So that can just show you how they were not genuine at all. Because if the document is bad, if BBI was bad, they should have rejected the whole of it. They should not come round and now start proposing a portion of it to be implemented through the parliament. Okay, yes, and uh, Mwango. Penny, you Penny. see, we, we, Mwango. we didn't say that BBI wait, was, wait, uh, was bad. Eh? Mwango. Sorry? We passed 2010. We didn't 2010 say that BBI was, uh, was bad eh? in its entirety. There were only some sections that were not good. And that's why I said that only those uh, good sections. But there's no. In there's, the parliament there's and Mwango. Them there. But Mwango, Mwango, you guys are, are being. Uh, can you give us one section that was bad? Which the are the issue bad of, sections? Uh, Ombudsman was not good. That was sorted. 
even 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 lawyers went and gave their presentations and uh, you know let me tell you mwango there's yeah. no constitution that is perfect that's why there's a position there's a provision for amendment the provision for amendment is that you can improve on the document as time goes by whatever you think is right now 10, 20 years from now will not be the better thing and people will need to amend it. So a provision for amendment is because there's no perfect law. So when you come here and someone tells you that it has to be perfect for it to be passed at this time, I think that person is playing with the intelligence of Kenyans. Number two, there's no constitution that comes with a person's name written. When we pass 2010, president and deputy, there's no way written that Uhuru and Ruto. But right now, whom do we have? Ruto is a deputy in a constitution that he actually said no to. Mm. Now, when you are going with this referendum and it comes and it passes, it doesn't come written that it's only Raila that can be the president and it is only so and so that Mudavadi that can be the deputy. Any Kenyan who qualifies can be. So this propaganda of being told that these guys want to jitafutia my position, Ruto is looking for what? He wants to be the president. What is that? A position. He has told you guys that uh, the nomination in Uda will be free and fair, all of them. But him is not being nominated to that position. That is being hypocritical. Tell us that even me, I will face the, the masses. I'll face the delegates on this particular day. People still remember the Jubilee menace where uh, most strong candidates failed in the nomination. And that's where there was the beginning of problems. But if you want to show that other parties are bad, it's only him with the Alpha and Omega. But let me ask you another question, Mango. Yes. You were a, a thousand motivational quotes. One of it, it was Raila and Acheswa. Mumetusukuma up to now. Even up to now, they still believe Raila and Acheswa. But while they are blinding us on that, they have forgotten to tell us Kwanini Ruto Alicheswa. Because so they are, instead of telling us tell us what happened. Okay, Uru said that kumi yake kumi ya kumi ya ruto, but that that kumi ya ruto, I kuwa tu ati kumi tu inakuja ilikuwa bado tu apitia election aende kwa wanainchi aombe kura achaguliwe, I kuwa kumi automatic kumi that Uru lives under and Ruto in. No. Still Ruto had to go through the campaign process and who Kenyans to vote for him. But that's not so what you me, guys are telling us on the campaign podium. You are telling us Ali Tuambia, yeye kumi, na yake kumi. In fact, they said this <laughs> from 2012 to 2032. It was sealed according to them. We are going to have 20 years uninterrupted. Yani muna fikiria sisi utukona short memories atukumbuki Kenya mlikuwa muna tuambia. Mani nini? Sasa, nikulize wekesa. Hata kama uru ange support Ruto, ainge kuwa automatic tu ati ange mpea urais. Badu tu still angeenda pale kwa wanainchi wa mchagwe. So, mimi sioni kama yu ni big deal sana. Ni big deal, ni big deal mwango kwa sababu munaitumia hiyo propaganda in the in the in the uh, in the central yeah, mountain region. Munasema kwamba alituambia yake ni kumi tuko na deni. Tuko na deni ya kulipa kwa sababu tuliambua yake kumi na yake kumi. That is that is what you guys are using the propaganda. So are you confirming it's a propaganda that is hollow? And can't sell. That's where, where, that's sell and you just hand you some sympathy votes. So what you say, my That's why I say. That's why I say that. Mwana sasa yoyote atatumia any any other means. Propaganda iwe nini bora yende towards his advantage. So. Kwa hivyo kwa hivyo kwa hivyo hiyo hiyo ni propaganda moja tumeona. Ya kwamba hiyo yangu kumi yake kumi ilikuwa propaganda. Kwa hivyo to agree. Ah good. Propaganda ya pili. Ni wapi? Mm. Ni wapi Ruto aliuza chicken? Mm. Where did he sell chicken? Okay, Ruto sold chicken by the roadside. Where? 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 Where?
Hizo he is he's a hustler kwa sababu aliuza chicken. So nataka mwangu atuambie <laughs> ni wapi aliuza chicken ndiye akakuwa billionaire. When 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 which years? I haven't seen anybody coming up saying that tulikuwa tunauza na chicken na Naruto hapa kwa hii market. Naruto sold chicken immediately after he had finished the university. Where? Where no, and when when, when did this that, that is the only time we saw him with a bible and the wife. We have never seen him when, with a chicken. When, when, <laughs> okay. when, if, 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 Godia, kama aliuza chicken kwa market after university. Na akiwa university ndiyo Jirongo, alimpatia kazi ya kusupply t-shirts. According to Jirongo, when did he sell the chicken? We are not told of the exact year <laughs> of when, but... So why do you believe, record, so that is also... An, that is also another and, uh, propaganda. Now, we are bringing why, you to the reality. So, we are bringing you to the reality. Chicken even right now is still selling chickens and eggs. I think we are bringing this you thing to the reality are... guy. Our yeah. our motivational speakers when Agwanga coached. A motivational speaker will come and tell you how he was selling jugu and now, right now he owns Shamba. But it's a coached way to yeah, to make to, to inspire people anyway. But if you follow through uh, what made him to be Utahuza Njuku na Uta Uta Ayu Nunu Ata Plot. So so Temba, politics of propaganda, it's a norm. It's a norm in any country and in the entire world. So whether Uta uses it. I've seen also Raila use it, propaganda. Raila has also been on record uh, saying things that are not there. But uh, is that just to do what? Attract attention and also to whip emotions. And I gave you an example earlier of how Raila talked at some rally trying to whip up emotion so that he could uh, get the votes. So propaganda is a norm in politics. So long as it works, on your advantage. Yes? Yeah, now the reason we are discussing is for the, for the not for the politicians, it's for the voter, so that he understands that uh, not everything he hears on political podium is true. It is to understand, so when you are making choices, should not so much have faith in the politician, but uh, be rational in your own judgment because some of these things, some may come to pass, some may not come to pass. Um, I think it is, uh, I don't know if it's Barack or Obama or he was quoting someone. He said that uh, we think about uh, change in miles, but we implement it in inches. So, Someone can come and promise big dreams, but when it comes to delivery, uh, it will be something small, Kapsa. And majority, but, very few. Bekesa, yes. You can't allow Mwango to go away with that. He, he hasn't told us when did Raila <laughs> make a propaganda promise that, uh, I mean, gave a narrative that was not true. As opposed to Ruto, who has given us a narrative that is not consistent. Ruto has 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 never told us. We have never seen a picture of where Ruto sold chicken. He is here telling us that uh, that uh, that uh, Ruto sold chicken after university. Jirongo is telling us Ruto. Sometimes, sometimes I struggle with uh, my TT friends because uh, <laughs> they like. I don't like people who who, who like generalizing. I I would rather point out something. Uh, let's discuss, but Unajua, they will come and say who is not corrupt. Uh, so it becomes a general statement. Who is not doing propaganda? Who is not? Can we isolate cases and prosecute them? Say this one, I think this this is propaganda and it's going to have an impact like this. Because there is also those propaganda that have heavy consequences on our, on, on, on our society. So, and then another question to Mwango. Mwango, 
uh, uh, Ruto by his own admission. By his own admission. He said, yes. Ruto by his own admission has said that uh, he, has, he has supported Uru before. So that means at that point, there were no Mamambogas, there were no Atua Boda Bodas. He was not supporting them. By his own admission, he has supported Raila. So he was going there for his own selfish reasons. There were no Mamambogas, no Atua Piki Piki. So right now, he's saying, He's supporting. What is he telling you? He's telling you that even your votes, when you are voting then, your votes meant nothing. It was all about him and what he was doing. So right now he's saying, now when I stand with you, what does, where does that leave you as someone who has lived in Kenya? 2002 you were there. When you were supporting Uhuru, he didn't have you in mind. 2007, he was there, and you were there. He didn't have you in mind. Now, all of a sudden, right now, he thinks now he can stand with you. And would he have come to stand with you if Uhuru, Ange Muruka, would the story still be the same? Would he be coming to you telling you that now, Natsumama Nanyini, Kama Uhuru, Ange Muruka, Don't you think it's a propaganda also that now all of a sudden a eureka moment has happened? <laughs> ah, I found the reason why I need to be in politics. <laughs> now, now, Temba, ideas comes at uh, different times. So this is the time that the idea has come. You are not an idea. You see now what you what you, where you are getting wrong. The idea, the, you, no, the no, idea no, no. Mamboga, Mam Boda Boda you are not. You are not an right idea. Now, huh? You are not an idea. <laughs> Wait, you see, have you have you, you, know, you see, um, Can you go and watch me, a political rallies between 2013 to 2017? Ruto spoke about those Mamambogas and. Uh, Uhuru himself spoke about bottom-up Kitambo. So don't tell us ideas have come. Someone has just plagiarized a few ideas and uh, consolidated them to who doing uh, uh, other people. Don't tell us these are new ideas. They have been there. So, so Wekesa, before Kenya attained independent, the idea of Kenya to be independent came and Kenyan struggled Ilwa Pati Uhuru. That one was an, was an idea by then. After that, another idea came during the time of Moi, where Kenya became a one-party state. That one was an idea. Another, another idea came in 1992, where Kenya became a multi-party state. And then another idea is right now the economy to uplift the Boga and Boda Boda. That's, 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 that's a big lie. Is, <laughs> no, 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 he has borrowed he has borrowed some no, aspect of devolution and that is what now is running with his bottom up and it's no wonder he's not even able to explain all this and uh, and Mwango, you need to, to to demarcate between ideology and uh, milestones if, if you don't know how to demarcate between the two you can confuse them and think that now all of a sudden i found an idea while you are actually reinventing the same wheel. When you reinvent the wheel, an idea has not just happened to you. So it's a good thing to say an idea came and milestones happening. Like the concept of freedom that happens in the multi-party, the, the, Kenya, when it started, it started with multi-parties. <laughs> Federalism, it wasn't a new idea. It was a milestone that had happened that now we achieved that. 
and then so, and, and then, you remember uh, section two a <laughs> you know it is i think it was kenyatta who made who made kenya one party state and then due to pressure there was change back to multi party democracy the independent constitution was a federal constitution it acknowledged several parties so if you go back and read you realize it is not that there's a new idea there are milestones that are happening and necessity demands that societies change to a certain level so telling us now an idea came i think that one is 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 a fallacy in itself and even what you're talking about when we when we said at independence we said kuna adui ilikuwa ni ugonjwa no ugonjwa ujinga ugonjwa umaskini ujinga umaskini na ugonjwa Yes. Umaskini is an economic uh, concept and if you go and read, read session of paper number 10 that Tom Boya came with was to address aspects of economic revolution so telling us an idea has come and right now the 2010 constitution devolution constitution constitution was about raising people kupeleka nini mashinani and what was the name of nani's chama the other rutos chama chama cha mashinani mashinani So what are you talking about an idea has come these people have always been there with us even the bible says the poor will always be be with you when you all of a sudden <laughs> you have discovered there are poor people that we need to stand with wacheni bwana kutupima ujinga nyinyi wenyewe ndio mlituambia ya kwamba they are no more foolish people wajinga walisha if you cannot interrogate then you think that all of a sudden there's this big thing that ruto has come up with apana So now you you want to be okay. so articulate in a lie. <laughs> now okay. now remember then if you say that uh, no idea is new then it means that uh, even Raila is coming with nothing new all along because these ideas have been there. Yes. I like usually the way you guys argue because uh, when you say that uh, ruto is corrupt that okay fine everybody is corrupt now what argument is that? <laughs> yeah Prosecute. when uh, when uh, I've, when I've is corrupt Mwango, we should point a finger to all of them not Mwango, one. listen listen yeah i've uh, deconstructed what you have tried to misrepresent as a new idea all right So what you are trying to say even the constitution devolution the constitution 2010 was fought for by Akina Raila so if you are saying that they fought for a constitution and devolved devolve government he is fought for that so you are supposed to in this case don't tell me even Raila no that is not a defense was devolution a new idea yeah devolution was it a new idea I gave you the history of where we came from. Yeah, we started so with the fed- with federalism, you remember? Yeah, it was majimbo. And then later the constitution was changed. Tukakuwa one party state. Then now we changed tukakuwa nini? A multi-party state. Mm-hmm. But the constitution did not become what? Devolve. We didn't devolve the government. So now we went and we devolved the government. Mm-hmm. where we started you know we started with majimbos all right so, so, so right now they are devolved to and you revolution remember initially initially Remba. initially initially when the there was uh, the writing they they uh, proposed the use of the word federalism which was coming to bring majimbo but now it changed ikaitwa ugatuzi devolved devolved yeah. so and it's they mean the same Remba. thing majimbo let, let, and devolution let be this way mango Mango, yeah. I think you are missing the point because we are not fighting to to look who has the new ideas. The yes. issue is there are ideas whose time has come. Huh? There can be even an idea on the shelf that can be implemented in a particular time. So what yeah. we are saying is uh, the only challenge we have with the other people is the patent ideas. They will even tell you that you have copied them how to go to church as if you were born at the, and, and and you have been going to church even before they existed. They will even tell you uh this is our track record when they know their party is only three or six months old. So 
don't try to tell us that you own this and you make them look like new ideas. You even try to own God, like anybody trying to do anything spiritual, like to make a copy. There's nothing like that. So anybody trying to talk about uh, the hustle, Raila has always been a. Pre they, that is why he's called a pre people's president. He has always been with the masses, the lowly. But you stepping in the opposition just for a few days and you start claiming to own the masses. How? He's still the people's president. And when he goes there, these guys follow him. And he doesn't hoodwink them and make them look like I'm going to make you rich overnight. No, he identifies with their challenges and he says, this is what we want to do. But you guys, you are promising heaven to the hustlers as if you are going to uh, 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 remove them from Kenya and plant them somewhere called Hasala Nation. <laughs> I want to bring in community and uh, Tony. Uh, community. Okay, let's begin with Tony. Community will come back. I think uh, I'm a Kakasan. Tony, how are you? Tony, you are on mute. Hello. We be, we, uh, hello. We have missed you. <laughs> yeah, busy, busy. Yeah, we, we've been doing uh, politics and uh, propaganda. Is it to the uh, stage managing of heckling and whatever. So what is your take on... Uh, I think it came from a background of uh, today's rallies where at some point there were pockets of uh, drama. Oh, yeah. And so we wanted to, to see uh, what is the role of propaganda in politics and uh, these uh, organized goons for heckling and uh, this psycho fancy thing. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, I think... Um... Politics, as usual, is a tug of war, uh, of words, and uh, is manipulating each other's uh, stand or opinions to make it look like it's not real or it's not workable. And um, uh, I think um, uh, the, the prime minister has come up very strong his strategy looks to be working very much, especially with the support he's getting from the central province. And uh, of course, uh, he has finished from the other side of, of, of Northeastern and uh, from uh, Nakuru, which is also the background of the deputy president. I think he has, he has come up uh, very strong uh, given that uh, he had suffered so much from the BBI. And you uh, the, <laughs> uh, sometimes you wonder that the Baba is down and he goes to the backyard and he comes up with a strategy. Asimiola Asimi Umoja has completely replaced the BBI. And it looks to me that um, it is actually working very well as if he never lost the BBI. So a few things, uh, uh, it's not coming as BBI as such, but it, the narrative or the, yeah, the concept has really replaced, taken over, which is being talked about. There is, on the other side of the, my friend, deputy president, I think he has, um, he, he has, he is running of options strong options, I mean, he still has some options, but the options he got are not strong to counteract the one for Baba. Why I say that is because um, he came up very well or very strong, and he was uh, like, he became, he, he was triumphing uh, over the, over the, over the, uh, the fall of BBI. And he thought that the, BBI was to completely put Baba down. But uh, 
I think uh, the Asmiola Umoja now has replaced that and is 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 strength is is not running is not having many options as to how he can counteract it, especially. When you, if you look the supporters he got in North, uh, in the central province, those gentlemen and that one lady, um, who one time was fighting, uh, beat up the uh, returning officer uh, to get some votes, uh, yeah, and nothing was done to her. And if you look, some of them they are not as vocal as they were. And then uh, if you look them, uh, the way they are spread, it's simply pockets of them who are not as strong as the government side is coming. Because the government side, I think, uh, uh, being uh, supported by the president, I see it as uh, as very effective on how they are counteracting this. You see, you, the other day you had the narrative of Waiguru um, uh, Waiguru uh, going uh, saying that he may join the the the, um, the, the DP side, but the, I was surprised to see her read the mem- <laughs> memorandum to the president and trying to assure the president he, he, she was or she is already in his camp and his support. And if you look, people like uh, the is it uh, this governor is it Kreitu Murungi? Yeah, who have come up very, very, very strong from the, I think Kreit Muruki is a Meru or a Embu. Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, so uh, he, who has come also out to spell out how they are counteracting this. Now, and that's my overall view of both sides that the deputy president is running out of strong options. And now the only strategy that, uh, People like uh, culprits like Ndindi Nyoro and uh, in Kimani Chungwa, uh, the, who, they are capable of uh, paying some goons, some good few guys, plant them strategically in the meeting and try to um, uh, uh, to echo or shout down uh, their opponent just to show that they have some support on that side. They know that they are, the, the shouting is simply a, prop- a propaganda. Propaganda is one of the tools in, in politics and uh, uh, it's acceptable, it works in some places. But this one, it doesn't really uh, seem to be working very well because the masses, there's no way many people who don't want to listen to the president can come just to come and shout where he's, uh, he's having a meeting. Uh, it's only a few who can shout. No, uh, in fact, people who have things to do, they can't leave their work, their jobs, their businesses, their farms, their animals, chicken, wherever, and they go to such a meeting to shout. The only probable people to go there are the ones who have been paid or commissioned to go and do that job. So, and I think that's what exactly they did. Um, but whether it is working uh, to the DB side is something to see, but it's a desperate um, a state. Because I say that because they are not going to change the course of how things are going. They shout, they finish, they go home. Now, um i i also say that because uh, the like uh, the dp side is weakening because and uh, when when even when the um baba was in um, in 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 ruto's backyard you heard how those uh, the, how the people the people turned up in masses do these people come to show papa we don't want you or you are not wanted here, all those people who are speaking there, what they paid what, to come and attend those meetings, or they simply came to show, Baba, we support you or we don't want you. Basically, people would not just come to, to the rally for the person they don't support. Baba has this 
a mastery of uh, politics that uh, his words kind are magnetic or he really resonates with the masses so easily. And if you see Baba's uh, Rolaris, actually he does not dish the kind of money the deputy president dishes. Because you see it like when he, when, uh, when the DP was in um, in Kilivi and oh, in in at the coast, how much money he gave the youth, the guys who are coming literally there, even northeastern, especially the 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 youth, the border border, they were literally coming there to ask for money, and he was giving them money. It's like dishing the two million to the youth at the end of which he sought out. But where have you seen Baba doing that? So what about if the if the, the DP stopped paying the money? Will he have the masses? So uh, my view is that um, the, uh, the the DP is uh, is is running weak in terms of uh, <clears throat> uh, public support on his ambitions. And you see now, <clears throat> on his side, um, more I think uh, more 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 cracks will be seen during the uh, nominations when some of the people who who really thinks that, that they deserve direct nominations will not get those nominations, and then they will just turn against it. Yeah. So um, onwards. Um, my whole view, my whole view, or my analysis of the the, the politics is that uh, the um, Baba is is becoming the pre the president, the fifty president. That's definite. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, BBI was going to work very well for the DP, that he could have had a very official office in <laughs> as an opposition re leader, that he would, he could have had more voice in the government than he could. But we are yet to see. But uh, take, I take it to the bank. My strongest opinion, Baba, is the president to come. Thank you. OK, thank you for that substantive contribution. Community, are you there? Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Ask as we wait for community. I don't know. Come on, Melala. Okay. Uh, I don't understand eh, why you see that uh, if Baba goes to Central, then he has become the fifth. But when Ruto goes to the coast, and also who voters, still is not making anything. Don't you see that Ruto is also making something by eating into Baba's regions? Uh, yeah, just, the same way, just the same way Baba is doing on the on the other side. Uh, uh, yes, uh, okay. It's true that the DP is getting some support, but his support are materialistic. He has to dip to the pocket in order to get those, that support. Compared to Baba, how much he public is is giving money literally, you know, on the camera he, because the people are demanding the money from him. But when you see Baba, tell me which central province you saw Baba giving money. He, he rarely gives money, but people goes to support him. Now, my my concern is are these people really supporting the DP because they think he's a good candidate or because they like his money? Or if he could not give the money and tell them we want to form a government of good citizens, do you think he would have that kind of support? So well, that, 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 that is how I see it. And then when you when you also look, most of the people who are following the DP, 
uh, surely, even when they go to his residence, those masses who go, they are facilitated by the DP. Because, of course, you know UDA is a new party, and it, 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 it must not be uh, uh, having very good resources like uh, ODM has. So the person who is uh, facilitating the whole campaign, of course, is it, it, the DP. Who else you think can facilitate the, all the members? And even the supporters is trying to get, especially the youth. Th that, that's how I see it. Well, that's, a, that's how you see it. But uh, according to me, I see that uh, Ruto has been giving money to empower the youths, and he has been saying that, that uh, I'm giving you this money, and even that money is not given to individuals. In fact, the money is given to circles, groups, women groups, youth groups, to go and help those groups. Ruto is not giving money to individuals like take this 100, take that 100. He is supporting these groups. And that no. one is, a, is also one way of uh, empowering <laughs> them. Yeah. Uh, my friend, the, the problem is that the money is not coming from the system. It's coming from a person. And if it's becoming coming from a person, say we are all under, under the sun, under God's uh, uh, care. How about the debut president was not there and somebody, uh, I mean, or he stops giving that money that he doesn't have the money to give. Do you think he's giving that money literally because he's a good person to give, uh, help people or he's giving them money so that they can elect him? What is the intention of giving the money? Okay, according to me, I think that Ruto is uh, leading by example. <laughs> He's telling people that right now I can give you this, but when you elect me to become the president, I will now use the government money and is yeah now to to help the Mamambogas and the border borders. But right now I'm using my pocket money. So it's like giving an example, showing the people what he will do, and he will do it more when he gets elected as a president. Could you rather uh, raise your kids uh, giving them money directly or show them on how to get the money? By giving the groups, the youth groups, the circles, eh? these circles eh? help those people on the ground because they can borrow the money from the circles and go on with their business. Tell me which which one group he has given money and that group has really topped up and they has really changed their lives. And Tony, on that, uh, I think this guy thinks that we are not on the ground. What they are doing, they bring out youths to be in groups. In fact, they have to raise money. Then they are told that the DP will come and top up. You know, some of those things... It's, they are not new ideas. Those things existed in the days of Moy. Sometimes you could raise money and your person in the in a potter. So I'm gonna see as an akudanganya raise this money, then we'll come and top up. But in the, in the real sense, you are raising money for them. You go even and do a fundraising at a school and they wanna top up now and end an aisle. So, in so, fact, you think These are not new things you are telling us. We know what is going on on the ground. Mm -hmm. And they tell me one, one group that has benefited since this drama started. Even this easy bit to now, Nanga. Let me tell you now, Tony. Let me go straight to the point. Easy bit to now, Nanga, Kwarali Showbiz Exhibition. And uh, they have to be Vinyosi somewhere, the, the, the saloon somewhere. There are a category of things that are shown at exhibition. And there are many hassles. Why? Because there are identified dealers who bring those things. And uh, you bring 100 and you, you distribute 10, you go back with the rest. 
Those drama, we know them. Kuna siku wamepeleka siju nyamira. They went with 100 motorbikes. They only gave siju 15. The rest are taken back. They go to show to Kajato. Then like that. Just to who doing the masses that we are helping the poor. But in the real sense, they are using them as campaign tools. Well, well, uh, Tony. All everything that uh, that happens on the on the other side also happens on the other side. You condemned about the heckling of uh, of Raila today. The same same thing happened uh, for also Ruto just some few months ago when uh, he was going for a fundraising in uh, Narumoru, I think Narumoru, mm. where the DP motorcade was stoned and these people were also paid to go and do these things so in as much that uh, tunakemea side moja and the same thing also happened on the other side we should kemea both sides if something is wrong Cor correct my friend and, and yeah. i'm not i'm not supporting the um the the heckling but i am stating it as a fact in fact heckling is a, is a propaganda which is also a political tool to bring down some opponents try to show that he doesn't have support it, it is a negative thing to do but some politicians use it in the politics uh it's like shouting uh, uh, making sure that he doesn't deliver uh what he wants to deliver for to make the candidate look bad i am not saying that the odm uh, doesn't do it. And in fact, the echoing I was talking about is the one they, they were echoing the president, uh, uh, trying to uh, shout Ruto's name, uh, wondering oh, whether all those masses came to simply just surround the president and then start shouting to about, about Ruto. So it, it's, it's not like we don't see, but is it working? Because it's a tool um, politicians can use, but is it working for him? That's why I'm saying it is not working for him. It's um, the campaign is become is dwindling, is 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 becoming less and less because of the more support at the central province, especially politicians or say king beans have shown towards the president's side. Tony, Ukimaliza. Let uh, PK and neutral man come in. Uh, community, I don't know whether he's there. Okay, I'm just coming I'm shortly. I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Neutral, you can begin, then we go to PK. I'm coming shortly. <clears throat> um, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear? Yeah. yeah? Ah, okay. Yes. Um, I actually missed the topics. So yes. I actually missed the topics. That's why I'm, I'm a bit late. Um, I I saw the link a bit later. But uh, um, what's up? What's the topic of the day? I'd like to maybe contribute to it later. But for now, I'm, um, I'd, I'd like to um, to hear what, what the discussion of today. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the next one, BK. Uh, this is, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I think this is my first time to join this uh, this group. I, I just stumbled into it and uh, I found it very interesting. Maybe what I can contribute about is uh, this other group is a very important opportunity to actually to win if only they had supported the bbi I, I think given the current situation and the scenario on the ground and the kind of hype that uh, hasla is getting on the ground uh, i think ruto was able to come up with a very good lineup as far as bbi is concerned because he would have come up with a good team 
that is maybe new to the people and people would have embraced the change as opposed to what Raila would have put together in BBI. And because they fought BBI, thinking it was the animal that would make uh, Raila disappear, I think they were shocked on how he bounced back with, uh, with this Azimio La Umoja. And uh, I, I, they, they must be regretting at the moment why they had to fight BBI, which was the weapon that they would have used to fight against uh, Raila. As, as things stand now, and unless something else happens, I think it is uh, Raila's uh, time to take it. Unless he, he, he bangles the ball or he wastes the opportunity that is uh, uh, in front of him at the moment. And uh, if he comes up with a very good uh, running mate, and especially maybe from Mount Kenya, and uh, should he decide or just announce to the general public that he only wants to run for one term and uh, maybe do a Mandela moment as what they are calling it, it will be very hard for people not to sympathize with him and uh, give him just one term and test him. And that will be the, the, the end of uh, all this campaign, in my opinion. Yeah, on top of that, I would add that I think I like the way you, uh, you analyze. Uh, I, I also think that the, uh, the de deputy president started this war against the system too early. And by so doing, the, uh, the other side has been strategizing on how to counteract him. And actually, since they own the system, I think uh, he's running out of strong options other than his material, I mean, financial uh, muscles that he got. Um, besides that, I think um, the deputy president, if he could have waited a little bit more and play by the rule of the game, surely he was to become the president. Given the history, who, uh, other than Moy as a deputy uh, vice president, which vice president became the president anyway? So, uh. I, I think history aside, he, he had the, the, the very best opportunity to become the first vice president to be president, had he played his cards well. Unfortunately, I think he thought Having been in the system, he thought he had mastered how the system works. And he thought all he needed was money. And since he knew how the system works, he thought he could outdo the system because of the kind of experience he had had before. And he thought uh, he would work with some people within the system that he thought were, were strong enough and that would be able for him to counter whoever was coming from the system side uh, and was able to... I, I think that is why he was so bold even to confront in some way the president. And I think the president is, was also, is also very tactful that he has not... He, he played as if he had lost everything and he was powerless. And uh, he let him come in so much that people started sympathizing with the president. And uh, by doing so, I think he lost a lot of credibility from uh, people who could see what was happening. Yes. Now, now can, I, can I say something small about BBI? Yes. Okay. okay, BBI, uh, this is PK. Yes. PK talked about BBI, that yes. BBI would have favored Ruto more than Raila. Yes. From from my view, I think that uh, BBI will have favored Raila more than Ruto. This one was a plan. BBI 
if it was to go for a referendum, mm -hmm. Raila would have taken the day. And that assumption would have been made that the way people are voted in that referendum, that's how people will vote come 2022. And if Ruto would have gone on the no side, Raila on the yes side, Raila carries the day with the yes, and then goes and vie for presidency. I tell you, the DP will not have, have no option. Raila will carry the day. Because that assumption will be Raila won the referendum. And the way people voted for, for him in the referendum, that's how they will vote for him come in election. And that's how Raila, Raila did for Kibaki in 2007. Do you know no. how ODM was born? I ODM know, was I born know. through the same, same procedure yeah. whereby Raila organized a referendum, the banana and orange. The banana carried the day. Not the oh. banana, the orange carried the day. This orange formed the party ODM, which really, really gave Kibaki headache when okay. it came to 2007 election. And that yep. was the plan with the BBI. BBI no. was going to become a party. After it, it will have passed it, in the referendum. Can, can I interrupt you a little bit? Can I interrupt a party, you a little bit? Let me and interrupt then you. that party would go for election come 2022. So yeah. unfortunately, the court dealt with it. No, it is not unfortunate. I, I don't think it's unfortunate. I yes. think... Uh, I, I think uh, the BBI people were given lemons and they made lemonades out of it. They, they just turned tables. If you listened to me properly, I said, had Ruto known the importance of BBI, he would have supported BBI. And even when going to the referendum, he would not be, have been on the opposing side. He would have supported it all the way, such that there would not be a Ruto side and a Raila side. He would have gone and supported BBI in full so that he would not have looked like he would have lost in BBI. But he is the person who would have come up with the best lineup in a BBI format that Raila would not have been able to beat. That is in my opinion. Because okay. he would have... Yes. You understand yes. what I'm saying? Yes, yes. I'm understanding you. Yeah. Uh, and this is the thing. Instead of opposing it, instead of opposing it, you would have supported it, so that you would not have lost in it. All he needed okay. to say is, "Give it a thumbs up and say, let's go. Let let us support this thing, this thing, and let us do a referendum. Let people decide what they want, and then use BBI to come up with his own lineup to challenge Raila, and he would have beaten him." Now, Raila is a very clever politician, and Raila wanted to use BBI to put Ruto into a context, to put Ruto into a contest so that they could but, test but, their but muscles. Ruto, but Ruto would only have gone into a contest by opposing it. If you support something, you are, you, there's no contest. Yeah, but remember, Ruto, at the previous constitution, uh, our current constitution, he opposed it. He was on the other side. But if you look at... Uh, on, but, but he's the one who benefited the most from it. Yes, he, he benefited. And, and, and I agree that uh, the... the uh, my opinion actually is that he should have become the, um, the most beneficiary out of BBI uh, if he was to, uh, to lose in an election, he would become... He would still, of, yeah, he still benefit. He will still benefit as a leader of the opposition and in parliament. And, and, yeah. and now, if, if there's somebody who is very happy about the whole outcome, is Raila. Is Raila because he's gonna meet the because with, with BBI, he would not have been able to vanquish Ruto. But yeah. now, should Raila become president? Ruto is with gone. All, with all the powers that he has, he will not give Raila uh, Ruto any chance. Correct. Yeah. And he will not even implement BBI in the first one term. He'll just put a, he'll put in place the 
the, the, the strategy of BBI, but he will still remain president with all the powers. Just yeah. to make sure that he locks out Ruto from any power position. On, on the other side, I think what Ruto uh, could, uh, may have thought all through was that to maintain the strong presidency so mm -hmm. that himself, he saw himself as the most next one. By becoming president, he would have finished Raila completely. Yes. And, and anybody associated with him. Yes. Yeah. But and now the labels have been turned on him. Now with the matrix of uh, the uh, uh, vice president or a debut president, uh, yeah. check, check people like Peter Kennedy or Lee Kinyanjui or these young people who may who from the central province. Yeah. If they come to the, to, uh, uh, if, if they take power, there is no way they will not be decorated as the next president. So which will really eliminate the debut president's chances mm -hmm. of galvanizing support from central province any longer. Very so true. it will be neutralized so much that nobody wants to you know, galvanize himself or herself to be in the opposition. You know, politicians get to oppositions by chance. So, yeah. And, and so, you see, the, the hype about Mount Kenya, I think, is, is, is being of a. Uh, is. Uh, I think uh, the, the hype that uh, Mount Kenya may not vote for Raila so much. Is, is a bit fake. It is real that things on the ground that uh, he has a lot, uh, Ruto has a lot of following. But the moment people in Mount Kenya are given the option of waiting for five years, as opposed to waiting for 10 years of Ruto, I think a majority of them would rather wait for five years. Correct. And that alone is enough to win Raila a lot of votes because, and, and we are not saying this by, by uh, we, we are not wishing Raila uh, unwell, but there are, two, there are two chances. Age is not on his side. We pray that God gives him longevity of life, but Mount Kenya people are not stupid. They know they can have five years or less, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. if they have the deputy president position. Because if anything happens in between, then they, they can bounce back with, in less than five years. And given okay. those two options, they, they would rather go with Raila, who gives them a maximum of five years or less. Uh, and remember, remember, the, the uh, central province is very conscious of the 24 years of Moi. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, PK, can I say something? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, saying that Raila promising uh, the Kikuyu nation that he will go on for five years and they will believe him, I think uh, it's, uh, it's misguided. Because uh, this is Kenya, and we know that politicians are not always keeping their promises. It is there. Yeah. Kibaki promised the same, that he'd only go for five years and give it to Raila. What happened next? He refused. I, 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 I think so, BK was so, right. Uh, so, so he refused. So just saying that I will go for five years what, and then what, give what it to I said, What I said is if Raila is going to make a promise, mm -hmm. he will not make a promise in the boardroom. He will go public. And I think that is why he's really waiting to announce when he's going to, to run. The, yes, day Raila, the day Raila announces that he's running for president, and maybe he'll have picked his running mate, he will make that promissory to the nation, not to parties 
or Mount Kenya people or anybody. He will make the promise to the nation. Yes, and PK, that is, I... And, and that is different from what politicians do behind uh, uh, boardroom meetings. Yes, PK, I understand you. What mm -hmm. you say, Uhuru did it. Uhuru goes public, went public, saying mm -hmm. Yake Kumi, mm -hmm. Ruto Kumi. Now Uhuru has changed completely. He went yeah. public. He went mm -hmm. public, promising that eh, he'll support Ruto when it comes, uh, uh, when uh, when his terms end. But okay, now, let you see, me, let me ask you Ruto something. Is, uh, <laughs> one me, against Ruto. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Let me ask you something. Yeah. How old is Raila? Raila is, is now 74, 75, around there. 75. Give him another five years, he'll be how old? He'll be 80. Do you think in anybody in their right sense would want to give Raila another second term at 80? No. Be honest. No, be no. honest. No. I'm, I'm when Raila, Kibaki went for the second term, I, 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 okay, this I is the thing. Raila. This, this is the I thing. Eh? When, when somebody Raila. has the power, when, when somebody has the power, like Mwai Kibaki had, mm -hmm. he can manipulate the system and do mm -hmm. anything possible to retain the power. And that's Kibaki, Raila, Raila won in 207. But Kibaki used his power, his state power, to ensure yeah. that he remained in power. Okay. What makes you think that Raila cannot do the same when it comes to his time? I think let me let me let me answer you uh, in two ways. For one, uh, you said uh, who promised the uh, um, uh, Ruto, uh, uh, Kumi yake na huyu mwingine Kumi. Lakini uka, unasema aliruka. Lakini, uh, lakini nimi, le, wacha ni kuulize. Uh, Uhuru achawai sema amemuruka. Ni chapokuwa na ni Ruto ndi walichitokesha. Hataanza kusema ati apendezui na njia government inaendezo. Sindio? Lakini Uhuru achawai sema. Remember, there was one time when uh, the uh, Timbomas uh, uh, of Kenya were uh, during the BBA launch. He said, uh, they, it is a relay, but that I kuchukua kichiti, I endere na race, ye ameansa kukimbia kurudi nyuma na kichiti. Unaona? So, in other words, amesema, anasema, ye akua up to today. Raira uh, Uhuru has never gone public at Ameruka yeye. Ichapokuwa Ruto has fiscally, obviously, and openly shown that he divide the president. So automatically the president, I mean, he can he is not obligated also to abide by the previous uh, promises that he made to his friendship because they were co-presidenting. Now, and then on, on the other side about uh, Baba's age and uh, probability, I think uh, uh, Baba, if you look at his lifestyle and uh, how he has fought for this, for this life, obviously at 80, somebody may want to rest, really, may want to rest so that he can enjoy the retirement uh, even that a pesa ile kidogo anapewa at least i enjoy na wachuku wake so and then he he wants to make uh, uh, to be remembered that's the mandela way to be remembered as an icon of the nation because he will never want to spoil his legacy now the only problem that the deputy president will have would it be the people surrounding all of them the immediate to power? If we speak about Peter Kennedy, who is very smart, or Luke Mungu, or someone else, and you tell me that the, the central province are going to abandon one of theirs to support the debit president again? And that is what PK is saying, I think. Uh, it is only reasonable to think that the deputy president may not get another chance to be on the top seat. This is the highest he has gone. He's most probably 
going to die and they're going to go to become to preach as he said yeah so because that's what he has said after politics is going to be preaching so um the um i i truly like the way he fights but the wars he's fighting are too many so yeah and i don't think he can fight the system and win I, I think uh, I may support what uh, uh, my friend there said about politicians uh, promising and not keeping their promises. It is true. L let us just look at facts. It is true Uhuru promised his deputy 10 years. Alisema yake kumi, yaruto kumi. What we don't know is what really happened. Nobody has ever told us what happened. I think Uhuru was very genuine in wanting to support his DP for, to, to have the next 10 years or to, to leave the mantle to him. But by strange reasons, I feel something happened that Nobody is uh, ready to, to, to explain to us what really happened. But there must have been a big reason or some I think we need to story that we are not told. I, I think it has been on the public uh, 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 knowledge that uh, uh, the, dep the deputy president says the story when the handshake came, uh, then the, the, uh, the president was not, was turned away from the agenda that they had decided for the nation. And he never saw a need of supporting the handshake, so he pulled out. I, I don't think that was reason enough not to support him. Um, could I please maybe share something here? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, I would say, uh, first of all, uh, hi to everyone. Um, from my personal view, I would say um, the whole of this story or the whole of this saga came during uh, or on the handshake decision part because first we believe that um, Uhuru and Ruto they were one when they were joining, so they joined together hands to support the other. That is, Ruto joined hands with. Uh, Uhuru and said, okay, Uhuru, I'm supporting you to be the president. Now, what came with the handshake is that my fifth president or our fifth president or the incoming, let me say, like um, Raila, never wanted to do anything with Ruto. His part was, I want to talk to Uhuru, he's the president, we can make the handshake, we can make our agreement, we can make our secret, we can make our talk, we can make our decision on how we're going to make this handshake thing together. Now you find that if we are as partners, and somebody comes and wants to talk to my partner without my consent, without my agreement, then this means I'm completely out of this discussion. This means any benefit of it, it has to come between the two, and I'm going to be just the outsider from this conversation. So what happens, from my perspective, what I see as a political analyst, I find Uhuru and Raila, the joint hands, and pushed Ruto on their back. This means whatever was going to be decided, it's either Ruto has to accept or he has to find another way out. There is no way Raila would accept Ruto in between. I'm putting it in this way. If at any chance Ruto and what would is, accept... Are you talking out of fact? I'm saying, because I'm talking Ruto out of fact. Because Ruto himself said that uh, four times Raila called him. So Raila began by calling Ruto before he went to war. He, he said he called me four times and I didn't pick his phone. Why? Now this thing, these things of calling, we so all know we, we are, we are all... that they, they decided to lock him out when he was given chance for a conversation and he refused. Maybe you should try also listen sometime some part of what Raila said sometime back. He said there was nothing he was going to make to talk with Ruto. His conversation was between him and Uhuru. And we have to put it this way. Even Raila himself, he has his people, whatever his 
talking or whatever is going to discuss with Uhuru about, it has to come from the people, as I'm talking about the yes. good minds of Orengo and, and so and so and so. They have to comply with what they're going to decide. So it is not only about Baba who says, okay, I'm going to call uh, Ruto to come in between. No, the talk was between Ruto, uh, Raila, and Uhuru. And it's the same thing, I would say. But again, that was... does not answer the question what really happened. Because when you find a man looking for another wife, and then there are chances that the first wife, there are issues. So you have not answered the question. What really happened between Ruto? The Promans, these guys who are wearing the same shirt, same tie. Now this is okay, something let me happened this. in between their regime. Yeah. Raila was just an option. How do I get this person help me push him out? Now that let is me, the okay. question you are not answering. Okay, then let me try to answer it in a very in a very clever way. And I'm going to put it in a very, very clever way on my own perspective. I would say this. We all know, when you take it all this to the backstage, we all know the kind of negative uh, political stuff between Ruto and uh, Raila we have been having, the differences they had before. And I'm 100% sure, even before the handshake came, they must have had some suggestions that they forwarded to these two people. And definitely, Ruto said no. He would never accept 100% everything. But to Uhuru, for him, it was like, we have to accept this because we need this guy between us for us to have peace, like what people always, everybody say. Although I really don't buy this, that without Raila, there's no peace. For me, it's a stupid conversation because peace comes from inside me. If I don't have peace with my neighbor, I don't have to say because somebody does not love Raila, there's no going to, never going to be a peace. Or I'm never going to have peace with you. This is our stupid ideological mind, but it doesn't matter. So before even this handshake came into limelight, there was a back stage conversation between the three people. And I'm telling this to mean that Ruto never ac and has accepted it, putting it in a way to me. So, for example, with the BBI, there are so many things that have been discussed, the good side, the bad side. We, as the people who wait for this outcome, we only got to know the most only good side of it. Even if I'm going to ask my colleague now, like you, who are talking to me, Okay, so maybe you're going to tell me the good side of it, that this side is going to be equal share of, of, um, of benefits, of finances, of money, of equal finance and all the stuff. But there are things behind it that unless someone who has done politics or have done some political science would more elaborate on things hidden to it. It's like, like having a contract that you sign, okay, I agree it, but there are some small written words down there. If you don't read carefully and you don't get to understand it, then you fail the whole of it. That is can now, or let me say, that is exactly the problem where this thing came up with. We were only fed with everyday coin, yeah, BBI, Kipita. No, 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 no. I think you're, you're even going far. You're not talking about the genesis, and you're doing cosmetic. Uh, yeah. The deeper issue, look at it this way. If this person, uh, they, they disagreed with Uhuru. And when he walks away, he walks away with all the MPs. Don't you think that this conversation began earlier on? He had already taken over the party and he was intimidating the boss. So the boss wanted to see how he can control back the party. Because you cannot tell me that just by differing there and then he had all the MPs on his side. That conversation began earlier on, even it goes back to the nominations. Mm -hmm. And those are things you are not talking about. You are just on a cosmetic issue that uh, these guys, because I mean, of the handshake and peace, uh, that 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 does not uh, be the let genesis. Me, of let me say. Want. Okay, okay. Let me just shortly, Mwango. Let me ask this. Or I ask this to Kesa. How many of us know exactly that these two really? Uh, have some differences because none of them must come to say, you know what, I have difference with you. It's only us. No, we know. Of the, what we, we, are we have been told that even the first meeting after the 2017 election, there were meetings and the, those guys were bitter. Why did you have to 
ask me for support for 2022 on the first meeting of after election why we have not even laid down the agenda and you guys just get information yeah, the this the information is there no, the problem so is, this guy, the problem is they were really the first meeting they have not even and the Uru said even the MPs have not been sworn in you want us to discuss about 2022 honestly we don't have an agenda I think uh, Wakesa also it is a public uh, uh, is in on the public uh, domain that um, when um, when the uh, the president declared war on corruption he had said data ukiwa ndugu yangu hata ukiwe nani uliipa mwenyewe you utaenda wewe peke yako so it, there there were some selective uh, 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 ministries that were attacked were found that were not uh doing well and the uh nolden hatch went for them and some of the, those guys um turned to be were the selective of the deputy president and the deputy president came out openly to protect them also remember the aurora and kimorel issues uh how it turned how to be now the deputy president in being the insider and on the executive thought that his position was to influence the system um to save these guys and it looks like it looks like it never worked like so because i, I get that from the surrogates how the surrogates were uh complaining in fact i got the surrogate uh, people the supporters of uh, of the deputy president akina murukomen and kinasudi all those people and then you you also see how the um uh, the current um, chubri uh, general secretary uh, gave us, g- g- gave some uh, 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 a public address some time back to say the status of the uh, of chubri like he has ever held the president uh, in ransom that if you do this i have the numbers if you don't do this i will just tell my people pull my people out so the the, the government was kind of like in limbo in the first term so in the second term the president he looks like he had uh, muscled himself and he had decided uh, uh bringing raira inside was uh, an extra one that i i don't think um, the um the deputy president may have been told about it but he must he must have disagreed completely and he pulled himself out and that is how matien came to replace him and he stopped going to the to do, do the cabinet meetings so there are so many indications although we do not have the the uh, the the facts as such but this is what we get on the public domain because of what they say so i i, I think i think i think okay tony can i can i say yeah. something yeah tony you have talked about uh, his own account the deputy president is on video record when he told Kenyans that he was worth 100 million Kenya shillings sometime in the year 2015. In the intervening seven years, he has worked very hard in his businesses and now, therefore, he has assets like shoppers, hotels and land worth billions of shillings. We would like to congratulate His Excellency Dr. William Ruto for being able to make such amazing strides in business even as he was studying for his yeah uh, tony can i say something about corruption uh, yes yes that's fine yeah corruption uh, has been a cancer in our country and yeah. corruption started way back eh, after independence so it's not like it's not something new that it started during the time of DP. It's something that it's really deep and it has entered into Kenyan's fabric. Uru himself uh, is one of the people who have been 
protecting corrupt individuals, so long as you are on his side. And uh, for example, the KEMSA, the most, most, most recent case of corruption, whereby Uru said that uh, within 21 days, then we will know the people who ate the money for KEMSA. Now, it's now over a year. We are still waiting. So Uru found that most of the people who are involved in that KEMSA scandal were his own people. And now he's finding it difficult to push the case. The ODM members also were also called in that scandal. And that's why you find that the KEMSA scandal is not talked about by either Raila or Uru. They only focus on Aror and Kimwarel because that one now touches the DP. But for Kensa, it's quiet because their own people were involved. And that's where we go wrong as Kenyans. Whereby it is our thief. It is our own thief. So it's only a thief when it is for our opponent. But when it is us, then you say that it is our own thief. You don't want to say about it. So that's the problem that we have as Kenyans. And it is on either side. On the DP side? Mango, that is your problem. We have, we have never seen us generalize and we have never defended... No, no, with me, with me, I don't want to demonize one know. person and yet no. the same same problem you know, is happening you know on your side also. Like generalizing. It's you like you are saying... It's like you are saying As we have the never defended on anybody the, corrupt. The we have never defended anybody corrupt. The, the log in your eyes. No, 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 no. That is your own assumption. We have never that's, defended that's, anybody that's what, corrupt. That's what it's you are. Only, if it's who, only if you guys who play the sympathy card. Huh? You guys what? play the sympathy card. And, uh, if if all was if if all let me ask you. Let corruption, me ask you. Now you that you have brought the two issues. Let me ask Regardless you, of this side, Mango, somebody is, eh? Mango, but this thing of just portraying that DP is corrupt, this is corrupt, and yet you see many corrupt individuals surrounding Raila, likes of Junet, they were called in that scandal. Now, the likes of Amurade. Where, 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 where is Evan Skidero? Where is Evan Skidero? I see that. Evan Evan Skidero. Alienda kote ama kuenda. Kuenda kote, I manisha sa mutu wati amesha kuwa convicted. Ojamong, alienda. No, you, you guys you are saying they are protecting this. So it's the court to decide. If it's the same court which is deciding against and, Uhuru. So you and, want Uhuru to command the court that are even against Uhuru himself. And in fact, Gessa, we have been saying that the Mark weakest Gessa, link in the war now, against corruption, listen fast. The weakest link in the war against corruption has been the courts. And that one is a fact. They bail people. They will focus on things and they will tell us this one is illegal, illegal. But when it comes to issues of corruption, tell us one case they have followed up and brought to conclusion. Now, Mark Kesa, if now Ruto could have been on the side of Raila, Ruto no, that, a that's a cheap argument. Leave alone that. Let's be a very good person, a very clean that person. That is a very cheap argument. 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 But because now he's on the other side, that's why that you are doing what? That is a cheap argument, it. my brother. That is no argument. Let's go case by case. Tell us this case, <laughs> it was supposed to be prosecuted, but because there was evidence, this is the evidence, but because he was uh, supporting who? The, it was shelved. Most of these cases collapse because of lack of e evidence. Sometimes uh, the DCI may have done even a shoddy job. Even those on the side of Ruto you are saying, not all cases have been prosecuted and found evidence because the DCI may be, has done a shoddy job. So don't tell us that it's because he's supporting Uru. Or, that's a weak argument. That's not an argument. My friend, my friend if you know Kenyan politics, eh? You'll understand now we I'm cannot saying. think everything in terms of politics. We have to think because not everybody is a politician. Some people are professionals and are doing their work as professionals. We cannot zero sum everything to be politics. This is this is this is Kenya where <laughs> you only become a thief when you support an opponent. 
This now, for me, it, it doesn't inspire my oh. intellect to sit here and just look at things like this is politics. I am here to make my contribution and I have to use my intellect. I'm saying if the case has this issue, let me, not, well, nothing stops you to go to court and you have evidence and prosecute a case. You don't say because the politicians are against me, I will not win. Try your best. Most of these guys we call the heroes of this country are people who fought through political challenges. Their political who are challenges they? are who, who do you have heroes? You have you to stand have in Kenya. Okay, sir. If I, I am saying most of these people we call heroes, they can be in the world. It doesn't have to be ah, in okay. Kenya. But okay. most people who are heroes are people who stood against the tides of history and political challenges. Some even were assassinated like Martin Luther the King. So you cannot just come here and tell us things that don't make sense. Tell By us that way, this Wekesa, issue... Wekesa, I speak what I have seen and what I have also heard. Eh? No, I'm in Kenya. I'm not in, I'm in Kenya. I'm not in another country. Eh? I'm in Kenya. You always talk generally. I'm in Kenya, and I know what's happening. We are also what has in happened... Kenya. Now, now okay, sir, this is my question. What has happened to the 21 days that now Uru promised that uh, the cancer... He gave the commission to, to work within that time, but he was not the one looking for evidence. They, whatever the findings, they come up. You know, you, you, you are having a preformed mind that the, he was supposed to be done within 21 days, and those people should... It is you bring the findings, and those cases are still going on. Let's let's. Uru, let's says, Uru, never get expired. By the way, okay, any sir. case. Hmm. Okay, sir. Let's just start from just from a little bit um a step behind. This commission that was um let me say was chosen or was um elected to handle like um the current uh the cancer yeah the cancer issue. Who are they? Because we all know them, and we know them where they belong, first of all. So there are some because, cases in Kenya, they we drag... We cannot import Kenyans. We use the Kenyans who are there. Yeah, but I'm saying, who, are, who was the which was this committee that was selected to get to the finals of KEMSA? Uh, I, I, I think, I think uh, you are going uh, out of uh, context when you have had to ask who are the committee. Because what the uh, DPP wants is evidence. And he has to be very careful. The, he has to get the evidence that can convict someone once he's gone to court. Otherwise, otherwise, of course, the case, the case will be thrown out. If the evidence is not strong, the case will not show up in court. And even if it shows up in court, of course, somebody can counter sue and the government has to pay for damages. So th th this, yeah. and that's the law. Yeah, Mulumba, you have to say something? Mulumba. I see you carrying up the hand. You have been carrying up the hand for... Is the mic off? Oh, maybe the mic is off. Mulumba. The mic is off, Mulumba. Yeah, switch on the mic. Yeah. Let me try to put uh, you on. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. On. Yeah. Mm -mm. We can't hear you. I think he has a network problem. Let's continue. With, yeah, so, with... so, Wekesa, can I continue? Yeah, Tony, was, ten, Tony was talking something about um the, um the committee and all the staff that is elected for yes. running yes. out, looking for some evidence. Yes. I, I, I was saying that the evidence has to be for the, um, uh, for the DP to prosecute the case. And if any party has evidence yes. good enough, I think the citizen, the uh, we being citizens, I think uh, every anyone has a mandate to just go to court and just uh, 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 proceed with the case. But now, with those cases that are already in court, 
it, there is nothing much we can speak about over here. I don't have the part, so let me just quit that part. But exactly. I but, but you will realize these guys will not discuss issues even which have evidence, like this even Western Hotel. It already has evidence. Even the DP himself has acknowledged that he bought a plant that is... But they will not discuss. They want just something to neutralize. Even no, what actually... they don't... Have <laughs> if you ask them, can, now, can you produce evidence if you want this person to be prosecuted? Okay, okay, okay. Because you seem to have to link everybody to corruption to make you a case that everybody is corrupt. That is the script they normally look for. Yeah, okay. so, okay, sir. The okay, problem. sir. You are talking about issues of propaganda. And you are the one doing it right now. That is not propaganda. Eh? I can, I can share the, 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 what Ruto eh? himself said. And the clip is here. I'm just sharing right now. I'm sharing. Me, I don't talk propaganda. I have the clip. Himself talking, not another person. So proceed. I'm just looking for you. The, 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 the. Mwango. Yeah, I think, I think Kesa the, want us to believe. Eh? It's, it's Kesa okay. want us to believe eh, that Ruto is the only corrupt guy, and that one is propaganda. Yeah. I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm By not saying like make, that. I have Ruto put it Ruto. in very clear words. I've told you that you guys are following up something that you don't have evidence. That those issues that have evidence you acquired, and you are here making us to believe that every side is corrupt. Now, hey, Kesa, the issue of Kemsa, did the money found their legs and uh, just walk away? Somebody <laughs> might. No, in fact, somebody, it, somebody took the, the money. The reason why we don't want to use propaganda because <laughs> even Kinamuranda bring on the, the Okasema company, Zaruto so you know, if we use that, it is propaganda. Let's have evidence. Because they created a, a web and they said, oh, Kinaruto, Akonani, Siju, Kinanani. That's a way. That's why we wanted real evidence who were involved. But if we remain like uh, who you know who you or in the public, it doesn't help us. Me, the only thing I can talk to Kwa Kwa, Kwa Kambia Ruto passionately is your Kitya Mutesh, which is something that was confirmed. Like to your Western. Those are confirmed things. The rest I I know there are propaganda around it, but I don't know. Because the evidence has not been brought. Even this Kimarel, we still, oh, it's only the words that he, of Ruto that made us to doubt him when he said that it's only 7 billion. So people wondered, why, why did you have to say it's 7 billion and this is the money? So you understand what happened. Otherwise, nobody robbed a Ruto into Ara, a, Aurora and Kimarel. He is himself who, who looked like he has more information to share. So don't try to play the general script. Nobody is generalizing here. We are on specific on issue. One case analysis. Yeah, I can, I can say with Kesa and uh, Mwango, I, I, can, I can tell you that uh, I, I, I admire and I enjoy the way the debit president um, operates, uh, both in the political arena and even in his private life looking for money. Whether uh, making phone calls to Uganda and some millions are given out, or whether getting money from KCB, or whether buying, uh, selling eggs and chicken to make the money, uh, whatever he's doing, he has, he has succeeded, and I admire him over that. But I do not have the right, or I don't have the only to uh, to accuse him of anything, but he already got the wealth. And if I could also be blessed of the same, I'd be very grateful. But uh, we know that he has money. And to add on it, Tony, I think we should all say we know, or I know, that the vice president of Kenya is very smart because. If at all somebody can be such kind of or can have such kind of worthy in his pocket or in his account, mm -hmm. then yeah, okay, regardless of whoever comes say he's Nimuizi and everything, there is no evidence at all to com to comply that he has over all these billions stolen within somewhere. Because if it's at all that he really stole all these billions from 
the Kenyan government, let me say so, then this is a lot of money that must be accountable. It must come out. No, excuse so, me. Are you are you talking? What are you talking about? Are you about the president? I'm just, I'm just talking about the vice president. The president, I don't have an issue with him for now. As long as there's no evidence, we're just keeping silent. But I'm talking on behalf of the vice president that if it's true that he's one of the the Waisi that have been mentioned, then he's the most smartest thief in this government. Correct. I mean, and that... he's the guy. He's the guy we can even trust with our money because he can steal more, and we will never see it stolen. <laughs> I'm putting it in a way because you know I'm trying to imagine for me I can say he's if in case because we don't know how much he's having in his pocket or in his account but I think from what he's giving out in every place he goes he must be among the most richest or must be the most richest friend, man in the, Kenya. The, those giving are cosmetic some we know no from I'm just being okay sir those okay, guys a uh, guy can give a uh, one million and uh, say uh what are Rudish and Gabi Nae? We know those dramas. Okay, sir. Those okay, are sir. optics. That's why, <laughs> they, <laughs> that's why they have to shout in a rally. If somebody is helping, he doesn't have to say. But we can to have a up one million. Those are drama. Okay, sir. I'm, I'm, I have proof of him giving a million somewhere. I have proof of that. And I'm telling you, and I'm putting this in regard of show me any other. Any other politician, whether it's Baba or whoever, I have not any other refused place. that he doesn't give one million. If I'm yeah. telling you, even the days of Moi, they could come and give even a hundred million. But in the process, how they go to bank this money and the yeah. Now tell me, okay, sir, if you can, if you can be able to raise this money and give it just for free, how much do you have in your pocket? Uh, can I say that something? Is not that is not, let, let me tell you, the richest people don't do that. Only people in people who in want Africa. to prove that they have Take money. In, Africa. in fact, Nani, I, I think it's Obama who said that if you see uh, someone who wants to wear a, an expensive chain of gold to prove to people that he has money, then it is, he's, he's struggling with ego to prove to people that he's rich. But real rich people don't show. In fact, they are very quiet. These people like in a Gideon, they have money, but you can't see. They they look so quiet. But they are those yeah, but... who want to show that they have money, but actually they don't have. Yeah, but Yokasa, do you see Gideon winning anything from uh, from the uh, political um, okay, sir. abilities? Nothing. I mean, he's that drinking. is not the issue. That is not the issue we are discuss. That is not what we are discussing. I no, I'm saying Gideon. No, I haven't endorsed him. I'm putting it this way. The deputy president is giving out all this because he knows what he wants back from the poor Monanji. Not because that, he does. That he is does. dangerous. People who put their money into politics, if in fact it's uh, who? There's some many who say that if you find somebody passionately investing his money in politics, that is a dangerous person. But that but, is okay, a sir. dangerous okay, person because he has to get his money back. Wakata, put, 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 put this in your mind. The only thing, the only way you can win African politics is by influencing the poor. No, and the only way you can influence the poor is by manipulating the poor mind. Wakata has always had those uh, poor people, but he has never used money. So don't. And where is he? And where is he, Baba? He has never been the a president. The only problem that, is, that, that was always, with that Raila was the system, and that is exactly where Ruto is walking into. So don't tell us where is he. That is exactly the mistakes Raila made. Ruto is making, and and Uhuru was laughing at him, saying, "Now we all look at Mefika Karibu Manza Kurani backwards." So before you start telling us where is he, just know that you are exactly going to do what Raila did. You you want to walk can backwards. I, can I, More can I come come to in your position? Yeah, I think Mumba. Come in, come in Mumba. Yeah, thank what, you what, what? thank you so much guys i've been listening for you for a long time uh, since you started i'm so Can happy give a new chance but your mic was having a problem yeah but uh, i'm happy you guys you are trying to make to be professional but you are still back you are not reached to where i, th I think that you ask kenya mm -hmm. smart you are you're supposed to be but we Kesa and the other guys, you are doing a great job to, to make this child understand that the Kenya is theirs. It's nobody's going to be together for them. If they don't run away from tribalism and this corruption, 
you are just lying to yourself you're going to just soon start slaughtering yourself because you don't understand some of you here can speak as if kenya is not their country as kenya is for somebody else because you you find it, instead of reasoning that this is my motherland this is my life you reason as somebody who came out who just migrated from another country to kenya like like mwango when he speaks i think that he's not a kenyan he just came from somewhere else and then he's in kenya when things goes bad he's run away come go back to your, his country that's why he's there you have to talk according how the kenya looks like corruption is corruption if you are a good person never ever support a corruption person because he kills everything whether if he's my father or my brother do you know this country that they are developed because they went they came away from that once you are going to be you are going to find you have done something that is unnecessary it calls it's called felony when you do something like felony you not support to hold the office you resign immediately then the uchunguzi unaanza mara moja and once you are fired it remains your record you will never hold any office because you are unfit for the office but we african we glorify when we meiba ndio nakwambia kenya yetu bado imeoza because how can you tell me that unaambia muti ya kwamba somebody lazima apatikane guilty ndio sasa tolewe kwa ofisi and this person has stolen really What kind of law is that? Kama hiyo sheria bado iko Kenya, you guys hata mpige bidomu, you are not going anywhere. That somebody amefai ame, amepatikana na makosa, ameibepasa, na wanasema ate kesi iko kotini mpaka atakapatikana guilty, na natumia the same same money to ku, 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 to ku, to bribe the court, to bribe the lawyer and everybody. Then you come here so telling me oh blah 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 blah. Why guys, you are well educated. Some of you are masoma paka ngambo. You go back home, you go the same same in ni pulpit ndio mnagulu maenda kukaa. You argue the same same thing. What kind of education have you gone for? I wish ningesoma kama nyinyi. Lakini singetoboa kasa ningewawa mapema because I stand for the truth. <laughs> yes. Ningewawa mapema because this kind of nonsense I will not accept it. Mulumba, Because, can, I, can I ask you some where are you Mulumba? I'm in USA. Where which, which state? I'm in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm in Atlanta. Okay. Then you speak I have I heard you the way you're talking you have some knowledge in you. The way so, you speak. No, no, that, that's that's the yeah thank you but uh, that's not the, the essence right now. But the point I'm trying to say is that um um some sometimes when we come out of, of Kenya uh we we kind of wear a uh, different skin other than uh, the Kenyan skin and let's be also realistic we are Kenyan and uh, Kenya is our homeland the way things are, are done in America uh this country democracy has gone over 300 years in Kenya we are not even 60 now and then we do we do the laws and the laws we been using are have been colonial but we are still you, you can take somebody out of the village but you cannot take the village out of the person and one of the problems we also we still have is that we need to wait so long as he speaks my language i can be aligned to him you are lucky in america you when we meet we meet as kenyans you don't even want to know where somebody comes from you feel happy to get them to kiswahili yeah that's different but we we those people the diaspora themselves some of us are very good in speaking but in uh uh actualizing what we speak we do not have i got your point let me finish mine i got your point i got your point you are trying to say i know that that's why i'm saying we come here we get educated we get masters you get professional but when you go back home once you you are light in the embakas you turn to your kenyan who's just a typical carry Oh, you know what makes me sad 
nubukiwa hapa umesoma mpaka unaongoza wewe ndio umesimamia hizi mambo ya kazi ya wazungu wewe ndio una do everything wazungu wanakuja kuangalia tu excellent excellent digiro na pia excellent but when you go back, back home excellent hiyo inabaki hapa kwa airport it doesn't do transfer for back home na hiyo ni kitu ni kitu amesema we should not forget ya kwamba we are Kenya that thing is the one killing us because you tell me that ukitoka hapa sasa ukipanda hapo una una forget yenye umesoma toka hapa unaenda unakuwa mkenya of which una embrace the corruption na deal zenye ziko huko that's who Kenya that's that's not now what you came here to learn for ah let me go back to topic mlikuwa nayo ya uhuru na ruto so mali mingi bila nini let me tell you there's one thing here Uhuru na Ruto wanajuana. They know each other. Because wesi niambia at root the way ana, anafanya vitu anaenda anadharau president wake. Mwisho anakuja anafanya vitu contrary to the president. Na the president anaangalia atasema it's okay. You know uhura na power kama angelitaka kutoa hata kama kuna sheria anaweza vuja hiyo benga natoa kila kitu na tengeneze nchi kama ni uongo angalia historia ya Tanzania was it overturned after independence ilikuwa na sheria was it overturned and changed to why what it is right now uhuru can do that but because wanajua waswahili wanajuana kwa vilemba That's why he keeps quiet. So that's the problem here. So you guys kama mwezi angalia na mjichanua because you are still going far. Na mu do the right thing. Muache kuja ku support hapa. Mwanga anajua wakimuuliza anataka kutoa kesi ilikuwa 1959. Ndiye anatuletea saa hii. And you are talking right now what we can do work on. Ah basi akitoka huko anakuja naona hii imetoka jana ati hii ijashughulikiwa na amekosa kujua kulikuwa na gold bank kulikuwa na nini kulichuana na youth funds everything is there he comes what is close is what he's talking about then you support something that he cannot help you forgetting ni kitu itasaidia mtoto wake hata na baba yake ile mwenye amezeeka indeed still help because what we are trying to run away is sisi wenyewe kuja kupigana unaona so bila kwenda kwa mengi i always go to the point time is yours Nije ndelene kuchezea maisha yenu and it's yours. Kitapokuumana ndiyo mtajua kwamba ni moto. Na unajua wa Afrika ni wajinga. Wakati wanaumwa ndiyo wanalia, wanalia wakishaisha kishatoka wana forget. It's not like a white man aksimama amesimama. I think my brother you understand what I mean. It's okay. Yeah, that's the problem here. So it's to you, you people. Tell the people the truth. Wakina mwango style up. Na wengine na kama mmegwamilia pale i have never seen in the world wide the vice president and the defa the president na na madarao live like na maana cap kwa kitu i have never seen uhuru is a very good guy but there's something he's hiding hiyo pesa unaona muruta nayo chungu mzima hiyo kuna vile mahali walipitania hii kitu walikuwa nakula lakini ruta alikula miga alikuwa nakula zaidi akamwambia bwana bro hiyo naenda you are going too far thank you Okay, thank you. Let me just say something, yeah. I I Tony? Ah, yes. okay, thank you. Um yeah, yeah I think I've I've listened to the whole conversation for like well, 40 minutes now getting to up, up to now and now. And I want to say um going back to the Uhuru Raila Anche topic whatever. Um I think Uhuru was at a crossroad. Um he had Raila, he had Kenyans and he had Ruto. As in Ruto's promises, Raila's um you know the handshake thing and um obviously the Kenyans. In the first term, you remember the Jubilee was um was was named as the most corrupt government in the history of Kenya as in since independence. And um I think the reason why is because Raila um 
who was in the opposition. Uh, let me tell you something. Raila is the best opposition we've ever had in Kenya. He was unearthing everything. Alikuwa na chimba kisema vizuri kwa serikali. Anazitoa hizo um, those scandals and putting them in the limelight. So uhuru akaona you know for him to to be safe in the second term he has to you know master a plan either go with Raila and get rid of Ruta and you know do the projects for the Kenyans or is dead he will, he will leave a very very bad legacy in fact uhuru was a very bad president in the first five years but now the mega projects that he has um, um, commissioned in Kenya will erase everything that he had done in the first five five years. And now he's going to go out as a very, very positive president because of the Raila power. You know, like Tony Mulumbu and I, I don't know who else is in diaspora. We from the diaspora, we see the, the things um, 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 differently. I guess so, because you know we get the tabloids writing about Kenya corruptions, uh, um, 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 scandals. Uh, you know we have um, you know the the the, the mirror in, in in Germany, for example, uh, the Telegram in the UK, and you know whatever, whatever, and that was tainting the image of Kenya worldwide. And so I I think the handshake, the Raila. Um, Ruth, uh, the, the Raila Uhuru's uh, whatever was just a tactical move. You know, that is 100% a tactical move. It's not that Uhuru was really interested in Raila in the first place. That was just a tactical move to ensure that he is safe in the second term. And have you noticed the scandals actually reduced because, you know, the opposition was, was tamed and um, um, they um, and and, and now, now now you see like you know Uhuru was Uhuru was or, or rather is able to do um, um, sort of to work at a you know in a conducive environment and so for me well obviously I'm saying next year I'm, you know I'm, I'm I obviously want to see Raila get into the into the seat that's just a, just a, just an opinion but. Um, but I think at the moment, Ruta and Raila, obviously they're the two, the two big candidates. But the thing is, everyone is trying, um, everyone is trying to, um, to um, sort of sabotage the other one and retrospectively saying, uh, saying Kenya has always worked under propagandas, especially towards the election time. That for sure. It, there, there's never been facts. You know, the, the, the Aror Kimwarer dam thing, it was just a propaganda. You know, there, there was, there's no facts. No one, no one ever tabled um, a fact and said, you know, Ruta did, um, you know, sign this and said, well, well I'm, I'm, those were just all propagandas. And... Um, and so for me, well, that is, I'm, I'm just thinking, I'm just, I'm just saying this. This story of propaganda, Ijeisha, Demeanza. And from January, you'll now start seeing even more. You know, the other one is accusing the other one, the other one is accusing the other one. And, you know, the circle will basically continue. I will not be surprised 2027 will be the same thing, 2020 whatever will be the same thing, to, you know. Until that time, I'll get gray hair. That's in like uh, probably forty years or something. The same same thing will be will be will be around, and um, I don't know what can save us really. I I really don't. You know, I I, I don't know what can save us at the moment because the accusations, you know, are just pendling between this and this one, and this and this one, and it'll continue like that. There's there's basically, you know, as Mulumbu said, sisi ni wajinga. You know, like it's not that. It's not like it's not an objective wajinga, but it's like you know, it's like you know. Yeah, I, I think my brother, we, we I think we are on the same on the same note when we talk like that. 
especially even in American politics, uh, you realize that when uh, Barack was running for presidency, remember the bother thing, which was uh, proponented by uh, Trump, that he was not uh, American, how far they went with it. And uh, it was really, of course, they knew that what they were saying was not true, but remember how they made it a big issue uh, during his campaign. And all the other presidential candidates, they even um, during the our current president, uh, Joe Biden, uh, they also brought this other issue about his son, that he was corrupt. And imagine, it's, it was really, I think, I, I'm not sure whether it is the son who passed away, you know, that he was so corrupt. Uh, and then they wanted to yeah, tie the son, the son passed away before because of cancer. Oh yeah, yeah. He, he, he had gone to, he has gone to another world, but yet they were tying some political or uh, propaganda to, uh, to him, so that to bring Biden down. But anyway, so I was, what the point I'm I'm trying to make: propagandas are are acceptable tools in politics. Uh, it depends on how you use it. Uh, you know, in politics, you 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 don't come. The, it's not a romantic relationship. Uh, you try to use anything to discredit your opponent. So, uh, and in Kenya, probably they are doing the same. It's only that uh, public funds are not respected, unlike in America. And that's why I say American democracy has grown over 300 years. But of course, still even in America, uh, you we know that there is racism, inequality of distribution of resources. Uh, the things are, uh, you know, we have also this, some poor places, yeah. But uh, uh, the public uh, infrastructure is very well, is well taken off, uh, care of. So education is good, the roads are good, hospitals are good. And that is what we want in our Kenya. Now, back to Kenya. So the, the only thing that uh, I can think that uh, the, we can credit diaspora too, because President Uhuru, it was a, is a product of diaspora because Alisome Abba. Na and Raira Alisome German. So at least you see the diaspora and uh, the experience is there. But they had to go back again and still also to start uh, fighting for this. Uh, can, I, so, can I second you, brother? Can I second you for one minute? Okay. That's how they, now look at it. If you look to uh, Obama, how he stood straightforward. The white man fought him very hard, but the white man is the one who put him in the chair because he was, whether they fought him, but he was clean. And he saw why he brought, he took, he, he took America from the down to the top. And then you go back to Raila. Just compare Raila and, Obama, and, and Barack. See. Ayla has been fighting for the corruption and you know, bad deals for his whole life. He has never been taken to court because he stole in somebody's land, whatever it is. No, until today, until now. And I, I want to say this and still repeat. This law of saying that Kwamba, on a kakwa office in Pakawa proven guilty, Haitolewi, there's nowhere Kenya is going to go. We as people who are in diaspora who are in Mesoma, America hapa, wale wako America hapa. Once we patika na dosari kwa ofisi, you will not be in that office. You have to come out, waangalie kila kitu, ukipatika na uko fit, and then you will come back. Lakini sheria Kenya kwamba ati, until you be found guilty, ndiyo utoke kwa ofisi, iyo inaonekana hawa watu wanafunikananga uko wenye wanajuwana vile wanaiba. And in attack, we make it ya mwisho kutoka kwa na kwa na DP. DP is very smart. Let me tell you, kama ulisikia jironga kiongea, it's very smart. That's why alisema mishwa na alitolewa mamlaka nyalikuwa na kwa sababu alikuwa wakisha sign check zikaenda chini kwa watu wa chini. Hawa watu wa chini wanafanya mpango pesa na tenemuka kwa ke, nea nakaa kando. Kwa sababu kimutafuta umpati. Do you understand what I mean? 
when you are looking for we are looking for him you want to get him because once they say everything has been signed going down there those people who signed the, the lower people they want to go and sign those checks and everything it's not there but they goes to his account once you pay or you pay your account yako una toa unapeleka huko akitafuta wewe ndio ulipata hiyo pesa sio yeye so guys the only people can change these things are these people who are more well educated this so you guys who are that in their support ambapo mmesoma vizuri mume unaongoza hivi you are the one that can change people but if you don't do that guys our country is going to the dogs okay thank you thank you my brother and uh wekesa i don't want to take more of your time you are the boss here uh l- let me let me allow me just to, to, to tell my dear friends here that um I'm also running for MP uh position come 2022 in Kisi Kitutu Masaba. Aya no come on we we have been having aspirant forum come on your day so that you tell us everything more. It will be exclusively you. Yes, uh, which day you want to give me you can give me any day you want maybe we, we have been doing a uh, Wednesday, Wednesday we have another person so you can choose Friday or um, uh, Sunday Sunday live here is okay maybe Sunday maybe Sunday we can talk about Sunday and we talk about the Kenyan corrupt language uko na ngapi uko na kitu the moment you declare you are going to run for a seat be ready to to host the whole village in your home <laughs> that is the difference in Kenya yeah. well a, a breakfast lunch supper and every, you become an yeah. extended family of a, a sublocation <laughs> by the way Tony I'm, nah? I'm already feeling the heat because yeah. I've not been there but the world is all over so I'm already feeling the heat <laughs> and then yeah. Tony they said you are living abroad so ukikuja najua ah oh you're like kwa US eh ah kwa na kitu kule kule kwanza What? Exactly. <laughs> Tukule. Tony una, una ngapi? Kama una kitu kaa kando, tufate mwenye kona kesi ni mahasla. <laughs> anyway, anyway, yeah, to the, 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 the reason I'm, I'm trying to learn is because um, I have to run because I think I have something to offer to my people and the most important thing is that um, I come from uh, a constituency uh, that was like pioneered by George Anyona who was a very articulate guy uh, before uh, currently we have somebody by name Shadrak Muse uh, you may not know him because he's uh, a non entity he only uses the bathroom of the floor that's how he's known uh, but uh, there's no contribution he does So I one of the things I want to do for our people is I want to make sure that uh, all those grants and CDF money that comes from the national government I will share it with the uh, wards of the constituency that make sure that uh, that money is divided is given to the constituency uh, uh, I will create a, constitu- a constituency fund yeah, no a ward fund that is um uh that every word we get some portion of money say each word we get a million and then that money is given to the small groups chama cha wamama chama cha wazee yeah Tony, that's a good agenda but let's reserve it for sunday today now tell us how do you how will you respond to propaganda because now this is politics as a politician <laughs> okay, sir, let me just you... say something Let me just yes. say, let me just ask Tony something before before he continues. Um um Tony, I have a question. Well, the first one was uh, you know, where Kesa asked you are you, are you are you going to deal with the propaganda or whatever. And the second thing, how you know, how realistic are your chances? So, you know, maybe you can contribute to your election or campaign or something. You know like how realistically speaking how 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 high are your chances of you know winning the seat yes what is your political capital and the third thing, which party would you find yourself comfortable with uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay let me ha- let me ask uh, let me uh, first of all answer the the propaganda thing 
Uh, uh, propaganda is one of the tools used in politics. And it's okay, I will respond accordingly. Uh, propaganda is not a threat to me because I am up to the task to respond with to whatever uh, nonsense or any smart mouth a person throws at me. I'm ready for that. I'm, I will not take it personal. I will respond as it comes. Mm -hmm. Now, about uh, my political capital, my political capital lies on the electorate, the people where I grew up because I was born within the constituency. I went to school within the constituency. When I finished the college in Kenya, I worked within the constituency. Till when I migrated, I was in the constituency. And then I have, I have been to the country, I have invested at home. Every year I'm at home. There are a few things that I do for the people, uh, like uh, supporting uh, women groups here and there and supporting uh, orphans here and there. And uh, I was a very good, um, uh, say, uh, youth leader. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what the, where is that that one coming from. So anyway, so those that is as a youth leader, I traversed the constituency. So um, uh, in the, most people my age um, knows me, and uh, I tested the water, the waters before I announced, trying to you know, to know what people say. And people asked me just to stand up and then declare my candidacy. So that's my capital. Is it your first time uh, running or have you, have, you, have you run before? It's my first time, but you know, it's not, it's, it's not a life of, of, it's not an issue of life or death. <laughs> Yeah, here I am. I present myself for public life. Whether I win or I don't win, and it's okay. My life will still be the same. So it's not like a dead and life issue. <laughs> yeah, but I have a good heart. What I am doing, I'm not looking for a job. I have a better job and I have a better opportunities within my reach. I want to be the servant of my people. At least I contribute something in my life to my people. That's all. That's good. Okay. Ukuja tukuteme mate ya waze. Na hiyo mate isikuwa ya kuteresa. <laughs> when are you coming to launch your campaign officially? Already, I've launched the campaign in absentia, uh, yeah. and we, you know, you know, nowadays we know we do things in, um, uh, digital. yeah, digital, and of mm. course, it's cafe, you can't you can't put together so many people. Mm. Yeah, I have I have already done that, and. Um, I normally speak to my people uh, all the time. I have the campaign, ca the campaign is on the ground. Mm. So the only thing is that the official whistle to be blown and then I'll be on the ground. Oh, that's okay. Uh, so you have said to you, which, which side are you aligning with? You want to be independent? I didn't get that. No, I'm not gonna tell you about that right now. <laughs> You will, you will get that as time goes by. Alignment is being done. Mm. Yeah, most candidates, you don't know where they're going to run. Even in Baba, you don't know how many how many coalitions is going to be having. <laughs> yeah. No. So what, is, what, is it, what is it? What is it? Yeah. What do you say? I was asking, what is the what? What did? Uh, how did Kisi vote in uh, 20, 2017 As in, in terms of the presidential um, um, uh, um, ticket, how did they, I, I never, I never saw it. So. 
Kisi is always a barber's land. Ah, okay. That's yeah. interesting. Okay. Yeah, but of course there were pockets of uh, Jubilee. Yeah, but now Jubilee being uh, one with Baba, that yeah. will be multiplied now. That's true. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm also a Kano Life member, so we're struggling wow. as well at the moment. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, where, where do you come from you know, Gideon, Gideon, Gideon is a very you know Gideon is a prince but he doesn't play <laughs> he knows <laughs> that uh, for him you know, princes inherit power they don't they don't seek for it so he's looking for a perfect chance and that's why uh, when it came to 2013 and 2017, he supported Uhuru. Uh, I see yeah. this chance he will be supporting someone, and he, at least he will be left somewhere. He needs to get us. To be, get... I think, I I think it will be Raila. That's uh, you know, our, Tony. I'm from Baringo, yeah. but I now live in Germany. I've, I've lived here for like ten years. So. Oh um, wow! Yeah, I came here when oh. I was a teenager. Right after form four, but uh, so I've, I've never really experienced the life of you know like outside school because I was always in boarding school and then afterwards I just came here. So that life, okay. that uh, that civilian life, left <laughs> I didn't really experience. But uh, um, okay. I think I think uh, can we we are so going with Raila? You, you don't understand what Hassan has gone through. <laughs> I, I don't, exactly. You yeah. don't, <laughs> We don't like people like you. We don't like people like you. You have never. Unfortunately, that, that's yeah. That that gap really, you know, I never experienced it very much. So, <laughs> let, let me let me ask let me ask you something outside what we are talking about. What do you think about these? Um, there are two uh, uh, killings that have happened with your people there. Tirop and uh, uh, there was another young girl who was killed. What, what do you think about that? I mean, I feel very sad about it personally, but um, although he says we have also other our issues that the 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 Warogi uh, but uh, <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. No, I was I was just imagining yeah. uh, the, uh, the way the way. The way politicians in Naitanga are here and in Muganga, we must have some trauma. No, that is a senior council one. You you don't you don't touch him. You, you know. No, you don't talk about him. <laughs> anyway, um, Tony, Tony, Tony. As I was saying, um, I think that is that is not an isolated case in Kenya. You know, so many women have died in the past four or five years. Um, you know, so I think. Retrospectively speaking, that's uh, you know that's that's something that has been there. You know, relationship um, wrangles, and then all of a sudden, one partner is dead, and you know, if was was thing, if was then even the kids. So uh, that's what happened. You know, last week, I, I think last week or the week before, I don't know. Uh, you know, it was uh, you know very sad, but it could happen to anybody. You know, that's uh, unfortunately Kenya CC is not vehicle. You know, when Mwanaume Simama, you know, push through, but mental health is very, 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 very uh, rampant. You know, like so many men are just burn out. They are at the very end, you know. Um, and come on, if we, if we don't concentrate, if, if the next government doesn't concentrate in the facilities, for mental, mentally challenged, uh, you know, people general, men, women, what even children, you know, then these things are going to happen because Kenya at the moment, how many um, mental health fa- facilities are there? In Baringo, where I come from, zero. You get it, like Akuna, like zero, 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 zero. So if the county governments don't concentrate on building large facilities, employing you know, professionals um, and and trying is, you know, campaigning as as hard as possible. These things are going to to happen, and I'm afraid. You know, I have I have four sisters. I don't have a brother, and I'm afraid that you know it could even happen to my sisters because they are married, and I don't know what happens. You know, in the houses when I'm when we are not you know on phone or something, 
you don't know what is what is behind the curtains and you know suffocation in pigio simu i don't know this happened and you know they fought and something happened you know it's obviously either way now nah? but uh, what i'm saying is counties have to invest not only in churches and not only building large uh, church, uh, you know institutions of i don't know what what but please we have to maintain uh, you know mental uh, health myself I'm a mental health profession uh, you know I've, I came here, I went to the university I studied psychology I finished that I did some other courses and stuff like that so um, that is what I'm really crying you know like um, I just I just finished my masters like last year and I think the next project what I'm going to do is you know try to just go back home try to ask the next government if they you know we we could just support me in building um you know a sort of a mental health institution you know if it, if it, it can even house 400 people that is but you know we have to start somewhere because kesho kesho kutwa the years to come there will be killings and killings and killings back to you tony that was your question thank you yeah, thank you i asked that question because uh, um i've been uh, uh, we uh, uh wrestling with that kind of discussion uh, kwa nyumba na uh, with my family but uh, i'm not sure whether some of these guys they are really sick ama ni asira ya mara moja alafu mtu mtu hawezi control ya asira yake unajua kuna wengine mtu asira mori kipanda anaweza fanya kitu kama hii mbaya sana na after akifanya anaanza ku regret kwa nini nilifanya hivi so um, i don't know how we can control this better other than um, teaching our people morality yeah and our values you know a uh, uh, family life or things like that and i am not sure whether the uh, the government it is within the government's mandate to do it or within the religious uh, organizations or my churches mosques and uh, whatever uh, let, let me just cut you short it's it's the government's work to deal with its people no matter whether it's uh, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, you know it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a moral issue or is a whatever issue because for example germany is you know to be honest it's not a very religious country but it has the best mental health facilities in the world you get it so it's if the government had said no that is the, the work of the church the church couldn't have done it the church the, the, the church will tell you come let's pray for you and you know we'll see what, what happens you see so but uh, the uh, the government came in and you know built a, well, i work in one of the largest institutions um in 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 uh, in huku and what they did is you know it was obviously built in the you know after the hitler time in 1945 46 huku but it really helped to to rebuild the country mentally after so many years of war you see and it has always it has you know continued helping people young people it doesn't matter even in fact we have as young as 10 years old you know what when you are either to lia those you know who are like who who get you know when whites get angry they become they turn red you know like those you you more you exactly so you know it's it's not it's not it's not it's not a matter of, it's not a question of morality or something the morals can be there but if you have a problem with your anger then you know then there's there's not there's no you know there's yeah it, you know aishi can it just doesn't the puzzle just doesn't you know fit together so um i think it's 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 a is a government's mandate to uh, to to deal with people and more so the county government and so and continue to sorry yeah what what do you think about if um, um if, if if the government can uh, uh set aside i'm um, all uh, make a law that can give um religious organizations uh, um some funds to build such kind of institutions to be run by the uh you know religious organizations uh, maybe uh the churches the mosques to build 
these mental uh, facilities uh, that they can identify people from their societies recommended by uh, village elders or church leaders to be taken there instead of the, uh, you know, it's like government delegating some responsibilities to the, um, to the churches because the churches can do both to make good systems. Do you think that one can work out? Um, it, you know, as long as, you know, it's coming from the government and government has the, you know, the upper hand to um to oversee the you know the construction the because if you're talking of those mental uh, mental you know hospitals those are 47 of them well let's say 46 because nairobi has its own you know it has the madari so you know 46 mental uh, you know districts uh, that's what we call them here so um you know like if if the government can chip in it doesn't matter whether it's a shake come out a power pastor come out a power whatever but it has Tibet. to come from the government, fully Tibet. responsible government. Yeah. Tibet. Yes, Wakasa. Let, let me ask you. Uh, you know our religious uh, sector in in Kenya. Maybe I don't know the other parts of the world. Uh, you see, <clears throat> one of the thing is uh, we they are not an organized entity. Uh, everybody, in fact, most of churches nowadays are more of personal. Uh, including even personal beliefs. There are even those people who, who don't believe that when they are sick, they go to church, uh, to, 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 to hospital, they have to be prayed for. So you can imagine trying to assign such a people such a role uh, where they think uh, when somebody has a mental problem, they need just to be prayed for to have a miracle. Wekesa, let me help you something there. It's one of my things, God willing, if I, if I succeed, I will want to uh, uh, legislate on that, a bill in parliament that I can yeah, give. Okay. Let, before, let me... you come in, before you come in, I wanted to say, I think the, what Kibet is saying, that is an institution on its own and it should stand yeah. in. Exactly. With the professionals. Exactly. With okay. Professionals. Okay. Yes, correct. And, and this is what I am saying. Uh, in addition to that, uh, the there has to be some allocations of funds uh, to the organizations of religious organization, not not the kiosks, religious kiosks people make. Who oh, somebody starts a church and they start uh, asking for sadaka. This I uh, will be the main thing religious organizations, the Islamic religion, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Seventh-day Adventists, the, the, uh, the Catholics, oh, th those kind of churches that have, like they have schools, they have hospitals, they have these social uh, amenities that uh, serves the public. Those that they will apply for those funds in order for them to build these facilities. And, and that's what I am saying, like, um, but in, it's not like anybody who goes to River Road there and uh, gets a uh, kiosk in Jamabati, Alavu Anasa Kutengenesa Kanisa, Anasa Kuita Watu Endendani. That will not qualify. So, and, yeah, and that- this, You know, it brings issues. I think it needs to be just independent. My thoughts, when you bring you know, in- Region, where you, you saw what happened when we were electing Trump. And the evangelicals in America came with the issues that don't even make sense. A religious extremism. Yes. So sometimes uh, I don't like uh, real issues to be mixed with church yeah. or religion. You know, I guess that's, that's, that's yeah, a very good point, actually. Oh, oh, give me a second. <clears throat> Mental issues needs sober people who do, you know, exactly. if you bring in a, a extremism or religion, then uh, you lose the, the focus and the purpose. No, it is. It is it, For it, me, that is an very, area very, that very needs right. to be developed. It needs to be developed as a, an institution on its own. 
just yeah. as uh, even in police there is separation kuna police who are prison kuna police who are traffic evil they stand on their own Abisa. so that they focus on their job so let religious master let them deal with counseling uh, easy these issues in Dogonok, but in terms of uh, Nini, let it, let's have a counseling because it's a discipline on its own. Mm-hmm. And you know, <clears throat> the case are like, um, you know, we have to have a psychiatrist where, whereby, yeah. as in, you know, you know, psychologists, what are yeah. to they will talk to you, they will advise you, and then they will leave yeah. you. But a psychiatrist will even, yeah. will even, uh, you know, prescribe medicine for you you know that's those are two things those are two different you know fields psychology mm. and psychiatry so yes. that's um, you cannot mix the two you know the church can come in as just as yes. an advisor you know to yes. hold small meetings but when it goes to serious matter then it has to be separate and become a marginal oil they, yeah. they don't maybe, maybe what he wanted to mean which, which i can agree with him yeah. You see, even when you are <laughs> studying medicine, mm-hmm. you do a common course called communication skills. Uh-huh. In, yeah, in different disciplines, you can do common courses. So I think maybe in a religious institution, there should be basic knowledge on terms of psychology, helping someone who has really okay, basic counseling sessions. Indeed, yes. Yeah, if if, if 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 every institution can have those basic counseling sessions, then it's okay. But uh, not bringing the whole institution into another. Yeah, and as and it's not uh, you know because you just know how Kenya works. You know, like when you go to a pastor and you know you tell him the, your problems and you know starts starts praying for you. That that's not how it works. Yes. Yeah. And most of them are just exploiting people for nothing. Unfortunately, yes. Unfortunately, yeah. yes. Okay, so I think uh, anyway, we, we can... Uh, oh. So we normally have these discussions almost every day. Yeah, that's... Uh... We, they, are, they are current affair discussions, but we also have uh, topical issues. So if you, if you want us to share the leave for us to discuss... Your topic, your mental health, we can we can send to a a a a a show. Yeah, like sure. one more. Yeah. Can can you share your number inbox here in private? Yeah. Chat? Okay, just yeah. some moment. Where, 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 where. I'm trying to zoom out, but um, ah, there, okay, there it is. Um, is it under private chat? Yes. Can I let me poke yes. you there and then you okay, see? Okay. Um, Have you seen any some something red somewhere? Ah, the, yeah, I see. Okay, there it is. I've seen it. Okay, then the yes, I've said hi. So, yeah, just write your number there. Yeah, okay, I think that's that should be. You can always reach me on WhatsApp. Um, well, that is uh, German, huh? yeah, that's Germany, yes, that's Germany. okay. Yeah, I can reach you on WhatsApp. We can plan a session. Yeah. And we just talk about, you, you know, it will sh- the information we have is power. Easy talk. You know? Yeah. So here we, ha- mm-hmm. we, ha- we have been trying to diversify the, the topics. You know, initially it was just politics, mm-hmm. politics, but now we try to diversify the menu. Not everybody is interested in topic, in politics. Yes, you're, you're very right. Yeah, yeah, yeah and sure. then, um, also, the other shows are more educative, so we, we, we really to bring in that. We show sure will um, and is can you know, like, 
is there anywhere you know we can at, at least contribute in terms of funds for the show or something or is it is... okay yeah i think uh, uh will uh, nini mutembei will guide me on that is the okay the owner of the nini. the channel of, of the channel Okay, just ask him and then you know we'll contribute to Kidogo and I'm sure it can go a long way in helping somebody else somewhere if yeah. uh, they need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even we have been bringing here young aspirants we say those who are interested in politics maybe they don't have a support we bring them here they showcase their skills if they get people who want to support them they can or as is just to expose them. That's true. Yeah. And I mean the channel has a very huge following so it's yeah Okay it seems Tony has yes, gone to yeah, Tony are you around that's... you want to do parting <laughs> I think somebody okay. called him maybe it's coming Yeah so, so you can we can do now the parting shots just on the topic what you think you can yeah. uh Um I mean I, I I to be honest I just came in very very late you know I it's okay. I had some stuff to do and I was like ah oh, man I I really yeah. wanted to come in from the beginning so today wasn't really a very hot day for me in terms of discussion okay. but um I'll definitely be on time next time so oh, okay looking forward to tomorrow awesome. I'm a, I'm at the day after tomorrow Okay. Yeah, yeah dear viewers, uh, we are coming to the end of uh, our live discussion. We have been talking about uh, politics and propaganda. Um, we also have uh, stage managed uh, uh, crowds. Yeah. And all, we also talked about um, inventors, conjectures, half-truths that uh, politicians use uh, to make their case. So as much as you you want to be aligned to a particular candidate you love them but it's good to uh to know that not everything that a politician tells you is uh actually truth even on social media most of the political stuff that are circulated including even newspapers uh some of them are meant just for political manipulation So you need to get your facts right so that uh you don't get disappointed otherwise we advise that uh you it's it's good to attend re, uh political rallies but uh heckling and uh being used by politician to cause mayhem is not a good idea and uh remember all these rich politicians our friends they are neighbors in kara and runda where but it's only the poor people who will uh, rise up against uh, the other poor person who is a neighbor to hug them just because they 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 want to support a particular politician who doesn't even know their name know where they stay know how they exist so kindly support your candidate but allow your fellow hustler allow your fellow kenyan who doesn't have a means to express his opinion without necessarily otherwise it was a good show you guys uh... Tony, are you back to make your final remarks or i close Uh, yeah yeah i can right now yeah i'm back yeah you can make your final remarks before i sign out okay so let me let me say thanks to everyone and i think most people have slept here uh yeah so my, my time is almost now it's going to be almost 11 oh, 10 o'clock 10 at night So I had some time but I had to let you anyway. Um 
as pertains to our nation and the, our beloved country, I think we we who have seen what is right and what is wrong, I think we have to take it up and try to make life uh, better. If we do not, we let those who are uh, doing the wrong things to take uh, the day and continue messing our nation off. We may not be able to finish everything, but at least we can do our part. Uh, and that's that's why I think uh, we, I personally, I want to take it up to try to give my contribution uh, to the nation as 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 a citizen. Uh, and then, um, as pertains to our talks over here on the media, it's not personal in any way. We do not, even if we speak against somebody's way of doing things or playing politics. It's not a, it's not personal in any way. It's a diversity of opinion. We are all human beings. Sometimes if if I mess somebody up, if I disagree with you, do not take it personal. It is just how the game is played. Otherwise, I'm grateful and uh, pray for me and uh, sketch me up so that we can do get this thing up. I want people to know what I'm going to offer. Yeah, kindly share your number. Um, you you have somewhere to write right now? Yes, plus one. Yeah, seven seven zero. Seven seven zero. Eight three seven. Eight three seven. Seven four zero eight. Seven four zero eight. Yeah, like, yeah, try to plus eight, whatever your time is. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I will send you a message on WhatsApp when we are planning okay. for you. Answer. I will need your details so that we can share to the... Uh, sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, Thank you. you can, uh, there, there are a few shows we have done with the others. We, we, you can, you can check. Okay, I do that. Uh, ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, I thank okay. you. Have a good bye night. Bye bye. Have a nice one. You too. Okay. Thank you for meeting.